Hello, here on Goldball TV. That's a short technical check. So, uh, we just uh, make uh, a short uh, sound check here. And then I make it a little bit louder for Kevin when I speak. Is it too loud, Kevin? No. Uh, Leiser? It could be a little more than insgesamt. I read it just a little bit. Yeah. Wird es besser an der Stelle, wenn ich rede und rede und rede und rede und rede und rede? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Gar nicht so sehr. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Gar nicht so sehr. Also noch merke ich wirklich gar nichts. Okay. Chris, also da tut sich gar nichts beim Drehen. Ich rede mal vor mich hin und ich rede... So, jetzt hier werde ich lauter. So, so, so. Ja. Ja, na, na. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Ich. 1, 2, 1, 2. Äh. Nein. Das ist, pass mal auf. Hier, hier wird Kevin dicht. Ja. Da habe ich gerade gedreht. Hm, hm, hm. Hallo, 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 hallo. Ja, gut, jetzt höre ich nichts. Jetzt hörst du nichts. Du machst von hier wieder. Also ich rede jetzt einfach mal ganz normal, wie ich vorher reden würde und äh, rede mal so vor mich hin. Du gibst ja. mir einen Daumen nach oben, wenn es für dich okay, okay. ist. Und äh, wenn Daumen nach unten, muss es leiser. Daumen nach oben wird es lauter. Und wenn du die Hand flach machst, dann ist es okay. Äh, also ich rede mal vor mich hin ja. und äh, hoffe einfach mal, dass das so funktioniert an der Stelle. Und äh, äh, okay. So, okay. Alles klar. Jetzt red du mal. Jetzt rede ich mal. Äh, aus meiner Sicht darf das gerne noch. Ich rede noch ein wenig weiter, genau. Ich rede und rede und ein bisschen was merke ich, ja. Ähm Ganz kurz, Micha ruft mich an, das passt glaube ich jetzt, ne? Ja, ist okay.
warm welcome here from Berlin to the EGCA Champions League preliminary tournament hosting by the Füchse Berlin and we will have three days of goalball here in the Füchse Sportpark on and we will now start with the first game of the day Aarhus Goalball Aarhus Goalball from Denmark in black from right to left against Hammer BEF from Sweden in green and white, from left to right. My name is Björn Nass and right next to me is Kevin Bart. Kevin, great to have you with, uh, with me. Yeah, good morning. Um, it, it's the first time that Berlin hosts this qualifying tournament and uh, it will be the first game, as you said, and it will be a group stage. We have 10 teams here, two groups of five, and it's, well, a Nordic classic maybe already to start, uh, a Swedish champion against a Danish champion. I'm really looking forward to, to, I think, 27 games we will have for you in the next two days. And uh, we'll take a short look also on the starting three. I see Koch, maybe it must be Jensen as center, Lund on the left side and Gregersen on the right side for the Danish. That must be Aarhus, yes. And uh, for the Swedish Hammarby, we have Lavnitschak, as I see by now. And the others are <laughs> not clearly seeable. So they will start from right to left. And the two referees are now in place and will start right now. So it's. Hammerby to start. And the center, the right winger, Lovnicek from Hammerby from the half right. He starts, he spins, throws down the line, out. Out at the right post, no problem for the Danish defense. And the ball is brought back by one of the goal judges. Handed over to the left winger of Aarhus, starts from the left post, spins to the half right, thrown, it's blocked, and then it's brought back to the right wing, Lovnicek, he spins again to the half left, and uh, the center is there, blocks the ball to the half right, it's given to Gregersen, Gregersen from the half right, turns, and then bouncing ball blocked by the right winger's legs, given to the left winger, goes to the half left, spins down the line alley, but no, by the feet, it's blocked all over. First good attempt, Kevin? Yes, they start to warm up, you feel, early in the morning still. And again, from the half right, try it down the line, centers there, blocks the ball, neutral zone, grabs the ball, brings it back to the middle, and there the left winger starts from the middle, Brings the ball to the left post inside the nets. Hard, fast from the middle to the right post, and it went through. Left winger of Hammerby was too far in inside, and so 1 0 for Aarhus. And again, the response is not there. The center of Aarhus is there. Gives the ball to Gregers and Gregers and from the right side, brings it down the line, and it slips, no, it doesn't slip through. The left winger gets the hand on the ball from the half right, again, Hammerby, it's blocked, and it's blocked out. Well, so far, Aarhus with the far better start here. Bouncing ball, center takes it away by Hammerby. Hammerby from the middle, the center himself spins, throws, high ball, oh, that was close, that was close. But now Aarhus with the try right, but far out, four meters before the right post went out of bounds. Well, the first real unfocused throw from them. And the left wing of Hammerby has the ball in his hand, half left, throws to the left post, touches the crossbar, spins, turns down the line, there, there's uh, the center blocks it. The right winger players and gets the ball and now spins and then throws the ball. It's blocked by the center, blocked out to his left. Well, many of the Danish national team playing here, so 
favorite Aarhus, I think so. Hammerby now from the right winger, half right position to the center, it's blocked. No counter, take nose, brought back to the left winger. Lund, and Lund now from the left side, down the line, lovely check is there, stands up, counter attack by Hammerby to the cross, and it's in, it's in, it's in! Well, for the first time, they surprised them, they changed the rhythm, they weren't really aware of that, and well, now we have an equal game. Ball slips over the handle of the center of Aarhus, then over the handle of the right winger inside the net. 1-1 one, one the score. And now, again, blocked by the center of Aarhus from the left winger position. He throws the ball, but no, it doesn't get in. Left side, Hammerby now down the line. It's blocked, it's saved. Kept inbounds and now to the gap and it's blocked out of bounds by the center feet to his left. Attempts by each team, no score from the right side now. It goes to out of bounds. Hammerby now with the ball on the left winger position. Gives it to Lovnicek. He goes on his right winger position, half right. Lovnicek spins, throws, and it's saved by. And counter-attack now to the right side. It's blocked out into the face of the goal judge. It's going up in the air. And next try by Hammerby down the line, left side, and it's saved. And Gregor now is there. And plays the ball down the line. It's saved by the center player. Lachnicek takes the ball over and starts from the middle to the center. It's blocked. Center stands up. Gives it to the left winger. He's in the middle, starts again there. And bouncing ball saved by the center. Center is going inside his goal, then starts from the middle. And it's through, it's through, it's through, under the legs of Jensen. It slips then under the feet of Jensen, under then under the hands of Lund inside. 2 1 for Hammerby. Well, that was, I think, avoidable, that goal. From the half right, Gregersen wants to respond, and no, the left winger takes it away. It's now in the middle, starts from there, spins, throws the ball, and it's saved by the center of Aarhus. Aarhus from the middle, starting again to the center, high bouncing ball in the air. It's the true, it's the true, it's the true. Goal for Aarhus. 2 2 the score. Well, this time, I think the last two goals really have been. Decided by individual mistakes, yeah. And now Lovnicek for the first time from the left side, he starts for Hammerby. Tries to find the gap, no, it, he didn't. Center is there, hands the ball over to Gregers and Aarhus from the right winger position, plays the ball bouncing to his left, it's bounced, but it's saved. And Lovnicek stays on the left winger position. And now from the right wing, tries to get through from right to left, but no, the ball is now over, and he's furious, jumping to the ball, but doesn't get it in his own half, the center of Aarhus, so we have a ball over. From the left side, Lovnicek again from the post, spins, throws down the line, high bouncing ball, no, the center comes over to the right side, and now Gregersen, the right winger, with the next attempt down the line to Lovely Chuck at the post. It hits the post, but then it's saved. Doesn't go in, and so Lovely Chuck again from the left side, and it's saved. And now we have an official timeout equipment check because the goal was not in place anymore after this hit at the post.
and now the ball is with Hammarby, Hammarby from the half left, from the left winger position, let me check his back on the right winger position now from the left winger position, close ball there but it's blocked and they found it, Aarhus now has to hurry up from the left side, goes to the right post, it's saved. And now counter-attack by Hammerby, and the ball is uh, deflected out of bounds. Well, for the, second, for the second time they try it because they know that it's worked once with, the, with their first goal. And Riegers is now down the line, it's saved again by the left winger, Lovnicek comes over, gets the ball, starts from the middle. Spins, throws to the left post, but now the center is there, collects the ball, and then hands it over to his right winger. From the right wing now to the left, center is there, center stands up, goes to the middle, Hammer B starts from the middle, center spins, throws, and it's saved. Counter attack by Arhus, Slavnicek is there, counter attack by Slavnicek, and then it's saved again. Now the rhythm is slowing down from the half left to the right post, reflected inside the net. The goal judge said goal, one, the other didn't. <laughs> and now the referee is there for a clarification. And is it a goal or isn't it? That's the question. The Polish referee asked the goal judge, are you sure? Are you sure that the ball was completely over the line? And now he shows it with the ball on the line. And now equipment check. I don't know what the decision is now. It seems like no goal because I think if it would, then they would have been firstly told us that the decision is goal. But... We will find out after that equipment check, I think. Yeah, it's, it's just the no goal. The game is resumed. 2-2 two, two the score. Yes. And now Lavin check from the right. Down the line, in the air, it's bouncing out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah, Locks it to the left. He was prepared to really throw fast again to surprise the opponents. And now... Aarhus, the Danish team again from the left side. Cross ball saved by the left winger. Comes from the middle to the half right, starts, throws right out of bounds. Interesting game so far, nice tempo, quite, quite speedy both, trying to find their rhythm. Some problems for Aarhus, it seems. And now Regersen from the half right down to the middle, and it's snow. Lavnicek is there, slips under the arms of the center, but Lavnicek helps out in help defense. And now Lavnicek from the right winger position down the line, it's blocked out. Was it close to a high ball? For, for me, it sounded just like that, but. In our position, today we are not that near to the field, so I'm not sure how much I can rely on my ears. <laughs> and now the ball is on the right side. The ball is thrown, it's blocked. And again, Aarhus with the block, the center is there after the attempt. And from the middle, the center himself by Aarhus bouncing to the right pose. And that was close <laughs> from <laughs> the lack of lovely check. It goes maybe 10 centimeters over the crossbar at the right post, at his right post. Well, sometimes you need a bit of luck when you maybe say that was a key point after the game. And now again. Ball blocked by Aarhus. And, and now it's now a first time out. Timeout, Aarhus. So, uh, Kevin, now what uh, have we seen so far? Well, two teams that really try to, to find their rhythm. Um, we had the defense with, I think, one or two problems, especially 
at the third and the fourth goal, but so far really an, an, an equal game. Uh, Aarhus with a bit more bouncing balls. Uh, Hammerby tries it with um, lower ones, but really fast. So it's interesting to see the different kind of plays, but so far it's, it's really equal for me, a, a deserved result, although I think um, uh, Aarhus still slight favorite. Four minutes and 44 to go in the first half. And now Lund from the right side up in the air, out of bounds. In the arms of the coach, out of Hammerby, the ball is blocked. And so next try for Hammerby from the right side. Lundnichak again starts, spins to the center position in the gap. No, it's blocked out of bounds by the chest of the center. And uh, who's with the response? No, the left winger takes it away. And now from the left winger position, Hammer B again to the right post. It's blocked inside. Now they have it. And the ball from the left winger position down, out down the line, I want to say, but at the six meter line, it went out of bounds to the left. Well, of course, that's something you want to avoid, that it goes out so early. And now the ball by Lovnicek from right to left play, but the right winger is there of Ahus and Ahus from the right side again down the line, bouncing ball at the post, deflected from the hands of the left winger to the post and then out of bounds. Fourth. So the second time in maybe one minute, that it got a bit lucky for Hammerby. And now Hammerby from the left side again. They start. He spins. He throws. Center stair blocks the ball, grabs the ball, brings it back to the middle. There the left winger starts. Bouncing ball to the center. Up in the air. Blocked out. Blocked out to his right. Yeah. It seems like they're getting nearer. Uh, who's maybe the time out helped them to sort themselves. Lovely check. Oh, slightly to the right, he starts. So throws the ball, and this was also close. Again. Yes. And blocked out. But still no penalties in this game, yet, but you feel it's not far away. Lovely check now from the left side after the ball over. Lovely check now from the left. Down the line, and then it's blocked out to his right by the right winger of the Danish team. And Vegas again starts half right, bounces the ball to the right, posed out, out, maybe 20 centimeters missing. Lovnicek is still on the left winger position, but maybe he will now take the ball and go back to his right position. Yeah, he does it. Goes on the half right, spins, throws, and there is the left winger of Aarhus. Aarhus with the response. And the ball is blocked, it's grabbed and brought back by the center to his own crossbar. Starts from the middle and he spins and he throws down the line. But on the half left there is the left winger from the Danish. And now from the half right, Gregersen throws the ball, bouncing at the center. He takes it away. A timeout taken by Hammerby EF. Yeah, I think they, they, they feel now like they got a bit under the cosh here, a, a bit, a bit too much moments where it was that they, they really had much to do in the defense. So maybe they thought it is time to speak and to readjust a bit, but still too all. But which team will start to take more risk here, and will or will one force the other into some mistakes? It's really difficult to see where it goes and what will happen next. But last week at the Nations Cup in Berlin, we have seen one or two teams which will really be able to take a timeout and score directly afterwards. So we will see what happens next. 3.07 to play in the first half. Hammer B from the middle, the left wing and to the right, out to the right post, I wanted to say, but four meters before the goal on the right, it went out of bounds. And so one of the goal judges, from the Aarhus goal 
brings the ball back, brings it back in play, and now from the left side, we see Lund again, Lund, bouncing ball to the gap of the left wing as there of Hamrabi, and now he starts from slightly from the left, from the middle, and spins, throws, blocked, Aarhus has the ball, and now officials timeout, equipment check, the shoelaces are open by the center of Hamrabi, he has to bind them again, yeah. and so have a short break here. And now Aarhus has the ball. The right winger goes at the crossbar to near the right post. Starts, spins, throws, half left, it's blocked. And then laughing check with the counter attack, but it's out. It's out of bounds. Two and a half meter before the ball went out of bounds on the left. Uh, he has much throwing responsibli uh, responsibility, Lavnicek, former Swedish national team player. And now from uh, the left they start, Arhus, but the center is there, can block the ball. And now again he brings the ball the center of Hammarby, it's blocked away. So now with the response on the other side and Hammarby from the left post down the line. It's in snow. It's deflected over the crossbar by the hand of Gregersen. Wow. Great save there by the right winger of Aarhus. Now for the second time you have the feeling that a team can really use the timeout, Hammarby seems a bit stronger, a bit more forceful right now. And now Gregersen with the response. No, it's blocked away by the center of Hammarby. And there's already a substitution. Number four is coming in, number two is coming out. That sh no, number three is coming out. Number which, four is coming team, out. which team it is? For the uh, Hammarby. Three was out. Yeah, that Lack was Ma Magnus out. Mozart. Uh, if the numbers are right, it's possible. Yeah. And in number four. And in number four, right? Felix Rosfall. Felix Rosfall. Yes. Hammerby with the next throw, but the center is there by Arhus from the half right. Again, they throw the ball. It's blocked by the center of Hammerby. Out of bounds to his right. Already three seconds away from the 10 second clock. And now Oroswal has the ball in his hands. Comes to the middle, the right wingers. Direct throw, it's blocked by Gregers and Gregers now. On the half right, starts, spins, throws to the right post. It's saved by Lovnicek. Lovnicek, no counter, no. Slows down, down from the middle, he starts again. Laughter, spin to the right post, but out of bounds at the nearly four meter before the right post. Well, both teams don't really get the danger of passing the 10 seconds so far. From the left side, Aarhus with the next try. Lund down the line. Roswell is there. Roswell gets the ball with a second effort. And now from the half right, the tall Swedish player starts again. Bouncing ball, but there is Jensen. And Jensen goes back to the middle, the center, to the right post. Lavnicek is there, stands up slowly, goes to the middle. Roswell wants the ball, doesn't get the ball from the half left. Lovely check now. Bouncing ball. Saved. No problem there for the uh, Danish defense. And from the half left, Aarhus again. It's blocked by the center. Center with a counter attack, but the center is there. No counter attack by Aarhus. And Gregersen from the right side. Maybe a bit little more speed. Yeah, speeds up and inside the net. There's a gap. Nearly a meter between. Lavnichak and the center, and then the ball slips through between the left winger and the center of Hammarby. Gregersen, the guy who threw the ball. Now Roswell down the line, Gregersen with a the save there. Gregersen came from the left side, down the line, and the hands 
And maybe also a little bit of head of Gregersen <laughs> deflected the ball. From the half right. Now the left winger starts for Aarhus. The ball bounces, it's blocked. 3-2 for Aarhus. And now from the left side, Lovnichak down the line, blocked together. The center and the right winger, Gregersen, now has the ball in his hand, starts, spins down the line, and again, it slips through. Same throw wow. than before. Gets the center and Lovnichak on the gap. But and with a second, third, and fourth effort, Lovnichak tries to kick the ball out of bounds, but then he kicks it inside the net. 4-2 for Aarhus. And, and now half time. we have the end of the first half. 4-2 the score. Your resume so far for the first half, Kevin. <laughs> well, uh, before we had the th last two throws from Aarhus, I really thought we have a equal, a nice balanced uh, first half. Both teams started to find their throwing rhythm. The bouncing balls got, got more, especially at the side of Hammarby. They, they got a bit more into it. Lavnichak was the one throwing quite much. The rhythm was high, but then just at the end, Aarhus got that two goals, got that little run. And of course, it's uh, for, uh, for a side who scores it. It's always great to have that to go with, with these two goals into the half. And for Hammarby, well, they say we haven't done that, that much wrong. But then, just before the half, they found twice a gap and of course uh, he tried again after the first one and now Arhus in the driving seat but of course Hammerby isn't out of this they could really they have shown us that they can play solid goal ball I'm interested to see what happens in that second half um, if they will take more risk just to remember we had no penalty so far although we had two or three tries which were really close to a high ball. Yeah, really close. And uh, it was a fast first half. Just yes. 23 minutes for the first half were needed. And uh, now they changed sides and also the benches. So we have now Aarhus in black from left to right. The referee is there for the equipment check. And we have Hammarby EF in green and white from right to left so also the benches changes as i mentioned and during the equipment check what do you think kevin happened though there in the last four throws two of them went inside nearly the same way large gap between yeah. the left winger lovely chuck and the center well uh, <laughs> you always have that moments where you where you are not really Maybe the focus lost 12 minutes or a long time, and that can happen. And wi when it happens first, you maybe think about what, what we have just done. And the, and the player from Aarhus, of course, tries to throw exactly there again. And it was just like in, in that moment they would have needed a timeout. But maybe the coaching staff said, well, we had already won. Maybe afterwards they would say, well, it would have been better to, to close that gap. That can happen. And as we see so far, no substitutions at both teams. So, still. Well, uh, um, Hammerby also did, did move much, especially Lavnichak, as you told us. So that gap, gaps can open when you are not back at your position. Or and the ball is with Aarhus at the middle. Left winger starts from the middle. He spins, throws down the line, out of bounds. Four meters before the left post. Roswell takes the ball over uh, in his hands. Is now at the right post. Right winger starts from there. Direct throw to the right post. No. Crossbar is taken away by Gregersen. He saves it. He catches it. And now from the right side, Gregersen again. Tries to get the gap. No. This time the center is there. Tries to get the gap. This time between center and right winger of the Swedish. And again, a ball by the center of Hammarby was close. 
and from the left side, Alhus can't get through. Rosval is there, hands the ball over to Lovnicek. Lovnicek comes from left to the half right, starts, spins, throws to the half left, but there is the center, gets the ball with a second effort, brings it back to Gregersen from the right post. He starts, spins, throws, and this time the center is there, the ball in the neutral zone found, and Hammarby passes the ball back to Lovnicek from the half left, goes over the ends into the net, Lovnicek with the goal! Over the hands of the center. Well, he tried so hard, and now he's getting his reward. Just one goal leading now, Aarhus. Four to three for the Danish. And from the right side, Gregersen again. Bouncing ball over Lovnicek inside. That was a uh, mental error there by yeah. Lovnicek. Ball, we see it now in slow motion. The ball is nearly blocked, then it yeah, goes slowly over over his hip and he wants to grab it and by grabbing it his elbow pushes the ball then mm. over the line. Aarhus again with the attempt and so 5-3, two goals the gap again for Aarhus. Lovely check from the half right with power down the line out. And of course if you s if you say well we, we want to find a goal to, to get close then the worst it could, could happen that y the gap is up again in the next throw. And now Hammabi has the ball on his half right with Roswell. Roswell spins this time, throws high bounce, but the center is there. Jensen and now Lund from the half left again, also high bounce. Lovnicek is there. Ball is in front of him. He grabs it and now goes back to the crossbar. Spins, throws, and then blocked by the center. And again, there. Next try by Gregerson for Aarhus. Aarhus with the bounce to the gap. The feet of the center are there of Hammerby. And it's passed back to Lavnicek. Lavnicek spins, throws, ball is taken away by the center. No help defense needed by Gregerson and Lund from the middle. Spins, throws, left post. Roswell is there, stands up, counter attack to the gap, and Jensen is there. Brings the ball back to the left winger Lund from the left side. Arhus again to the right post. Out. 150 before the right post, out of bounds. This cross ball. 5 4 for Arhus, and you really have the feeling they have a slightly better defense, not that much. Not that many mistakes. And now Lovnicek again to Griegers. No, there comes Jensen and gets the ball away. Griegers now with the attempt for Aarhus down the right side, but Lovnicek still blocks the ball with his hips. And now Roswa from the half right. No spin, direct throw. Griegers is there. This cross ball and now from the middle. Bouncing ball, less of speed. Yeah, it, it lost all after that first bounce. And Lavnicek from the half right again down the line, blocked away by Lund. And the ball is out of bounds at the left. Well. And again from the left side, Lund on the center. Center is there. Direct throws on him, no problems for him. Gap throws, especially between him and Lavnicek, always. Dangerous. Now we have a ball over yes. here. Uh, ball was blocked by the feet of the center of Aarhus directly into the net on the other side. So we have a ball over. And now from slightly to the right, the center of Hammerby starts to the gap, but the left winger is there. And now substitution. Number seven, Griegersen comes out. Mm -hmm. And number nine is coming in. That should be, I have it here. Gustav Koch, Rasmussen, Rasmussen yeah. Gustav Koch. He was uh, called last week by us. Yeah, I think we didn't have that Rasmussen <laughs> information last week. <laughs> National team player from Denmark. Nearly the whole Danish <laughs> national team yeah. is back here three days after, uh, or four days after ending uh, the Nations Cup. Yes. So uh, Gustav Koch is now coming in. So we have Lund, we have 
Koch and we have Jensen. And now Love check the left wing, eats the ball. Counter attack by him directly. Jensen is there. And Jensen goes, gives over to Koch from the right post. He starts and then spins, throws down the line. Blocked out by Love check Still 5 3. And one apology to everybody. Remember that uh, we can't tell you how long to play it is. Uh, we uh, can't see the clock by now, but we are working on it so that we can bring it to you as soon and fast as possible. And now from the half right, the ball is bouncing, but no problem there. Rosval and his throw lost also a lot of speed. And now Koch to Rosval, he blocks it out. And so still 5-3 for Aarhus in this first game of the day. And from the half left, Lovnicek for Hammerby starts left side up in the air. And the ball is saved by Koch. Koch is there finally, takes the ball himself to the half left, the right winger, and tries to get Roswell. Roswell is there, stands up, slows down, and then again comes to the half left, the right winger, down the line to Koch. He blocks it out of bounds with his chest. And ball is brought back in and now from the middle Lund bounce ball center is there and the ball is passed to the left winger Lovnichak he comes over to the half right spins throws and it's blocked counter attack by Aarhus close ball but then blocked out of bounds highly by the feet of the center of Hammerby. Premature throw. Okay, it was too early to throw, I think. Mm. From the right side, Kochner for Aarhus with the throw. It's blocked into the face <laughs> of Lovnichuk on the nose and he and the ball goes then out of bounds. And Roswell comes over to the half right. Direct throw, bouncing ball. Jensen is there. Jensen Better bounce from him. Gives it over to Lund. Lund, bounced ball, kicked out of bounds by Barova. Goes out of bounds, left in the neutral zone. So we have a ball over here. And Koch hands it over to Lund. Lund, the left winger from the middle, starts now. And Lovnicek is there, ball is now in his hands, stands in the middle, spins out, out, oh, far out. Before the middle line was reached, it went out of bounds on the right side. Yeah. Focus is a bit gone, not the clear rhythm from the beginning. And now Jensen with the throw, blocked out of bounds by the belly of Roswell. Highly to his right. Lovnicek from the half left starts again, and then the ball is blocked. Ball over will come. It was blocked by Jensen, and then was rolling into the half of Hammerby. 5 3, still the score. And now Hammerby going down the line. A lot of spins start to look like going in the middle, and then it turns back outside like a backhand throw at bowling. And now Lund with the throw blocked by Roswell. And Roswell from the right post finds his position, starts direct throw down the line, into the net. Go for Hammerby. Roswell right down the line and gets Lund on the wrong foot. Well, and, and then now the timeout for Aarhus because they feel like well, the direction of the game could change, and that's what they try to avoid. So they try to put all the momentum away, which could have now been there. They, they try to just get them out of rhythm, um, and of course, that is their second time out. 
um, trying to readjust, trying to find a bit of offensive power again because their last goal is now a few minutes gone. It was directly at the start of that second half from Aarhus, so they really need to find again something to, to show the opponent there is still some pressure. We're now in the second half of the second half. 5.46 to go here. Five for the score. Now no answer, no response there by Koch. Was blocked by Lavnichak. And so next throw for Hammarby. Maybe the throw to equalize. Mm. And Lavnichak from the left post. He starts, throws, Koch is there, gets the ball at the right post. He starts, spins, throws to the gap to the half left, but now substitution is called. Number nine is going out, Piotr Lavnicek. Well, a and deserved break for him. Two is coming back in. Can you help just help me out, number two? That is. Oh, I've just closed it. I will help you. Just take your time, Kevin, no problem at all. What is it, Hammarby? Hammarby. We are Alexander Smetberg. Smetberg is coming back. And number two is, maybe number two. S Smetberg is back in. And no, number two, Smetberg, right? Yes. Then number three is coming back in, Mozart. Mozart, Marcus yes. Mozart, Smetberg is the center. Yes. And so we now have Roswell, Mozart and Smetberg on the field for Hammarby. Five for the score. Five for the score. And uh, we are now on the left side. Lund with the bouncing ball. Mozart is there, grabs it. In a second attempt, goes back to the left post. And starts from there, brings the ball down the line. But there is Koch. Koch grabs it, catches it. And from the right post, he now spins throws, Smetberg is there, ball is free, ball is going out of bounds right now. Yeah, already four seconds gone, so some would rush now, interesting to see what they will do. Felix Roswell from the right position, brings the ball, bouncing left side, but Lund is there, the left winger now again for Aarhus, bounced ball on Smetberg's knees, he finds the ball close to neutral zone, pass it back to Mozart, Mozart now from the half left, hard throw, and the ball is deflected by Jensen into the arms of Koch. And Koch from the half right with the throw. The ball is up in the end, out of bounds by the hip of Roswell. Well, still that one goal deficit now. And still difficult to see what will happen next. Well, now starting from the left, out, out, out of bounds. What, with the first contact, it was out of bounds. This attempt. And now, again, bounced ball, but taken away there by Smetberg. Seems like both teams know now a bit what to expect from the other side. So, um, who will be able to surprise? Next. Ahus with Lund from the middle starts, spins, throws to the gap to the left, but there are the knees of Roswell again, blocks it right to his right out of bounds. And so Roswell with the next attempt, half right down the right side, and the feet block it out. Lund blocks it out. Lund gets the ball handed over. Keeps the ball himself from the left post. He starts, spins, throws, and th it slips through. It slips through. Well, it, it under the body of Smetback, it slips through. 6 4 for Aarhus. And Smetback knew um, that uh, there was something happening. We, we heard him scream. And Mozart now from the left side down the right side, and it that was close. Maybe 10 centimeters missing. With, with his throw down the line, and then it went out of bounds. Koch 
has the ball in his hands, takes his time, and now starts, throws the ball right down side, but Mozart is there marking Mozart, hands it over to Felix Roswell, Roswell from the right side, now half right, throws the ball, Jensen is there, finds the ball, no, steps on the ball, then finds it, that was uh, dangerous, and now Lund with the attack, and Mozart helps out for Smith back, who was already beaten. Mozart from the half right, this time right post, Lund's flags are there, it's blocked out of bounds. Yeah, it's still only f only four goals for Hammarby, so still a solid defense from Aarhus, in my opinion. Koch from the half right, bounce ball, there's Roswell, Roswell gets the ball with a second attempt, is now on the half right. Starts, spins, throws, highly bounced, and Jensen takes it away. And now timeout taken by Aarhus. So 6 for the score. The third timeout. So there would be only one left. Still the possibility for Hammarby to take three more timeouts. So, well, it's maybe just like um, taking the rhythm down, taking a bit more time, knowing that there is that two-goal advantage for the Danish team. Um, so that is maybe something that they will try and maybe one or two more throwing ideas because, like I said before, it seems like the offensives have, well, they know what to expect from each other and especially after Lavnichak is out, Hammerby maybe has a dangerous option less. 2.53 to go. It's counting. And now on the left side we have Magnus Mozart. Brings the ball, Jensen is there, blocks it away. Ball neutral zone, finds it, brings it back to Koch. Koch now from the half right, brings the ball down the right side. Magnus Mozart is there, Mozart gets the ball, goes back to his goal from the left side. He starts again and it's up in the air in the hands of Jensen. And now next try by Aarhus, blocked away by Magnus Mozart, Roswell has the ball now on his half left. Spins, no, direct throw to the gap. Jensen is there, Koch doesn't get the ball, but it's out of bounds. Well, there's still there's no run for Hammerby. And now Aarhus again, Magnus Mozart blocks the ball. Time is running, and so we have a substitution. Smedberg is coming out, number one is coming in. That is Rebecca Krebs. So one of three female players in the rosters here at this Champions League qualifying tournament. And she will try to give the team something to maybe get back. So possession for Hammerby. 1.54 to go. Magnus Mozart nearly slipped through, but at the end the help def defense of Koch is there with the flags. And Koch now from the right side. Bounce ball. Krebs is there. Krebs now on center. Gives the ball to Roswell to the half right. And now bounce ball into Better the left. One. Jensen is there. And Jensen searching for Lund and then finds the crossbar, then Lund takes the ball over and bounce ball over Krebs, but Mozart is there. Mozart from the middle. And now it's taken away by Lund. Time is running. And from the right side, Koch, Krebs is there, takes the ball away, the center player of Hammarby. And so Roswell, high bounce by Jensen taken away from the half right now. Gustav Koch brings the ball, Krebs is there. W very athletic, the center player now. A lot of speed and Mozart from the right side to the left post, but it goes out of bounds. Well, it's not really, seems like they 
find what they need right now. Mm. 33 seconds to go. 6 4 the score. And now they need a little miracle here, Hammer being the first. Well, 30 seconds to go. Who, who will throw next? Next throw now for Aarhus. On well, the they, of course, right will side. try to take time off. Coaches are allowed to talk until quiet, please. So. And now Koch stands in the middle, takes his time. And now starts, throws, the ball is taken away by Cave. Substitution by Hammarby. 21 seconds to go. Well, number four is out. Roswal is out. And then in number number nine? Number nine, Piotr Lovnichuk is coming back ah, again. Ah, he had the six on my list, so I will change that. Well, he had a rest, and I he think was it the is nine. Could also be six because it's a dark black on a dark yeah. green jersey. Well, but they said nine, so yeah, it is number nine. Yeah. He he was the most dangerous thrower, but maybe also lost a bit of too too much stamina with it. But now he he will get the ball, I'm sure. Now the ball is back and playing up over the crossbar. Well, that could have been, but you feel that was the last chance for them. 16, 16 seconds to go. Left side. And now Lund takes his time. Last 10 seconds start now. And the ball is taken away by Krebs. 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 6 seconds to go. They have to hurry up. 5, 4, last throw, Markus Mozart, 3, and blocked out. Well, they can hold the ball One now. Second point two. One point two seconds to go. And the ball is in the hands of Gustav Koch, and he just let it lapse it. And so this was the first match of the day. And we'll be back at 10.03, 10.05. We'll start the game. Czech Republic team, GC Perun against uh, the German team, SSG Blister Marburg. So Kevin and I will be back in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, 
was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. 
Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. 
Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Berlin <laughs> to the next round to the second game of the day with the GC Perun from the Czech Republic, not Hammerby and not Parasport Arhus as we see now here uh, on the TV, but down there. It's written correctly GC Perun against the German team SSG Blister Marburg and. Uh, The Czech team in white and blue will play with Josifek, uh, Schweiner and Boschek and uh, Blister Mama will, will play with Kayumi, Emich and Arenda. So, Kevin, what do you yeah. expect from this game? Coach is uh, Stefan Weil for the national coach for Blister Marburg. Um, it's, it's the debut from Marburg here at this tournament, so I'm really excited to see how they will play there. Um, The Czech team, of course, with Jan Bosek, uh, one of the best players in the last few years, so maybe he will make the difference. Uh, he's a tall, tall guy. Around two meters something. Around two meters or more. And now the ball is handed over to Schweiner. Schweiner gives it to Bosek. Bosek stands in the middle. And now from the middle, he is orientating himself to the half right, no, starts slightly to the right, starts, throws down the line, and Arenda is there, block, Kayumi catches the ball and gives it to Emich, Nils Emich from the middle, spins, throws, and then it's caught by Schweiner. Schweiner's center, left is Josifek, Josifek, and right is Boschek. Josifek now from the left side, Kayumi is there, stands up, and hands the ball over to Daniel Arenda. He's the left winger of Marburg, right winger Emich, and now Arenda, Bouncing ball taken away by Schweiner. Schweiner passed back to Boschek. Boschek from the half right starts, spins, throws down the line. Arenda is there. Hard throw down the line there. And now Emich takes the ball over to in his hands from the half right. He starts. And then Schweiner bouncing ball into the net from his chest into the net around Boschek. 1 0 Marburg. Well, they are not. Well, it's, it's like waking up now for them because that was avoidable defensively. And now Boschek from the middle tries to get Arenda again, but Arenda is there. Arenda comes from left to the half right, spins, throws into the gap. Now Josifek is there. Josifek, the left winger from the half left, now starts again. And he spins, and throws the ball out three meters before the goal. It went out of bounds on the left. Well, we we've seen one good throw from Bosek so far, and apart from that, they really need to find their rhythm. Nils Emich from the half left comes to the middle, spins, throws, bounce ball, and it's secured by Bosek at the end. The Czech giant from the right side. Starts, spins, throws at the oh. post, at the post, hits the post. And now Daniel Arenda from the middle. Also a bouncing ball, Josifek is there. Josifek grabs the ball from the left. He starts again and throws the ball smoothly to Kayumi's legs and Kayumi blocks it out of bounds. Yeah, uh, that was a ball really uh, not, not that fast and good to block for, for him. And now Nils Emich from the middle starts, spins, throws. Schweiner blocks it right out of bounds. Well, seems like Marburg really pressurizing their opponents quite early. And again, Boschek from the right side. Huge throw, Arenda is there, can save it. Kayumi collects it and Arenda gets the next throw. Spins, bounced. Schweiner takes it away, away and then pass back to Josifek. Josifek from the left post starts, 
and then left out of bounds six meters on the left before the goal. Well, right now the the whole throwing pressure seems to be on Boschek, and that's that's difficult. We have seen that in, with Emich in in Marburg. Now he has Arinda to to join him. Emich with an next throw into the net over the legs of Schweiner. It winds up the bouncer, not touched at all, and then directly into the net. 2-0 Marburg, 9 minutes 26 seconds to go. Boschek now from the left post. He spins and throws, bouncing ball to Arenda. Arenda is there, grabs the ball, catches it, and now comes to the half right, the left winger spins, throws down the line, out, out, 150 before the right post, out of bounds. But so far it all goes according to plan for Marburg, 2-0. Boschek now hurrying up from the right side and Kayumi, no, it's saved, Amy with a great save. It slips through the legs of Kayumi, but then Nils Amy is there and deflects the ball up in the air over the crossbar. That was pretty close. Yeah. Also a bit of luck for them, but it's really going only their way. And as um, Jan Bosek, you think, well, what else can I do? Now, Nils Emich comes from the half left, spins, throws the ball out. Six meters before the goal of the Czech team. Perun, the ball goes out of bounds. And just to remember, Perun, silver winner in the Champions League 2021. So a really heavyweight here in this tournament. Now faked attempt by Boschek, Josi fake with the throw, Arenda is there, the ball is out. Locked out, little luck there for Daniel Arenda, but Daniel Arenda gets the next attempt from the middle. Spins, throws to Josi Fek at the crossbar and over the crossbar from the legs of Josi Fek, kisses the crossbar and then wins over and out. I tell you what, they, they are really maybe nearer to the third goal. Uh, really surprised to see that here. But never underestimate Boschek. Boschek now from the right side. Hard throw into the net. Never underestimate him. <laughs> Finds the gap between Guy Kayumi and Arenda. 1 2 the score from the Czech point of view. And now Nils Emich from the half right. Starts, spins, throws, and the ball is saved by Josifek. Josifek stands up from the half left. The left winger starts, turns, throws the ball at Emich, and he blocks it out. 8.29 to go in the first half. And now Arenda from the left side throws the ball. Schweiner is there and gives the ball to Borschek. Jan Borschek. From the half right, spin, throws, Arenda is there. Closes the gap and now gives it over to Emich. He came over to the left side, Arenda is to the right side. Emich from the left side to the right side. There's a crossing ball, Josifek is there. Josifek takes the next throw from the half left. He spins, throws, and the ball is blocked right out of bounds. Well, there was that go one goal from Bosek, but Still a good def defensive part from Marburg. Emich with the goal! Emich into the net, the ball bounces, and then Josifek wants to be in the air and blocks it out of the air, but then the ball went down under the body of Josifek through to the net. Niels Emich with the second goal of this morning for him and the third for Marburg. Now Emich with the save. Emich with the counter attack to Boschek. Boschek is there, stands up slowly. The Czech giant. And now from the right post, he starts, spins, throws. Emi is there, can grab the ball and hands it over to Daniel Arenda. Daniel Arenda from the half right. Spins, throws down the line, out six meters right before the goal, out of bounds. But so far they really had, the, had a good throwing um, action. And the ball now in the hands of Arenda, Daniel Arenda, in the middle of the goal. Starts, spins, throws, Josifek in the air, but then the ball is free, Josifek finds it. Gives it to Jan Boschek, Boschek has to hurry up, spins down the line, Arenda is there, secures the ball, and now timeout taken by Stefan Weil, the coach, 
of SSG. SSG Blisgang Marburg, 6.56 to go, 3-1 the score. A well, really, really good start, maybe um, the Czech team well, of Perun thought, well, what hit us here? I think a really good choice of throws from a good, um, let's say, a duo in Marburg with Emich and Arenda, especially Emich, he was a top scorer in the German league, then he got to the national team, maybe it was all too much for him, didn't really make a mark there, but here he's really back in shape again and he is the maybe the deciding factor so far. And the ball in the hands of Roman Kayumi. Now they can start, hand it over to Emich, Nils Emich from the half right. Spins, throws to the gap, blocked Schweiner to the left. Schweiner with a block, out of bounds and the ball in the hands of Boschek. He's now from the left post, starting, turning, hard ball, high ball. Mm -hmm. Jan Boschek with a high ball, first penalty of the, of, of the day, of the, of day. the whole day. Yeah. And Jan Boschek is now standing in the middle of his goal, goes to half left from Emich's side. Emich goes to the half left and then inside the net because Boschek is coming to the other side. Emich knew that and brings the ball to the half left inside and so 4-1 the score for SSG Blister Marburg and now we have a official timeout equipment check with Boschek and his eye shades. Well first I thought well a bit rushed that penalty really quick thrown but if you score you are right I say. <laughs> but this is the kind of movement Nils Emich does. Mm. He has to be fast and Maybe it looks a little bit rushed, but at the end you're right. If you make the goal, then everything was right. And the next goal by Niels Emich now. Schweiner and Yossi Fek don't get the gap closed. And from the f f foot tips of Schweiner, the ball is deflected into the net. 5-1 for Great. SSG Blister Marburg. Great punishment using every, nearly every, every opportunity. Borschek the right side down the line to Arenda spin one but the ball was totally under the body of Arenda Arenda with the next attempt throw into the net no Yossi Fek helps out for Schweiner and the ball is then kicked to his right out of bounds and Jan Boschek comes now to the half left hurry spins throws and scooped but now it's taken away by Emich and Emich now from the middle to the right out. Six meters before the goal right, out of bounds. Well, but it's nearly the first throw, which, which wasn't going to plan for him. He, he's really having a great match so far. And it's only Bosek, that's the problem. Throwing action, it's, it's only on his shoulders. It's only going over him. Maybe Josifek wants to change it. No, Arenda there blocks it out. Josefe came over to the half right and then down the line, but Daniel Arenda kicks the ball out. And now Daniel Arenda, also national player for Germany, from the half right, starts, spins to Josefe. Josefe is there. And now the ball in the hands of Boschek from the half right, spins down the line. Kayumi, now Arenda helps out. Kayumi couldn't reach the ball, but Arenda closes the gap. And now again, Arenda bouncing ball. Josifek in front of him. Schweiner finds the ball. Schweiner passed the ball to Boschek from the right post. He now hurries, brings the ball bouncing to Emich Kayumi up in the air in front of them. Ball is still in play and now out of bounds. Five seconds gone from the 10 second clock. Daniel Arenda gets the ball, prepares, starts, throws, bounced ball. Schweiner is there. Finds the ball, pass back to Josifek. Josifek from the left post now finds it, starts, throws the ball, and there is the ball deflected and then blocked out of bounds. The feet of Kayumi flex it, but then at the end, the fingertips of Emich get the ball out of bounds. And Nils Emich from the half right starts, spins, and 
to Schweiner. Schweiner blocks the ball in front of him. Neutral zone, finds the ball. Pass back to Boschek. Has the ball in his hands from the half right. Jan Boschek again. A huge throw. Kayumi's there. Deflected right out of Ooh. bounds. They also have that luck. I think twice uh, that they just, just blocked one of Boschek's throws. And the ball now. Left side by Nils Emich, half left. Bouncing ball, Boschek is there with his chest, blocks it right out of bounds. Well, but still you don't feel that Marburg is bothered right now. And the ball in the hands of Boschek from the half right. Fast throw, Emich, no problem, blocks it out of bounds. 5 1. Really work to do. 4.35 to go. 5 1 the score in the first half. Daniel Avenda from the half left spins and throws left side. Boschek is there, takes the ball himself, comes in the middle to the half left, spins, throws hard to Emich. Emich is there, stands up slowly and takes his time, comes to the middle to check. In position, Emich with the throw at the legs of Schweiner. Ball is free and now out of bounds. And for Marburg, it's just a question how long. Josifek with the throw, but Kayumi takes it away. Kayumi brings it back to Arenda. Arenda from the middle throws slightly to the left, spins, throws the ball to Boschek. Boschek is there and has the ball now in his hands. Jan Boschek from the half right spins, throws. To Emich and Emich has luckily bounced the ball out of bounds, blocked the ball out of bounds. With his right elbow, he gets the ball around the post. And now needs Emich from the half right, spins, throws, and there's the gap. No, Yosife closes it, and then the ball goes on the right of GC Perun out of bounds. So the ball will be handed over directly to Jan Boschek, the main attacker here. Perun and now Boschek again spins, throws, and the ball high ball. High ball, yes. His second. And Boschek says, No, 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 with his finger up in the air to the referee, but they won't take this penalty back, so there's a chance. Daniel Arenda in the middle. Boschek stands in the middle, right at the crossbar. Arenda starts, throws the ball to the left corner, inside! That was accurate. That was accurate. Right near the post, inside. 6-1 for Marburg. 3-43, uh, 34 to go in the first half. 100% on the penalties, 100%. Now, next throw, and Emich again, lately, but then blocked the ball out of bounds. Boschek tried this cross ball from right to left, but Emich in position at the right time. Nils Emich. Now gets the next attempt, comes over to the half left, starts, spins, throws to Boschek, but no problem for him. He stands up with a counter attack, out three meters before the goal, left out of bounds. And so Marburg with the next try. 3.15 to go. Arenda gets the ball handed over by Emich. From the half left, Arenda spins, throws, the ball is up in the air, and Josifek has it. No, the ball is lying on the line, it's lying on the line. That was so close, that was so close, but the ball is then blocked out. The ball was in the air, Josifek tries to grab it, then the ball is uh, from his hand going to the post, his left post, and it's lying on the goal line, and he grabs to the ball, and it stays off the goal line. So close in this moment. Needs Emich now to Schweiner again up in the air. The ball is now inside. Yeah. Boschek is too late. It's really not, not a good defense when you have always these balls jumping up and 7 1, and they only have one on the bench to react. That's right. Number one is there on the ban bench, but now try by Boschek. Aranda takes it away, and we see. Substitution coming up, maybe, by Marburg. Stefan Wall is preparing the cards. Next throw, Josifek takes it away. And Josifek for Perun from the half left. Starts, spins, and Emich, no, Kayumi takes the ball away with his legs. And then number nine 
is going out, Roman Kayumi. Yeah. And number six is coming in. I don't have the six, interesting. And now I see number seven is standing there. Sorry for that. That uh, must be Jan, Jan Wolf. Wolf. Interesting to see if they just change the center position or if maybe Arenda takes it. Jan Wolf, a little bit taller than Roman Kayumi, so more length on defense now. But we always have been impressed how good Kayumi can um, play on this position. And now Wolf from the left side gets his first throw to Schweiner. Schweiner is there, gives the ball to Kayu uh, to Borschek. Borschek from the half right. Spinning ball, Arenda now on center, Wolf on the left winger. Nils Emich from the half right. Josifek at the three meter line in defense, the ball to the gap, and it's in. Emich finds the gap between Josifek and Schweiner. Again and again and again. Eight won uh, the score. It's just like a fly, you can't get it away. Just bothers you again and again, and they really, they didn't take a time out so far. I'm not sure why. I don't see a coach at the bench. Yeah, but you could also do it as a player. Oh, now we, uh, Josifek leaves the ball out of his hand and the ball goes out. <laughs> Nearly, I thought in the first moment, because we're sitting left from the field, uh, maybe it goes to the own goal. No, 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 it went out of bounds. So, 1.48 to go, 8-1 the score. Nils Emich has the ball in his hands, starts, throws, spins, and Josifek blocks it out. Blocks it out at the last moment. After every throw, you Bo think it could be a goal for Marburg. Now down the line, out. Out of bounds. Came from the left, want to get uh, Emich. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Boschek is, uh, try, is not trying to find out uh, how good the defense of Wolf maybe is. Yeah. So now Wolf from the half left spins, throws to Boschek. Ball taken away by Schweiner. Schweiner. To Boschek, Jan Boschek now, maybe to Wolf, we'll see. Spins, high bounce ball, but Arenda is there, no problem with him. Lot of speed, lot with the first contact with the ball on the ground. And Arenda next try to Schweiner, Schweiner is there, blocks the ball. And Josifek comes far inside now as help defense. Maybe then there's a gap at the right post for Marburg. Next try, Arenda takes it away, the try by Josifek, and now Nils Emich. Emich has the ball, Josifek goes back to the 150 line and Emich to the gap and then Josifek inside, help defense by him. Ball passed by to Boschek, 50 seconds to go. Boschek from the half right, down the line, Arenda is there, gets the ball. Now in his hands, Wolf is clapping, the ball is thrown back to the goal. Wolf with the throw down the alley, but there is Schweiner, 35 seconds to go. Josifek now from the half left. Starts, spins, throws, Arenda is there, Th 27 seconds to go. Now Arenda from the middle, the center player, 20 seconds to go. To Schweiner, blocked out to his left, 18 seconds to go, 8-1 the score. So, perhaps maybe two throws. And now Josifek down, high ball. High ball again, third one. Can Marburg score already? with the third penalty. They have a 100% record right now. I know what will happen now. After you mentioned that. <laughs> As a commentator, we should <laughs> never jinx. <laughs> but I did it before. <laughs> yeah, Josifek at the three meter line. Emich against Josifek. To the left side, inside the net. Inside the net. You, ne you didn't jinx it. Niels Emich stays at 100% penalties. He scored two and Arenda scored one. With his teammate, yeah. Arenda. And so we have 13 seconds to go. 9 won the score in the first half here for SSG Blister Marburg. And now from the right side, Jan Boschek. Still runs, throws, and then the ball taken away by Emich. And now that's it. Oh half my. time. So 9 won the score. Stefan Weil, the coach of Marburg, brings his three players over to the other goal. And the 
Czech team is uh, collecting all their stuff because they don't have any staff or coaches with them. So they have to do it all on their own. So yeah. they take a lot more time. Marburg has a staff with an uh, assistant coach and a physiotherapist, I think. So three people there in the staff, nobody with GC Perun. If you are watching us and you are near Berlin or you want to come for the weekend to Berlin, just do it. Come to the Füchse Sportpark. Here we have Go Ball the whole weekend with this uh, qualifier tournament in the EGCA Go Ball Champions League. The first three will go to Belgium to the final tournament and we'll find the Champions League winner at the end. So just come here. Tickets are on sale. Uh, and if you like the live stream and our coverage and you are not able to come to Berlin, just tell your friends and show them how great this sport goalball is. And just to remind you, this is Group A. We have seen one match in Group A already. Aarhus has defeated Hammerby 6-4 and it's like the group winner will be automatically into the final, so automatically qualified for the Champions League and then the second and third placed in both groups will play a playoff system and we will switch to Group B after this one. It will be at 11.10 the Northern All-Stars against CS... Uh, I just have to... CSAV Lyon. CSAVH, sorry. CSAVH. Don't miss the H with Lyon. CSAVH Lyon will play the Northern All-Stars. That will be the first game in Group B. And Marburg really doing a good job, job, a good team chemistry. Really, everyone knows what the task is. And, well, Boschek tries everything, but there is not that much, let's say, throwing support from the others. There is no one else as strong as him. And that makes it really difficult. There have been gaps, there have been... Of course, it's also difficult when you just said it, when you don't have a coach, when you have one player left on the bench and he do maybe doesn't see also. So it's really difficult, to, but, but they, I think they just should have taken one or two timeouts just to break Marburg's rhythm, just to make them maybe think about what they are just about to, uh, to get or to Nils reach. Emich is out of uh, the game and number three is uh, coming uh, in for Marburg. So we have a half-time substitution. And this must be Kuchert Özdemir. And I think Arenda will stay on center. Left to Wolf and right Özdemir. And now the half-time substitution is announced by the table side referee. And... No substitutions on the Czech side. Perun gets a delay of game penalty because they haven't been um, ready in time. Number six. Schweiner has to defend. Yeah, but as I mentioned, they have no staff. They had to collect all their clothes, their bottles and everything. So they were just uh, too short half time because they don't have anybody who helps them there. Yeah. So now that's the possibility to start the second half with the next goal. Who will take the time out? A goal judge is missing on the other side, so now we have enough goal judges there. They have to stand in front of the players during the penalty who are right be beside the, the, the post posts mm -hmm. to secure them for if the ball doesn't go in. Daniel Arenda. Gives it to Özdemir. Özdemir, first throw is a penalty against Schweiner. Schweiner over the three meter lines. Center position. Özdemir at the post out. Ooh. Left at the post and then out of bounds. Nearly no reaction by Schweiner because this ball was hard thrown but didn't went in. So. The first missed penalty of today. In the first match, we had no uh, clarification. Official time or clarification, what's the problem? Where's the problem now? The ball. Ah, the ball has to be given to uh, ah, Marburg yeah, yeah. because they will start the second half. Yes. And the 
penalty. The team penalty does not count as a as a thrower because the time also didn't run like like normal. Uh, in a penalty situation, there's no time. Yeah. And now the ball is given to the center as every half or overtime is started. So now the second half starts. And now Daniel Erinder from the half right, the center, bouncing ball. Yossi Fick is there. Yossi Fick takes the ball himself from the half left. Starts, spins, throws. As Demir is there, there was not so much speed on this ball. And so Kirschat as Demir from the right side to Yossi Fick. He's there. Yossi Fick now from the half left. Starts again, bouncing ball. Close up in the end into the net. Oh, was the crossbar? It looks like me for the net. Maybe we can see a slow motion if I did it not correctly after this rally here. But now Boschek with the try down the line and it's saved by Wolf. And Wolf now from the half left. And then bouncing ball. Schweiner is there. Schweiner passed the ball to Yossi Fick. Yossi Fick from the half left. Spins. Throws and Arenda is there, easily taking the ball, standing up, turns, throws, Schweiner with his legs blocks the ball. Where is it? There is, is it, it. There it is. And he passed it to Boschek, Jan Boschek from the half left to the left side, half right to the left side, out of bounds. Do we have a slow motion of this goal? No, we don't. So then we have to trust the referees. It wasn't inside, luckily. Luck. For Marburg. Marburg. Wolf from the left side to Yossi Fek to the right. Cross ball, but Yossi Fek is there. Yossi Fek from the half left. Again, starts, spins, throws down the line. Wolf with an effort. Reaches out, grabs the ball. And then again, Daniel Arenda from the middle. Starts to the gap. And Yossi Fek helps out for Schweiner. And Schweiner takes the throw himself now, the center. Starts, spins, and then Arenda, no problem, stands up slowly. Maybe there was a chance for a counter-attack, but Arenda decides not to do Arenda with the next throw. Bouncing ball, and Schweiner is there again. Schweiner to Boschek from the half-right. Starts, spins, throws, and Özdemir is there. Can grab the ball with a second effort. We have 9 minutes and 48 seconds to go. Kyrshat Özdemir, left post, up, out. It's blocked out by Yossi Fick. And Yossi Fick gets the ball back on the left side, the left winger at the left post. Stay starts now, throws the ball, bouncing ball, but no problem for Wolf. And Jan Wolf now from the left side to, mm -hmm. the, to Schweiner, also close one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And now Moshe from the half right. Bouncing ball, Wolf is there. And uh, Boschek seems to get a little tired, not as much speed as in the first five minutes of this game. There's Demir with a bouncing ball, and Schweiner secures it. Pass the ball to Yossi Fek. Yossi Fek from the half left brings the ball down the line. There's Demir that was scratching the rope, I think. Mm -hmm. And now from the middle, Özdemir, bouncing ball to Schweiner. Schweiner blocks it, ball is free, still in play, still in play, still in play, and out. Five seconds nearly already gone, so 10 seconds you have to bring it over out of your half. And now fast throw by Boschek, he had to stop his motion because he started before the quiet, please. Now Wolf with the response, no, there's Schweiner there. Gets the ball, pass it back to Yossi Fek. 8.35 to go. Yossi Fek from the half left. And again into the net, into the net. For him the first goal, uh, although it sounded like being a bit close to a high ball. And it was over the arms of Daniel Arenda. The ball went through from the half right. Now Daniel Arenda bouncing ball down the line. And there is Yossi Fek, blocks it out. Well, can they get a little run now? Yossi Fek from the half left. Tries it down to Özdemir. Özdemir blocks it out. Özdemir was going into the middle, then reaches out with his arm because he recognized, no, it's coming near the post, and then blocks it out. 
And as Demir has the ball in his hands, takes the next attempt from the middle, bounced, but the Ossifek is there. They don't find the gaps anymore, like in the first half. Yeah, so we can see how much. And now Arenda blocks the ball to his left, out of bounds after the attempt by Josifek. We can see now how much a factor Gemich was, but the system still works, especially in the defense. They don't have to, well, throws outside or something like that. Jan it's Boschik just solid. With the ball. Brings the ball and Arenda takes it away. Was looking for a bit more power in it. But Arenda takes the ball himself from the half left. He starts now. Spins and throws heavily, and it's out of mm, bounds. Close one. Close one, 30 centimeters wide from the right post. It went out of bounds. And so, Peru with the next attempt. Yosifek stands at the left post, spins, throws, and the ball's out. Three meters before the right post went out of bounds. And again, Jan Wolf talking to Özdemir. Özdemir gets the ball, goes over to the right post. Now starts from there, brings the ball to Boschek. Boschek, no problem at all. And then dries his hands at his pants. And now the next throw by Boschek. Arenda is there, takes it away. In the middle, finds the ball at the end, goes back to the crossbar from the half left. He starts, he spins, he throws, and Schweiner with his chest there. Bo Schweiner with the counter attack. Jan Wolf is there, and Jan Wolf now takes his time from the half left, the left winger. Throws the ball, bouncing, Boschek is there. Boschek now on his knees with the counter attack. Wolf is right in place. Oh, it was not really powerful. And again, Daniel Arenda from the middle, bounce ball. Yossi Fek is there, can secure the ball. It goes back to the crossbar to the half left. And again, he plays the ball down the line. Özdemir, no, Arenda helps out. Arenda takes the ball away before the right winger, then hands it over to Özdemir. Özdemir from the half right starts bouncing ball. And then a long the ball, ball, the first from today. I, I just thought, well, a, a good bouncing ball, really dangerous, but long ball. So the first penalty against Marburg. And Jan Boschek is given the ball, and I think he will take this attempt at the six meter line. Özdemir is lying there in the middle, Boschek at the right post. And now Boschek brings the ball and it's blocked. Well. And it's blocked directly on the chest, on the offensive lying Özdemir. And so he takes his mistake back, the long ball. Nothing happens. 9-2 the score, 6.20 to go. Arenda from the half left, bounce ball inside the net, inside the net, over the feet of Schweiner to the feet of Josifek, and then deflected into the net. 10-2 now for Marburg. Can't find a better answer, I, th I think. Ideal moment yeah. on psychological ways. And now Perun with Boschek again, high ball. High ball, well, it's now all going away. And Time, time out Marburg. Time Interesting. Taken by Stefan Weil. We are two goals away from the mercy rule. And so maybe Stefan Weil now is talking about some um, penalty drills they had in practice. Maybe yeah. he wants to see something yeah. special. Maybe someone who hasn't thrown so far. Um, and maybe at the end, when when they when they have similar points in the group, we also talk about goals difference. So that could be a factor. Interesting to see what happens next. But the the second half didn't change anything. Although Marburg had now two substitutions, they still work together. It still works. The system still works, and a lot a mountain to climb for the Czech team. No penalty. There wasn't wasn't it a high ball? I thought so. You thought so, but. Where's the penalty? Have they declined it, maybe? That can be. That can be. Stefan Wall likes to decline penalties, so that means he's also not interested in the mercy rule, maybe. He wants to see his squad playing. Yes. So Daniel Renner from the half-left, bouncing ball. Schweiner is there at the center. 
didn't get what happened. Yeah. It was, it was called a highball, right? Uh, I thought so. <laughs> so, th but the decline we haven't heard. So sorry for that. At home, uh, but the important thing is ten to two for Marburg. Boschek has the ball in his hands and five twenty to go. Boschek from the right side, hard throw blocked out by the knees of Daniel Arenda. Kushat Özdemir from the right post starts now. Direct throw and Josifek is there. Ball is free. Ball is found, and he brings it back to his left post. Josifek, the left winger. Arenda is there, no problem at all. Stands up slowly, takes his time in the middle. Starts, spins, throws, and the ball is locked out by Josifek and his body. And now from the left side, Josifek starts directly. High, high ball. Two. It was completely rushed and completely well. Let's just, will they take it? They will take it this time. I see mm -hmm. Boschek and Schweiner leaving the place. The goal judge now has to stay, stand in front of them. And now Özdemir against Josifek. Josifek on the half right seen from Özdemir to the little post. And it's in, it's in, it's in. Finds the left corner and hits the net. Kushat Özdemir. Only one goal needed because when there is a 10 goal deficit the game will end in that moment just to let you know if you maybe watch this brilliant sport for the first time Jan Boschek from the right post starts throws the ball and then Jan Wolf is there stands up the left winger from the half left he starts he spins bouncing ball how long ball long ball long ball yes that mm -hmm. was a long ball Jan Wolf there with the mistake now he has to defend. It's the second penalty against Marburg. Now Josifek. But goes Peter, they already missed one. Goes to his half left at the six meter line. Also, like Özdemir now. Wolf is lying. Josifek with the ball right down the line. Out. Nearly hits the camera there. Ten centimeters, five centimeters away from the right post, but it went out of bounds. Well, and well, it just feels like a bad day. In the office for Perun, not not the best start you can no have no in this qualification tournament. Now Özdemir with the try, but Schweiner is there. Schweiner takes the ball and is now in the middle. The center starts from there, left post out of bounds, blocked by Özdemir, and the ball is given to Wolf. Jan Wolf from the half left will start and throws the ball out. Out, it went out of bounds even before it left his own and I'm third of the field. There's still one player from Marburg, number five on the bench, Burak Elekci. Yeah. Could he also get some time? Boschek from the right side now to Arenda. Arenda is there, no problem for the center. Daniel Arenda. Goes to the half right, starts, spins, throws to Boschek, and the ball is deflected out. Blocked out by Jan Boschek with his right hand. And of course, of bounds and we have four minutes and one second to go. As Perun, of course, you want to avoid that mercy rule ending. And the ball in the hands of Josifek. Josifek, faked attempt by Boschek. Josifek out. Left shortly after the middle line, it went out of bounds. And I think Nils Emich, we won't see again. Roman Kayumi, we won't see again in this <laughs> match because they have taken off their patches. And now we will see Burak Elekci. Burak Elekci coming for Daniel Arenda. So not a good start in the day for Peru and a great start for Stefan Weil and his court because every player gets in the first match some practice. Yes. And some possibilities to show their defense and offensive skills. Yes, and especially the defense that was really good and well, maybe also not that creative also from uh, Peru. So there are always two sides, but a good performance from Marburg and uh, a big lead, and they won't let that slip, I'm sure. 11 2. 
Alecci with the throw. Snow on center. Alecci throws the ball and taken away by Schweiner. And now substitution called by Boschek. Though he go he goes out. Coach and main attacker Boschek shows with his hands because no coach there for the cards. <laughs> shows number eight, then points on himself. Yeah, yes. I'm going out, and number one is coming in. We have no We don't have, one. we have only Rudolf Kujan as number four. Yes, we have a number four with the Rudolf Kujan. We hope it's Rudolf Kujan, but uh, I think we'll figure out till the second game of Peru. So we will call him Rudolf Kujan so far. And if we have some uh, folks watching from the Czech Republic and now getting mad with us because we're giving him the wrong name, just tell us. Just uh, write it on YouTube or wherever that we can uh, see where we also make maybe some small mistakes. Yeah, we are only human. Yes, we are. Hey, uh, he's just getting prepared, just getting, getting checked. And Stefan Weil, the coach of Marburg, tells his players what has just happened, where the new player goes. Ich habe auch gehört. And now Josifek with the try, and Kujan is on center. So we have Schweiner now on the right winger position. And uh, now the ball in the hands of Kirschert. There's Dinier, but it's blocked out. And now the ball in the hands of Kujan. And so the ball in the hands of Schweiner now from the right side brings the ball and Alekci takes it away. So we have Alekci on center, Özdemir on the right and on the left Wolf and the ball is now brought in. No, Schweiner's legs are there. And Schweiner from the half right brings the ball, bounce out of bounds, three minutes and eight seconds to go. And... Uh, so the ball now in the hands of Jan Wolf. Every attempt by the Marburg team could be the last. Wolf with the throw, the ball is blocked out by Kujan. Oh, but you still feel they are nearer to just finish it off than Peru and to just try and get to a little spell. Now the ball in the hands of Josifek from the left side. Left out of bounds before the ball crosses the half on the left side and Özdemir again with the ball in his hands on the half right Özdemir, Kirschert Özdemir takes it himself starts direct throw, Kujan, Schweiner both can block Schweiner with a counter attack less power, Alekci is there at the center and no Alekci, Burak, Alekci with the throw from the half left, nearly the middle starts, bounce, Kujan up in the air, bounce, crossbar over the top oh. and over the goal that was pretty close, as we see here in slow motion. That could have been the end, but uh, lucky bounce there for Peru. <laughs> and the ball in the hands of Josifek on the right post. Josifek starts out, 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 out. He's, well running just to, he's running out of bounds, and then the ball touches the ground out of bounds for the first time. They're really losing focus. Stamina can be a thing. Now the ball from the right side again, thrown ball out, cross ball there from Özdemir, but uh, sl slips under the body of Schweiner, but then also out of bounds, half a meter before the left post. Oh, really? We have 2.22 to go. They really are showing joy in play, Marburg. Schweiner from the right side, down the line, Wolf is there, Wolf stands up and now Wolf from the half left bouncing ball Kujan internet that's it 12-2 oh. the score 
for Marburg with the first win in the group stage here. And uh, so, they are on short the resume, please, <laughs> in 30 seconds. <laughs> what have we seen so far from uh, Marburg? Uh, a good organized performance. Niels Emich uh, as, a, as a key factor in the first half. Arenda also uh, a great start for him, but they also worked as a team and every six, all six shown a great solid performance and especially at the other side, nothing really worked and so we have that result and they are now top in Group A. What a start for, for the debutants. So we'll now have a short break. We'll go into the commercial break and uh, we'll be back at 11.8 here in Berlin with the next uh, match First off, Group B, the Northern All-Stars from the UK against CAs, C CS CSA VH, Lyon from France. <laughs> Kevin Barton, wir nach Bye bye. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin? Kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. 
Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst.
Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. 
Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. We still have some problems with the graphic because it's not Hammerby against Parasport Aarhus, but Northern All-Stars and CSAVH Lyon. That is right. Yes. And uh, now the two teams are getting prepared. Both teams are playing in Bordeaux Rats, Dark Rats. The British team, Northern All-Stars, with uh, white uh, numbers and a little yellow and white also in there. And uh, the French team in with white numbers as well. And we'll just take a look at the starting three. And this will be for the Northern All-Stars coming from Newcastle. Number three, Stuart Hudson. Number eight, Caleb Nanavi. And number nine, Matthew Loftus. And for the French team, uh, we'll start with number one, Haris Nemalia. With uh, the number three, Nabil Baich. And with the number five, Kada Bualia. And now, Kevin. I'm not sure how many time I have. <laughs> What do you want to know? <laughs> what do you expect from this game? France against Britain. Well, Battle of the rivals. Yeah, one debutant. This is uh, Northern All-Stars. But for me, they are the slight favorite also with the two British national players. I'm a bit surprised that Felice Vargas is on the bench only for Lyon. But of course, someone they can throw in whenever they like. So uh, how much can he be a factor when he's in? So the winners of the UK Super League will start yes. with Caleb Nanavi, the left winger, goes to the left post. He throws the ball and the ball goes to the Boilia, the right winger of Lyon, blocks it out. Left wing is Bailly and center will be Nemalia for Lyon and on the right wing is another throw into the net, to the net. That was the first throw by number five, Boualia, and it goes over the legs of the British defense into the net. And so one no for Lyon. Next try for from the British, that was Matthew Loftus, the right winger. And now from the left side, there comes Baich down the line, and Loftus with the legs can block it out to his right side. Loftus. Bounces it on the ground and then to Nanavi. Nanavi down the line, up in the air, ball is free. Nemalia gets it, the center for Lyon, hands it over to Boalia. Boalia out, out, six meters before the goal on the left side. His cross ball went out of bounds and now Loftus from the right wing goes to the half right at the crossbar, holding there and now. He waits, he starts, no spin, throws Nimalia, blocks the ball into the neutral zone, finds it, kicks it in front, finds it again, pass back to Baich. Baich with the fast throw, out. Left, out of bounds, seven meters before it went. Before the goal, Loftus now from the right side again. Hard ball, Boalia is there, Boalia searches for the ball, now has the ball and throws it, standing there, and Loftus, no, it was Nanavi blocking it out, the left winger, and so, ball for the Northern All-Stars, Nanavi, Caleb Nanavi comes to the middle, it's now on the half right at the three meter line, starts, throws, by e. no, Boalia doesn't have to come there, ball goes out of bounds, 150, to the left post. Slow start, apart from that goal for the French team. And ball is now back. In the hands of Boualia, hands it over to Baich. Left winger goes back to his left position. On the left post, starts, spins, throws. The ball is taken away by Loftus. Loftus brings it to Nanavi. Nanavi from the half right, starting, 
Bouncing ball. Boalia is there. Blocks it out of bounds on his right. Three seconds gone here. Well, and the Northern All-Stars try to get themselves into this game. Boalia, right post. Stars. Throws. The ball is blocked by the center out of bounds. That was Stuart Hudson. And Hudson. Now the ball in the hands of Loftus from the half right. Starts half hove. Baich is there now. Malia takes the ball, brings it back to Baich. Then Baich from the half left. Bounce ball. Hudson with his legs. Ball bounce out of bounds now. Nanavi finds the ball now. From the three meter line directly throw. Boalia is there. No problem. And Boalia again. Left thrower with his left hand and then Hodson takes it away to Loftus. Loftus from the half right. Spins, throws. Neymalia is there. Then Neymalia hands over to Baich. Baich from the middle. Spins, throws. Hodson high ball in the air. Finds the ball at the six meter line. Brings it back to Nanavi. Caleb Nanavi. Now starts from the three meter line to the left post and hits the post. Ooh. Hits the post and so it doesn't go in. Now, next try from by from Boalian. But not the outside. first time this is gone really outside quite early, so uh, you feel it's just a matter of time. And th th this can't go right all the time. So Northern All Stars getting nearer, in my opinion. And Loftus from the right post. Now start again. Down the line out. He does the same. And again, the goal judge has to stop the ball for Baich. Nabil Baich from the left post. Stearns cross ball. Nanavi with some problems, but gets the ball in front of him. And Caleb Nanavi from the half right starts, throws the ball, bounces to Nemalia. Nemalia is there, collects the ball, gives it to Boalia. Boalia from the half right, again to the left side and out of bounds. It's thrown 150 before the left post. Nine minutes to go. 1 0 the score for CASAVH Leon. Loftus from the right post, spins and throws the ball, Namalia in the air, finds the ball then, keeps the ball in front of him, and now Baich to the left post, blocked out. Loftus there with his feet. Oh, uh, I think that's the first dangerous, really dangerous throw after, well, one or two minutes for them, so they really have to f try and find exactly that. Nanavi from the right side this time. No, Boalia is there, but the ball will be blocked over. And so, ball over. So, another possession for them. And Nanavi can get the ball without brought back in by the goal judge. So, nobody knows where he starts. Now he throws the ball inside, but it's a long ball. So, instead of 1 1, it could be 2 0 after this first penalty. And Nanavi Baich. Takes this penalty against Caleb Nanavi. Nanavi at the three meter line. It's in the middle from the left. There is now Baich. Baich to the right side. Inside the net. Hits the net. And it's 2 0 for Lille. Well. And again from the half right. Loftus tries to break the French wall, but. Nemalia is there, takes everything away there on center position. Boalia from the right side on Hudson. Hudson, and now timeout taken by Northern Ulsters from Newcastle. Yeah, because it's, it's really not going according to plan, I'm sure, for them. Um, they don't find the specific points, the gaps, so the offensive play really needs some update maybe some some uh <laughs> in a computer you would say some new software or something like that so they're really struggling to get going right now and i think for the uh, for leon
um, go into the field, but the defensive was solid, and then they got that gift with that uh, penalty and used it quite good. So 2-0, but maybe they don't really know why they are in this position. And now the ball in the hands of Manavi from the middle. He starts, Neymar is there, ball is going out of bounds. And so Leon with the next attempt. Baiz now from the right side. Boalier goes to the left wing and now Baiz down the line. Nanavi's there. Gets the ball. Now in his hands from the half left. Spins, throws out of bounds. And the goal judge tried to grab the ball and hurts its hand there. So you see how fast these balls are thrown. And now the ball in the hands of Boalia, still left wing, and up in the end, over the crossbar. Oh, it's going high, 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 high in the air by Loftus, lack, and then over the crossbar. That was close. Yeah, really knocking on the door towards the third goal, and now another possession for the Northern All-Stars. They need something just to get them going. From the right side, Loftus, Nemalia takes it away. And now the ball is handed over to Bailly, still a right winger, so they stay in this position, switch, and so Bailly handing over to Boalier from the middle, spins, throws, a long ball, a far long, it's a long ball mm. by Nabil Bailly. Not really necessary in that kind of situation to take these kind of risky throws, so a chance, an invitation to get into the game for the All-Stars. And the ball coming from Nanavi, it's blocked over the crossbar. Oh. By the legs of Boalia, it goes up in the air and maybe just 10 centimeters missing there. Great opportunity for Nanavi, but couldn't, couldn't capitalize yeah. on this mistake. And now the ball in the hands of Hodson, the center with the bouncer, but Neymar takes it away. And the ball in the hands on the half right by Baish, and Baish is now out of bounds. We have the ball in the hands of Caleb Nanavi. And Nanavi from the right post. Again, starts, throws Neymar keeps the ball in front of him, grabs the ball, gives it to Boalia. Boalia from the half left, down the line. Loftus is there, Loftus secures the ball, goes to the half left, starts. Direct throw to the right post, but there is Boalia. Boalia counter attack, and Nanavi is there. Nanavi stands up fast, but then with the counter right out. They got a bit more consistent, Lyon, with their throwing action. Not that many outside, and that is a good message for them. And the ball now in the hands of Boalia, thrown down into the net, under the body of Hudson, it slips through. And so 3-0 here, the score for Lyon, 6.36 to go in the first half. Mantle error there by Hudson. And Nanavi from the left post tries to respond, but Nemalia has no problems there on center position. Takes all the ball away, balls away. Now by each down the line, Loftus blocks it out. And so, now. Still 3-0. 3-0, Northern Allsters with the ball. Loftus from the right side starts. And down the line into the gap half right, blocked. Ball over will come right now. Ball was blocked into the neutral zone, going out of bounds, so ball over. And the ball is handed to Caleb Nanavi. Nanavi on the half left. Has the ball in his hand, starts, throws to the right side, blocked and found by Nemalia. After Bailly blocked it and Boalia back on the right winger position, throws it out of bounds. And so... We'll have Baich on left, Boali on right, Nimalia stays center, and Loftus from the middle starts, throws the ball, and the ball is secured by Baich. 
Leigh comes from the half right, throws the ball down the line. Love uh, Nenavi there, putting the ball out to his left, out of bounds. And now Caleb Nenavi again, slightly from the left, starts, bounce ball, nearly a long ball. The coach is complaining there, mm. Alexandre Diaz from Lyon, about this decision, but he's also taping Alex uh, Vargas there, but now back into the game. Some problems there for the French defense, but at the end, Bailly has the ball. Bailly from the left side starts and throws the ball. Hudson is there. Hudson stands up, gives the ball to Caleb Nanavi. Direct throw from him, and then the ball is secured by Bailly. Handed over to Boualia from the half left. Boualia with the throw, and the ball is blocked out. Ah, he's Hudson. But they have really now found something. They really get them. Um, hard working, so it's, it's really a deserved lead now, right now. From the right side, throw by Loftus, but it's blocked, and then in the neutral zone, Nemalia has the ball passed back to Baij. Nabil Baij with the fast throw to Nanavi, but Nanavi blocks it, has now the ball in his hands. Comes from the half right, throws down the line into the net, finds the gap between oh. Nemalia and Baij. 1-3. First goal for the Northern All Stars. That was what they needed, what they were searching for. Can they start a run now? And now from the right side, Boalia with the throw. Hudson and that takes it away. Hudson with the ball down the line. There is Baich. Baich finds the ball then. And now the Baich from the left side throws the ball. Hudson is there and gives it over to Loftus. Matthew Loftus from the half right spins and throws down the line right side and locked out. We have four minutes and 17 seconds to go here. So again, uh, I think some kind of a quick first half so far. 15 minutes in complete gone. Kadabuali now from the left down the line at the post and the ball is out of bounds. Over the legs of Loftus hits the left post. And then not in. Caleb Nanavi starting from half left, coming to half right. Direct throw to Boerlia, block out to his right. He is a key player, Boerlia, so far. And now Felix Vargas is coming in. Nabil Bay is out. All right. And Felix Vargas, in <laughs> they now get even more, um, let's say, quality from the bench. So. Um, Really interesting if he now gets more throws. So if he and Buhalia, they could be really a, let's say, two-headed monster for them in that situation. Buhalia goes on the left winger. Vargas goes on the right winger position. And Buhalia with the next throw into the gap. And it's in, it's in, it's in. It slips through oh. the under the hands of Matthew Lofters. 4-1 the score for Leo. And Nanavi, no response by him, blocked away the ball. And Felice Vargas now hitting his own goal. Starts now so, uh, with the throw, but then Loftus is there and can block the ball out left. 4-1, so really. 3.41 to go. Caleb Nanavi from the half right starts, throws the ball. Naimalia is there. Naimalia gives the ball to Feliz Vargas from the right post. Spins, throws down the line, but there is Nanavi. Counter attack out. Out of bounds. The ball goes three meters before the line. And that, that happens too often. These little. Um, Unaccurate moments for them. The ball in the hands of Kada Boalia from the left post spins, throws down the line and blocked out. That was close. Loftus gets finally his feet at the ball and then kicks it out of bounds. Loftus now comes over to the half left. Starts direct throw. Namalia stairs, stands up, hands over. To Vargas. 
Vargas comes now over to the half left, spins, throws the ball, and Hudson is there, grabs the ball, hands it over to Matthew Loftus. Loftus from the half right brings the ball down the alley, but Neymar Lea is there, closes the gap, and Calabria from half left again throws the ball, and Loftus is there, blocks it out. 2.44 to go. 4 1 the score. Manavi takes the ball, starts in the middle. Direct throw, Namalia is there, Namalia no counter attack. Manavi took some time to get back into the position, but Vargas now from the right side to Nanavi. He's there, stands up, counter attack Nanavi. And this ball's in, it slips through wow. Namalia's hands under his body. Second goal for Northern Ulcers, 4 2. Now it worked, that counter-attack, I think, for the first time. Carabolia throws it out, wanted to go down the line on the left side, but was bouncing with the second contact out of bounds. So, can they now get on a roll here, the All-Stars? From the left side now. Throw by Loftus, that's taken away. Vargas with the counter attack, and Car Vargas is blocked by Hudson, Stuart Hudson. They're blocking to his left, out of bounds. And the ball at the right post. There is again Nanavi, but Bualia is there. And Bualia comes over to the right side, spins, throws, and the ball is taken away by Hudson. Hudson take you over, takes over. Hands the ball over to Loftus. Left off down the line, blocked in front of him out. That was Bualia blocking the ball. 2.43 to go. And the ball in the hands of Vargas. Vargas from the right side, down the line. Loft, um, uh, Nanavi is there. And Caleb Nanavi again. And Nanavi with the throw. Namalia is there. That was a close one. There was power in it. And it was really fast. He, he was really starting his movement before the whistle just to, to get a surprise. Feliz Vargas starting from the middle. Spins, throws, and the ball is blocked in the neutral zone. Hodson is searching for it, but it's going over. Ball over is called. So next try for Lyon. New 10 seconds, but first there will be a equipment check. Yeah, the shoelaces of Feliz Vargas are open, so he has to bind them again. That's the reason for this uh, official timeout equipment check. As you see now, big here on screen. And the ball is given back in. Kada Bualia, the left winger, goes to the half left. And now ball is thrown and and mm. the crossbar and out. That was unlucky for Lyon and luckily for Loftus. The ball hits the crossbar and goes out. Loftus now with the throw. Boalia is there, but the ball is then handed over to Vargas on the right side to the left post. Blocked out. Mm -hmm. they still 1 0 4 to go. 4 2 the score. They are still dangerous. It's an, an equal game at the moment. Two teams fighting. And from the middle, Caleb Nanevi, the post hits the oh, post. Oh, we had a crossbar, we had a post on both sides. That exactly underlines what I was just saying. And Bualia then with a the throw is blocked by Hudson from the right side now. Lofter is down the line, Bualia again with a counter attack. Bualia is blocked out by Stuart Hudson. 42 seconds to go. Well, that means probably three throws each. Caleb Nanavi from the left post starts now, throws the ball, Boalia is there, and Boalia keeps the ball. No, gives it, hands it over to Vargas. Vargas from the half right, bouncing ball, blocked by Hudson. Hudson finds the ball now, brings it to Caleb Nanavi at the three meter line. He starts and then out of bounds. So it doesn't take much steps. Yeah. 18 seconds to go. And <laughs> the uh, 
Northern Ulster's bench is preparing for halftime, so they don't want to take a timeout, I think, because they're grabbing all the bottles and all the stuff. Now Vargas down the line, the ball is out. That was also not far away. And so we have 16 seconds to go. Well, that only took just two, so don't tell me that two or three seconds are not enough to score a goal. From the left side, Loftus to the half left, to the middle. Go to the hop right from the right now. Brings the ball blocked out and we have eight seconds to go. And Bualia, the left winger. Five seconds to go. Throws the ball down the line. We have three seconds to go. And the ball now in the hands of Loftus. Three, two, one. That's it. And he's uh, looking outside <laughs> to his coach, like, hey, you said I have more seconds. <laughs> and she was uh, nodding her head like, no, 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 I said three, I said three, you didn't listen. And then he was smiling mm -hmm. afterwards. And so they are now changing sides. 4-2, the score for the French against uh, the British team. Yeah. Lyon's leading. So what uh, have we seen so far from both teams? Well, at the start, it looked like um, Lyon really had problems to find a rhythm, but still they have been 1-0 up. But uh, I didn't really know why, but they had that one good throw, and then I think they needed, let's say, three, three and a half minutes, still had a good defense, and then they were really there. Then they were really um, getting a consistent offense, and uh, the All-Stars, well, they struggled, they missed a penalty, and then there were three nil down. So there was really not going anything in their favor, but they have now found a bit of a rhythm. They are now better into the game, but still a really good defense for Lyon. And with Vargas, of course, another throwing action into the game, which can be always cause some danger. He didn't score so far. For me, the player of the match so far is uh, Mr. Buarlia, really taking the game and uh, well a 4-2 lead the all-stars need more they need more creativity they need a bit of well some ideas to to turn that around because right now it's it's good balanced but there has been that little run for Lyon which gives them the 4-2 lead at halftime and just to let you know what's next on our let's say, tasty menu, we will have USV Hercules against the Chemnitzer BC. That will be at 12.15. That will also be a game in Group B. And halftime is still running. And of course, both players, both teams have some options on the bench. But the Northern All-Stars already have their two national team players in. And for the French guys, it's also a nice preparation this weekend because they will play at the Paralympic Games. And as far as I know, some, some of them, like Bualia, are part or minimum candidates for that national squad. And now half time is over. And we have a substitution on the French side mm. as far as I see it. Uh, let me... We have a, uh, a guy with a number we don't know. Number two. Mm. And number four is in. So Thomas Ramon Martin is in. And number two, we don't have here on our sheet. The only one who hasn't played by now was Elias Uni. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be then Elias Uni. With the number yeah, eight yeah, yeah, listed yeah, yeah. by on our side. And on the British side, there is no Sub substitution. Oh. We see Peter Doyle there on the bench, but he's not uh, patched by now. So, Gennady with the con uh, with a uh, counter attack, I want to say, and into the net. Vargas is there, not in position, and 
So three for the score. Oh, what a Great start. start. And the ball now in the hands of Uni. And the ball taken away by Hodson. To Loftus from the right side. Hodson with the ball into the net. And what the ball right into the corner. Well, where is the team we have seen in the first half, which has played solid defense? Where where have they gone? Vargas from the half right now starts, throws the ball. Hudson is there. Stuart Hudson hands over to Nanavi. Nanavi with the throw, and it's taken away by Ramon Martin, but he can't find the ball, and so they have the ball over. Well, that substitutions right now doesn't seem to have given them a good shape. And now we have Uni on the left in the position from half left starting and Loftus takes the ball on this armpit and then with the throw and Uni is there. Gets the ball deflected around the post. Elias Uni. And so Vargas from the right. Finds it again, buddy. Over the crossbar, it's deflected. Now it's interesting. It's four all, and of course they want to have the they want to have back the lead here. From the left post now, we have David Nanavi starts out of bounds and throws the ball mm. in the first out of bounds. So. the score and the ball is in Vargas finds the gap he finds the corner right and Nanavi is not in position 5-4 for Lyon back into the lead ball in the hands now from Loftus it's blocked by Vargas and Vargas now up blocked by Nanavi. And Nanavi with the throw. Ramon yeah. Martin is there. Hands over to Elias Uni. Half left position. Elias Uni with the spin. And then Hudson, Stuart Hudson, hands over to Loftus, or as he's called, Lofty, on his <laughs> back of his shirt. And then Loftus with the ball out of bounds. Nanavi wants the ball, gets the ball from the middle, he starts and throws the ball to the corner, Uni is there, blocks the ball, and again Elias Uni from the half left with the spin, throws the ball into the net, into the net, Loftus was totally out of concentration, was not playing defense in this moment, the ball just runs through. Now Loftus from the right side, bouncing ball, Uni up in the air, inside the net, inside the net. Well, it seems how the longer the game goes, the, well, the worse the defense get. 6-5, the score for Lyon, and the next try by Vargas, taken away by Nanavi. Nanavi with the fast response, but Vargas is there. And now... Vargas again to Hudson, the center takes away Hudson with a high ball in my opinion, but no, everything was fine, the referee on the far side things, and so Uni with that next throw taken away by Loftus, Loftus at the high ball line was scratching, maybe you heard it also mm -hmm. at home, and next try now for Uni, Uni, again. Hudson is there, and hands over to Nanavi, Nanavi doesn't find the ball. Now he has the ball in his hands. Starts again, throws the ball up in the air in front of Uni. And so nine minutes, five seconds to go. Feliz Vargas from the half right. Throws the ball. Hudson is there, stands up, but and slows down the game. And Loftus from the half right. Spins down the line out. And the ball is now out of bounds in the hands of Elias. Uni. Uni 
can keep the ball. Barker says no, he would take the throw. And only out of bounds. Shortly after, in the British half, but out of bounds. Well, <laughs> we have an equipment check there with the uh, eye shades of Elias Uni. A wild second half so far. We have seen six goals in the first half and already five in the second. So it, it's like US basketball where you just see in regular season defense is just not existent. I mean, they are trading buckets. <laughs> It's just you score, we score. Loft is from the right side. And the ball was out. And time out taken uh, by the Northern All-Stars. No, not Northern All-Stars, sorry. By Leon. Alexandre Diaz, the coach, is there. And that is... And what would you give uh, as a Leon coach when you take the time out? What would you give your uh, boys now on the way? Well... You are one goal up. First of all, take your time. Don't rush. Know what, what's next. Know where you want to throw. And just try to focus on, on the defense. Try to hear where the others are in your team and try to help out that, that one helps the other. Just and, and of course, the substitutions maybe also brought a bit of unstability into the defense so that was a coach's decision so we are back in the game Ramon Martin finds the ball in the midfield zone and then brings it back to Uni Uni down the line out that's what I mean that was rushed that was not necessary in that circumstances And another possession for the All-Stars. The ball now in the hands of Loftus on the right side. Brings the ball to the gap, but Ramon Martin blocks it out on his right. And Vargas takes the ball in his hands. He's now on the left post. Starts, spins, and throws. On the left side, Loftus is there. Yeah, you feel like he could be the key factor now because Burla the, the, the other one, the other top scorer, is out as far as I know. Boalia? Yeah, yeah. He was substituted. Yes, he's yes. out. We have uh, Uni on the left, Vargas on the right, Ramon Martin on the center for Leon. And the same squad for yeah, the yeah. Northern Allstars as they started. Felix Vargas with the throw, Loftus, no, um, Nanavi takes it away. And now Hudson, the center, with one of his rare throws, and it's up in the air, and it's secured by Uni. Just give him one or you could give him a few times to mow the ball, it seems like. And now the ball in the hands of Hudson gives it to Loftus. Loftus spins, throws, and Moramo Martin is there. Gets the ball with a second effort. And the ball now in the hands of Uni. Uni left down the line. Out! ball hits the wall and we have seven minutes and 31 seconds to go well offensively this time out did not have any positive effect for Lyon now the ball in the hands of Caleb Nanavi half left starts spins throws and Ramon Martin with problems again gets the ball and then comes over to Felix Vargas from the middle. Spins the throws. Loftus is there. Blocks it out to his right. And so, again. Goal judge brings it back. Yeah, 7 11 to go. And Loftus from the right side. Spins. To Ramon Martin, gets the ball directly and with the counter attack. Ramon Martin to Loftus, Loftus gets it. And then time out taken by Northern All Stars. Well, as wild as that second half started, the, it, it really calmed down um, in the last few minutes. And I think that's not in the interest of the All Stars because they have been two down, now they are one down. 
and uh, well, they they need to find a run, so they need to to find something going just to the the offensive play. It's there are no no real surprises actually. Leon knows what happens, knows what will be next, and maybe they will have now a few new ideas after the timeout. And the ball now thrown, taken away by Uni. Uni from the half left. Spins, throws, ball is long in the air, and then. And it's a long it's ball. A long ball, yeah, it was quite long in the air. And so, penalty. Possibility to equalize here. Caleb Manani gets the ball handed over on the left. And Uni has to defend the goal. Gets at the six meter line. And the ball in the hands of Loftus. Stands also in the middle. Starts, throws, and blocked. The second penalty for them, and the second missed. Well, he just wanted to go straight in the middle. And when he was lying there, <laughs> didn't have to move. And so, great opportunity missed there for the Northern All Stars. Was out. And Loftus with the next throw. And the ball in the hands of Leon. So we are back here, and now we have a substitution. Uh, Nabil Bay is coming back into the game, mm -hmm. and we see Elias Uni going out of the game. So we have an equipment check there, and uh, the referee is not happy with <laughs> the eye shades and says, "Do you have this?" Another eye shade for him because this one I won't accept. Now they change it and he shows them again. Funny thing is, last week, Alexandre Diaz, the coach of the French team from Lyon, was a referee at the Nations Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and the referee now was the national coach of the Polish team last week. So they swapped roles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe uh, yeah. something happened also at the Nations Cup we haven't witnessed when maybe Alexander Diaz was very correct. I don't know that. Um, so the ball now was thrown out and is in the hands of Caleb Nanavi. We have 6.25 to go. Still only one goal between them. Ball deflected out of bounds. We have uh, Baich on the left, yeah. Vargas on the right wing, and Marmontin <coughs> on center. He deflected the ball at the end. Baich was the one who could get it out of bounds. Baich now from the left side starts, spins, throws down the line. Loftus is there, stands up, counter attack by him. Oh, close one to a high ball. Was far in front, but the ball is blocked at the end. And then handed over to Baich, and the ball is then blocked by Nanavi. Nanavi with the counter attack, but now it's blocked out by Vamo It Seems to get a bit more challenging in the defense for Lyon. Vargas now on Hotsey. Stuart Hotsey gets the ball, brings it to Loftus from the half right. Direct throw. The ball is blocked by Vamo left out of bounds. Next try for Baich, Nabil Baich from the left side. Spins high, bouncing ball into the net. What a <laughs> bouncing <laughs> ball there from Baich. Nearly 150 high at the highest peak and then over the hip of Hudson. Well, that goes in. That was that surprise moment I was talking about. Feliz Vargas again with the throw. It's blocked out. So 7 5 yeah. for Leon. 
5.22 to go in this second half. Well, that's still <coughs> they could score 10 from here, but still everything possible. Loftus from the half left this time. High ball. High ball, yes. And he's shaking his head like, no way, Rev, no way. But at the end, the ball was also not in. Not hit the crossbar at the end. And Ramon Martin is allowed to take this penalty. Loftus comes to five meters middle in front of the goal, half right. There is Ramon Martin. He goes down the line. Block. No, not secure. Ball is rolling, 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 rolling. And he gets it. He gets it with, with his second effort after rolling over his arm. He turns back, runs there, orientated himself, and then gets the ball. Now he's smiling after this unorthodox way to block a penalty. Nelly from the left side. Vargas is there. Vargas takes his time. And now also time can get a factor. Yes. Vargas on the, knee, on the knees of Loftus. Ball is over. Goes over the midline. And it's really... Um, really impressed by that penalty save because it's so easy to panic in that moment. Oh, uh, where's the ball? I'm the only one in the field. Help, help. But really good. And the ball now in the hands of Bailly. Flat bouncing ball. Nanabi with a counter attack, but now it's blocked by Vargas. Mamata takes the ball, gives it back to Felice Vargas. Vargas from the half right. To Nanavi stands up, but then takes his time, hands it over to Loftus on the high half right. He spins right down the line, blocked out by Elias Nabi, uh, by ich. Nabi by ich, of course. Sorry for that. Well, the last three penalties in the game in total from both have been missed, just to let you know. Nanavi now with the ball in his hands. With the attack, the ball is saved by by Ich and then grabbed by Ramon Mata, handed over to Vargas from the half right. Felice Vargas spins, throws, Nanavi takes it away. Four minutes, 17 seconds to go. Loftus from the half left starts, throws, and it's blocked out by Baich. Well, it's now in the balance again. Ball in the hands of Nabil Baich goes over to the left side. Ball is in, the ball is in. Finds the gap between Hudson and Loftus. And then 8 5 for Leon. And timeout taken by the Northern Allsters here. Three goals, deficit, yes. four minutes and two seconds to go. Yeah, of course, you have to uh, throw with, with tempo, but you have to find that. Uh, that middle way between uh, rushing and being aggressive and getting your offense going. And they, they never had a big run in, in this game. They had that uh, run where they came from 4-2 down to 4-4. But now they need something they didn't achieve so far in the whole game. They need that three-goal run. And um, Bailly seems to be now a bigger factor than Vargas, I didn't expect that. And of course, he knows when I found, found it twice, I can also do it another time. And Coach Turner brought her boys back on the field. Nanavina from the right side deflected in the air, but Vargas with some problems then blocked out. Wanted to find the ball and then rolled through his legs to the goal, but then out of bounds. Vargas from the half right with the throw over the crossbar. Mm. And we have a, a change. Loft is now on center yeah. for the Northern Ulsters and Hudson on the right winger position. Nanavi stays left winger. And uh, number one is getting prepared on the side Just of the Northern Ulster. It must be Doyle, if I have it right. Peter Doyle, yeah. Now Hudson with the throw and Ramon Martin with the counter attack to the left side, but Hudson is there. Stuart Hudson gets the ball. 3.40 to go. Nanavi from the half left. Spins, throws. The ball is blocked by Vargas. Spins up, takes his time, comes over to the half left. 
Spins around, throws the ball, and it's secured by Loftus after the block of Hudson. Nanavi now with the throw. Amomata gets the ball, spins it over to Baich. And Baich from the left post starts high bounce again, and it's not going through this time. Nanavi with half defense is there. Nanavi now with the throw, hard throw, secured or blocked by Baich. And then substitution called by Leon. Number nine, Feliz Vargas is going out. And Kara Bualia is coming back in with the number five. And he was the one who uh, scored most of the goals in the si uh, first half. So no relaxation for the All-Stars. Just it maybe gets a bit more dangerous. 2.59 to go here in this third match of the day and at 12.15 we will see the Dutch game US v Hercules against the German team Chemnitzer BC and now the ball in the hands of Bay left side throws the ball and ball is taken away by Loftus in the blocked out ball is out of bounds and uh, the ball now from the left side. Loftus starts right away. Borlea is on the right wing position. And like Vargas was before, Borlea from the right side starts, spins, throws. Loftus on center, gets the ball with the counter to Borlea. And Borlea takes his time now. Leon also can work with the clock. Oh, and then there was a problem. Ramon Martin was standing in the way of Bailly. He was coming over to the right side, and then they collided. And then Bailly decided to throw the ball out of bound on uh, purpose. Now Hots Hudson from the right side. High bouncing ball and kicked out by Ramon Martin. <laughs> to 28 to go. And... Bualia coming over to the left side this time. Bailly is on the right side. And then Bualia from the left side. Bring the ball down the line inside the net. But it was out of bounds. One of these contacts before. A lot of spin was in there in this ball. But doesn't count. 8-5 the score. Caleb Nanavi from half right. Starts from the three meter line. Throws the ball. And Bualia has it. And takes some time from the clock now brings the ball again down the line Hudson is there Loftus collects the ball last two minutes will start right now now the throw Wama Mata secures it time is running by from the right side out of bounds totally disorientated and the ball is out and now In the all-stars they have a substitution <coughs> Caleb Nanavi is out and Stuart Doyle is coming in. Uh, Peter Doyle, of course, is coming in. <coughs> is at the equipment check right now. 153 to go, 8 5 the score. So when they the British want to close the gap, they should start with the next two or three attempts, right? Yeah, they, they need something just also for, for the head, for the confidence. And Doyle with the first throw, directly <coughs> out of bounds. And so, next chance for Bailly. Takes some time, throws the ball, high bounce again, and uh, Hudson can secure it. Hudson from the left side spins, throws, and Boalia is there. Stands up slowly, 1.35 to go, is at the left post. Starts again, throws high again, but there's Loftus with the counter-attack, but there is Boalia again, and takes some time from the clock, 1.20 to go, now starts, spins, throws, ball up in the air, and blocked out of bounds by Lotus. Well, just the last two throws, they really started to take time from the clock, just before I, s I thought they were rushing still. Ramon Martin has the ball, and now timeout taken by the French coaches. 1-12 to go, 8-5 the score. They don't need to score, you feel. They just can relax. They just can 
slow it a bit down still don't don't try to risk don't try to do silly things and just say well they they had three on the bounce i was wrong when i said they hadn't but it was from one four to four four and well it's difficult to find that in, in that period of time and well I, I i don't see the all-stars coming back as far as the game went and leo they can just wait because maybe there will be some mistakes some high or long balls 112 to go ball in the hands from the left winger but by he's blocked out by doyle it's uh, another possession blocked And the ball now in the hands of Boalia. Throw the ball up in the air and over the crossbar, deflected by Loftus. 54.3 seconds to go. Still 8 5 for C A S S A V H Leon. And now. From the half left, Hudson is taken away by Ramon Mata, hurries, but then goes to the left post, takes his time, and then loses the ball, has to get rid of it, and now gets it outside. That was Ooh. close to the 10 seconds. Loses the ball, uh, hits it on his own right hip, then loses it, loses it, and uh, problem they then had uh, was a 10 second uh, yes. rule, and so he. And now we have a substitution. Number eight is coming back in. Caleb Nanavi and yes. Stuart Hudson. Hudson is coming on the bench. So we have 39.2 seconds to go. And this is good for all of you because you don't have to wait too long for the next game because mm -hmm. the next game will be had in the right next after this game at 12.15 will be uh, the Dutch team Hercules Hercules USV Hercules against Chemnitzer BC yes you're right Kevin and um, that is just nine minutes away from now and you just said 39 seconds so that means perhaps perhaps three throws for the All-Stars so they would need to score with every throw so they need the perfect end of this game and they haven't been that consistent if they ha would have been the game would be the result would be different you know ball is now back in play clock is running Malavi with the throw went nearly it went through but there was then at the end by now again throw into the net. Well, this that's time. done. It's done. They are over the lacks of Loftus. It went through 26.5 seconds to go. And the ball now deflected, but he finds it and takes time. 18 seconds to go. Loftus, no. Timeout taken by the British coach Turner. <coughs> and so, time is running. But not on the scoreboard. There we have 14.6 seconds left here. And it's it was their last timeout. They had an early one after they have been 2 0 down and they had a few. So it's four already. You can take four timeouts. They don't have. This is the last one but I don't think they can change because that would only work with many mistakes now from Lyon. A four-goal lead, the highest lead they had in the whole game, and they will get their first win. And they, they have been unlucky last year. They were the host of a qualifying tournament, but they were in fourth place. Now, throw by Doyle. Bounced first out of bounds, and... As we were given advice from you guys, from the community, the ball had to be changed because the ball was broken, so a new ball now is in play. 
and on the right side now, Buolia with the throw, and it's inside the net. Buolia over the leg, and the next substitution is coming here. Number nine, Loftus, after missing this ball, is taken out, and number three, Hudson, is coming Hudson, back yeah. in. 10 5 the score. It's now a bit too much, but that can happen at the end when one knows they have lost and the focus is maybe a bit off and the others say we can play without pressure with freedom and um, yeah 6.1 seconds to go and uh, so we are now closer than seven minutes to the next game so I think the next game will start seven minutes after this game here so they have their warm-up yes. time and now the time has elapsed and CS VAH Lyon wins 10 to 5 against the Northern Ulsters. So, first game in the group is in the books, and the next game in Group B will come in seven minutes. The Northern Ulsters, uh, the USV Hercules against Chemnitz Bitsy. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de
Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Netherlands against the candidates ABC from Germany.
Candidates in the black jerseys from left to right and Hercules in the white black jerseys from right to left. And the starting three for Hercules will be number one, Sam de Jong, number two, Imre Himmelbauer, number five, Fauna Specksneider. And for candidates will start number eight, Philipp Schrader, number six, Oliver Hörauf, and number three, Ruben Schäterlich. And now Specksneider for hitting with the first throw, but Hörauf is there. Hörauf as a left winger. Stefan Weil is a coach also now for Chemnitz there at the sideline. Sein Williams and Felix Orga on the bench. And now the ball in the hands. Into the net. First goal here for Hercules. Number seven it was. And Hörauf now wants to respond from the half left. The ball bounces up in the air and the ball is secured by Speck Snyder. And the ball now down the line. Hörauf is there, blocks the ball. Schäterlich is looking for it. And uh, can you show me just number seven for a second? Uh, which one? The from Hercules. Now Schrader with the throw down the line. Yeah, with Klava. Ronald Klava with the first goal here with the 1 0. Klava left winger. Speck Snyder, right winger, and Himmelbauer is the center for Hercules. Mm -hmm. And on the half left now, Hörauf with the throw, bounce into the net, over Klava. No, it was not Klava, it was over Sam de Jong. It's not a seven, that's a one, as I see it now. Yeah, before you said de Jong, and now you the It's difficult to see because at the back it more looks like a one, at the front it more looks like a seven. <laughs> so we, we go with Sam de Jong, Hörauf has the ball in his hands, 1-1 one, one the score, and the ball now bounces again up in the air, and de Jong can secure it at the end. Next tries de Jong, and to the net, finds the gap between Schäterlich and Schrader, and Schrader puts his hands on his face, knows that was his mistake, 2-1 for Hercules. And the next throw again, taken away by the center, and again, Speck Snyder from the half right with the throw down the line, well. blocked out at the end by the feet of Schiedelig and the hands of Schrader. And now throws Schrader, Himmelbauer again up in the air, ball into the, no, it's taken away by Speck Snyder. He jumps down to the right and gets it out of bounds with his right hand. And again, we see Speck Snyder there from the half right. Spins, throws out of bounds on the right. Six meters before the goal, it went out of bounds. And now, again, Oliver Hörhoff comes from the half left. Spins, bounced, and the ball is secured by De Jong. Yes. Sam De Jong from the half left again. Tries to get Schrader, but Schrader this time blocks it out of bounds. Ball comes in from the right, Philipp Schrader with the ball in his hands. Starts, throws, and the ball is blocked by Himmelbauer. Himmelbauer gives over to Speck Snyder. Speck Snyder from half right, spins, and the ball, nearly a high ball, is taken away by Ruben Schäterlich. Schäterlich from the middle, the center, high in the air, and then Speck Snyder is there with the help defense, blocks it. After it bounced over Himmelbauer, the center. And then at the end, the ball goes out in the neutral zone and ball over. <laughs> Philipp Schrader from the right post. And with the throw to the left, but there is Speck Snyder. Fauna, Speck Snyder with the throw on the right side. And there's Hörauf at the final moment. He can grab the ball and nearly puts the ball in his own net. From the half right now down the line, into the net, over the hands of Sam de Jong. It slips through, goes up in the air and then finds the net. 2-2 Two -two the score, 9.20 to go in the first half. De Jong again, Schrader with the block, Schrader gets the ball secured, goes back to the right post. Throws the ball and there is again the Dutch defense. Hercules with the ball in the hand, and the ball is thrown on the gap. Schäterlich not moving at all. Hör auf with the help defense. 
appreciate it now. It's good. Turn and a bounce and up in oh, the crossbar. crossbar. Hit the crossbar. Hit the crossbar and Sam De Jong with the next try. De Jong, fast ball up in the air. The ball slips through into the net. Yeah. Well, defense does not seem really. Hooven Schetelich is not really here on the field. Slowly in movements. And so the ball goes over his feet into the goal. Oliver Rao with the bounce on De Jong. De Jong is there. Himmelbauer doesn't have to take the ball in the next attempt. Now again to Schetelich. Schetelich can secure the ball. The throw by, throw by Sam De Jong. And Philipp Schrader from the right side starts to De Jong. The ball goes to the uh, goal, but there is Beck Snyder with the second effort. And Speck Snyder down the right side. Her office there stands up and tries to get a counter attack. Himmel Bauer slips through, but Speck Snyder there in help defense. And now again, Faunus. Speck Snyder down the right side. Bounce out of bounds. Whew. High pace. High tempo, both teams really throwing hard balls. Her off, bounce ball again up in the air over the crossbar by the legs of Sam De Jong. And 7.55 to go, 3-2, USV Hercules is leading. Yes, you got the feeling if it goes on like this, it could be 15-14 in the end or something like that. From the half left now, Sam De Jong spins. Right, left side, and it scratches maybe the line. Yeah, it was close. So for me, it's just a matter of time when, when we will have the, the first penalty. Felix Rogge, one of the substitute, uh, substitute players there, without any tape on his face, is coaching as well as Stefan Weil, the Candles team here. And Ruben Schicklich with the throw, and the ball is secured by number one, Sam De Jong, Fauna, Speck Snyder. Number five from half right spins, throws, ball is long. It's a long ball. Yep. It's th that, that mistake has just come. And mm, I would think that Hörauf now gets the responsibility for that penalty. Oliver Hörauf in the middle, standing there at the three meter line. In the middle now, going from Hörauf to the left is Speck Snyder, and then the ball is in on the right corner. No problem for Oliver Hörauf, the German national player. Yes. He has the record in the Champions League two years ago, 107 goals in a whole season. And the ball in the hands of Sam De Jong. From the left side, spins, throws, Schetelich is there, stands up, counter-attack, Schetelich, Himmelbauer is there, the ball is in the neutral zone, going to the middle line, and the ball is over. And the ball is over. So another possession for Chemnitz. 3-3 three, three the score, 7.27 to go. Oliver Hoever comes over to the right side. Philipp Schraveda hands the ball over. Hörauf goes back slightly to the left from the middle. Bouncing ball and the ball is secured at the end by Himmelbauer. Was blocked by De Jong. Thorn is Speck Snyder now with the next attempt. With the throw, with the spin, with the throw. And inside the net. Yeah, it's that a goal. It was fast but also bouncing and not that easy to get. And he shows his qualities here. Under the arms of Oliver Hoff, the ball goes inside the goal. Four to three for Hercules. Philipp Schrader from the right side, bounce to Speck Snyder. He blocks the ball in the neutral zone and goes now over. So one more attempt for Kenneth. Twice won the bronze medal in the last two seasons. We're off with a bouncer, but the help defense of the Young is there. He came over into the middle after Himmelbauer. And now the Young to the right corner from the left, but blocked out by Oliver Hörauf. And now Ruben Schädelich has the ball in his hands from the half right. He starts, he spins, he throws, and Speck Snyder blocks it out on his right. But they are now a bit better sorted in the defense, Chemnitz. At the beginning, you, were, you, you, you thought, well, they really swim, they really are under the cosh, but now it's better. 6.48 to go, Speck Snyder from the half right, Schetelich is there on center, pass the ball over his shoulder to Hörauf. Hörauf now from the half left, starts from the goal, throws hard ball to Himmelbauer's chest, but he blocks it and gives the ball to Speck Snyder. 
from the half right. He starts again. Direct throw this time, and the ball is secured by Schädelich. Schädelich is coming better into this game. Schädelich with a bouncing ball. Him the ball there with his legs, giving to Sam Leon. And the ball now in the hands of the left winger. Down the line. Blocked out. Over the hands of Schrader, it went out of bounds. 6.12 to go. And ball is given back in on the right. Philipp Schrader with the throw. The ball by Himmelbau blocked. Himmelbau gets the ball, passes back to Fauna Specksnyder. Fauna Specksnyder on the right side. Starts, spins, the throws. Schädlich is there. Ball is secured by him. And then given to her off. From the half right, Oliver Hör spins, throws, falls into the net. Oliver Hör finds the gap between Himmelbauer yeah. and Speck Snyder. 4 4 the score, 5 49 to go. You can't stop a player with this kind of quality, you can't keep him out of scoring the whole game. Warner Specksnyder from the half right for Hercules again down to the gap. No, Schietelich is there, not really moving was not necessary, had the ball. And from the right side, Philipp Schrader with the throw, but blocked by Himmelbauer, finds the ball, pass back to the half left, to Sam de Jong. Starts, spins, throws, Schrader is there. And close one, and now timeout taken by Chemnitz, by the coaches team, Felix Rogge and Stefan Weil. Yeah, <laughs> we have seen a lot in that first, let's say, what is it, seven minutes? Um, really, two teams with much offensive power, really uh, wanting to play, really uh, showing their skills. Defensively, well, they have also shown that the, the other side, the both sides have some weaknesses, but it's, um, it's a nice pace, it's nice to watch. It's for all, for me, Chemnitz, the slight favorite, uh, but still with Rogge, one quality player, not just one quality player on the bench, they have also a US national player in their squad. And now the throw by Schädlich, taken away by Vorne Specksnyder. Specksnyder from the half right, spins, throws down the line, Hör is there, keeps the ball in play. 5.12 to go, Hör off from the half right. Spins, throws, and the ball is blocked by Himmelbauer to the right and out of bounds. Speck Snyder from the half right and out on his right. Wanted to play the ball long line, but was out. And now we are from the half left. Spins, bouncing ball, Himmelbauer up in the air, and the ball is going into the net. Yeah. Over the legs of Himmelbauer, it goes up in the air and then finds his way into the net. First lead of Canets yes. of the day. Am I right? 5 4. Yes, yes, yes. And now Schädelich takes the next away. Philipp Schrader from the right side. With the ball to Himmelbauer. Himmelbauer gets the ball secured. He brings it back. Sam de Jong. De Jong from the left side, bouncing ball, Schietelich into the net, deflected uh, it into the net. Again. And Felix Rogge is standing out there, scratching his hat, putting his face into his hand like, what did he do? Yeah, not the first time, we have to admit. Hörauf, has he a response? No, he hasn't. Sam de Jong gets the ball secured. Sam de Jong from the left side, bouncing ball, Schietelich. This time he has it, and the ball in the hands of Philipp Schrader. Schrader on the right side. With the throw, Himmelbauer there, blocks it into the neutral zone, finds the ball, pass back to Warner Specksnyder. And Warner Specksnyder from the right side, bouncing ball to Schietelich, blocks the ball, finds the ball. And 5-5, five five the score. The ball now. Blocked by Sam de Jong, her off with this attempt. And again, there de Jong down the line is going. 
And Fritzschlager from the right side, block on the hip of Simmelbau and then secured by Specksnyder. 3.28 to go, Specksnyder from the right side, down the line, and it's inside the net from oh. the post. Gets the gap between the feet of Hörauf and the right post, and it goes into the net. 6-5 for Hercules. Yeah, they still cause the big favorite some problems. And the ball. That's the response. <laughs> we are with a direct response. 6-6 six, six now. The score bounces over Himmelbauer, the center. 3-16 to go. 12 goals so far we've seen. And now it's Andy Young from the left side. Ball is blocked. Schrader is there. And Schrader from the right post will start with his next throw. And the ball is... It's a high ball. A high ball. Number eight. Schrader with the high ball, so penalty against Chemnitz. Yeah, the first against them. And Sam de Jong has the ball in his hands. Philipp Schrader standing in the middle, is now going to his left. So right from the vision of Sam de Jong, and that time out taken by <laughs> the Dutch coach. So I think he knew that was right the corner where Sam de Jong wanted to hit the ball inside, but uh, yeah. When you see that the opponent is standing there, just take a timeout. 3.06 to go. And they could, yeah, you know, they. it's their first, and you have to take one in the first half to have all four. So maybe a good moment. Six all. We have the, the, the game with the most goals, I can tell you, we had so far was 15, and we already have seen 12 in the first half. So I think... I can confidently say we will break that record. If the defense is struggling on both sides as yes. they did so far, then I'm pretty sure now the penalty. Sandy Young from the middle to the left side, out, out, out. out. Mm, and that was also, that <laughs> for me, that that's that was rushed. He, you have 10 seconds. Why? Take, Take your time, right? Yeah. 6-6 six, six the score. Three minutes, six seconds to go. Oliver Hörauf with the ball in his hands. Half left, spins, throws, ball is secured or blocked by Himmelbauer. And now we have a substitution. Number five is going out, Warner's Beck Snyder. Yeah. And number seven is coming in. That's and number seven. This is Ronald, Ronald Klaver. Klaver. I would I would say Klaver. Klaver. Yes. And then we still have on the bench number three, Femke van den, den Born. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Six all. And, and uh, Felix Rogge is now lying on the ground with his feet just in the coaching zone mm -hmm. to be as close as possible to Oliver Hörhoff to whisper him something in his ear. Now Wohnes Becksnader with the throw. It's blocked on the head of Schädelich from the body of Hörhoff, but then secured by Schädelich. Schädelich from the middle. Bouncing ball. It's inside the net. Well, that, that sounded avoidable. 7-6 for Chemnitz. And both defensive are still struggling. Yes. From the left side, Sam de Jong. And then high in the air. It's blocked. And Schrader finds the ball. Goes back to the goal from the right side, brings the ball and Himmel Bauer with problems, but gets the ball with a second effort. Pass back to Sam de Jong. Sam de Jong from the left side. Brings the ball bouncing to the right, but there's Hörauf and Hörauf stands up, gets the ball. Two minutes 18 to go with the spin. Hörauf with the bounce and Sam de Jong there. The ball is free, not found, now out of bounds. We have four seconds gone, so. Six seconds, is, is that is still enough, but... Vaughan is Becksnyder, makes it fast, throws, and Schietelich is there. Not moving, ball comes directly on his body. And so Schietelich now with the next roll long in the air, and then it's side! And again, you f you, it, it didn't seem like that bouncing was that dangerous, but it was enough. 8-6 for Chemnitz. And the next try, Schietelich is there, 5, 1, 50 to go. And we're off with the next long bouncing ball, long ball. And it's a long ball, and, well, I'm interested to see 
who will take that second penalty for them because we all know what happened with the first. We had a timeout and then that clear miss and Klafer. Ronald Klafer. Is that his first one? Gets the bonus hand her off, stands in the middle of the goal on the line. Klafer slightly from the left starts and throws the ball to the right corner inside. That was accuracy yeah. by Ronald Klafer. Her off was on his way, but not well, not far enough. Maybe 10 inches, uh, 10 mm. centimeters were missing from the hands of her. Off. He was really quarreling afterwards, was unhappy about that, but maybe hurt his right hand a little bit. But now, she's with the, with the next throw. Himmelbauer takes it away. 1.35 to go. 7 8. Score and now score Ooh. for Klaffer. Rona Klaffer, as we see here in the slow motion from the half left, spins and the ball is going over the feet of Schietli, then over the body of Schrader. And no high ball at all. It was everything perfect played? Okay. And the response? No response. The ball secured by Klaffer. 8 8 the score. Klaffer now with the bounce. And it's taken away. No, it was Sam de Jong. Um, with the goal before and now with the response. And now the ball back, Himmelbauer, Klaffer on the right winger position. Sam de Jong stayed, of course, on his left winger position. Now Klaffer with the ball. And Schäterlich is there. Schäterlich heads to sort his feet and then bouncing ball. Sam de Jong gets it. We have 55 seconds left. Sam de Jong from the left side, spins, throws, and Schrader's feet are there, blocks the ball, Schrader takes the ball in his hands, 45 seconds to go. Now to the left pose, Klaffer, can the ball secure the ball, and Roma Klaffer from the right side, Schrader is there, blocks the ball, ball is free, nobody goes there, Schädelich now moves, gets the ball, hurries up and throws the ball, bouncing to Klaffer, but Himmelbauer helps him out, 25 seconds to go. Sam de Jong from the middle. Start, spins to the right side, deflected, and Hoff can't get it. Oh Hoff oh blocks oh. it out with a second and a third attempt. And for me, this was not a block out because he was pushing the last time the ball on purpose outside. Mm. And uh, the referee is quarreling about it. And, and so now a goal by Chemnitz Hörauf. And the Dutch uh, coach was not happy with the d decision. That there was a block out and not yeah, an out. Get it. And now he got the goal afterwards right away, so I think he will be really unhappy about that. We have five seconds to go off with the next attempt. Hör auf. Goes inside the net again. Yeah, two, just in time. Two goals within short time. 10 8 now the score for Chemnitz. And this is the end of the second half. And as you promised, this is now. The game with the most goals. Yeah, 18 we have seen so far in the first half. Oh my! If if that continues, we will see 36. Well, I, I'm prepared for it. Yeah, um, it was up and down, up and down. Why do we need defense? Let us just throw and have a bit fun. It was just like that. Two teams trying to start them. Schäterlich at the Chemnitz side with a few problems. Hör auf, really scoring big. Um, there have been also penalty situations. Um, there was uh, a score by Hercules, Hercules with, with a penalty. There have been also missed uh, a penalty by the Dutch team. And yeah, it, it, it's really, we have seen nearly everything. Two great offenses. And I think who can get at first a bit of a stability, a bit of more stops in the defense will get the win. And Chemnitz is the team that had the better runs. When there were runs, they came from Chemnitz. They have been 6-5 down and then they scored 3 on the spin to go 8-6 up. And now they have just scored 2 to go from 8-8 to 10-8. So for me, Chemnitz still the slight favorite. But they are always in danger because the defense is not their, well, how can I say it, their, the biggest gift they got. But the question is, what can they bring, what will they bring from the bench? Two new players. So the, those who are out, 
That means Rogge and Schrader are out, and uh, Rogge and Will uh, Walker are Sian now Walker. in. Sian Walker. Sian Walker, yeah. Ruven Schädel stays on center. Now they're at the equipment check, and we'll just take a short look. We see Himmelbauer on center. We see Speckstein on the right side. Speck Snyder. Speck Snyder, sorry for that. <laughs> Speck Snyder. Speck Snyder. <laughs> and on the left side, we have Klaver. Sam de Jong. Ah. So Klaver is out Klaver again. Klaver is out again, and Vandenborn is not yet being brought into this game. And for a team that's playing the debut here, like Hercules does, it's really impressive just to say that. They have been here um, last year, they've been part of the youth championship from the European Global Club Association and now it's the first time in the let's say senior Champions League and of course they are Dutch champion and Mr. Speck Snyder was the top scorer at the very first European Gold Bowl Grand Prix in Rostock in 2021 and well for Chemnitz one national player with her off went out and Walker and Rogge, so two went in, so maybe. What kind of quality will that mean? I think um, her of Rogge is more quality, uh, is, is, is the same quality in um, offense. Mm -hmm. But I think also Walker can be more quality in defense yeah. and offense than Schrader, so I think it's an upgrade we see here. Yeah, interesting. So, will they pull away now? We will see. Ruben Schädelich has the ball. Chemnitz with the first throw. Felix Olga takes it for himself from the left post. He spins, he throws a high bouncing ball and it's secured by De Jong from left to right. The throw was taken and Sam De Jong now down the line and up in the air and the ball is blocked out now. It's taken by Wogger shortly before the line. And now Wogger again with the bounce. Himmelbauer is there and gives it over to Speck Snyder. Speck Snyder from the right side throws the ball inside the net. Schädelich is not moving at all. Oh and Simon Williams is too late in hard defense. But I think this was a ball for the center. Yeah, but he's not moving. Simon Williams now. What can he do in offense? Right side throw and it's blocked by Sam De Young. The left winger of Hercules throws the ball and it's blocked out and it's now. 10 for Chemnitz and 9, nine for, for Hercules. USV Hercules. Yeah. 10-9, so the first goal of the second half went to the team which was down, which is still down. Sein Williams with, with the next throw and Speck Snyder there with the save. And Speck Snyder gets the ball from Himmelbauer from the right side. He took spins, he throws, he Schädelich can secure the ball, takes the throw himself now. From the middle, spins, bouncing ball up in the air and inside the net. Ruben wow. Schädelich scores. <laughs> Maybe good for his confidence that he just says, well, I can also give the team a bit of support in the offense, but... Himmelbauer has a lot of problems with these bouncing balls yeah. over his body. And then it's always going up from his body into the air and then into the net. 11-9, the score. Speck Snyder from the left side. Schädelich is there. Gives the ball to Will uh, Walker. Sign Walker. Down the line. Really the high ball. I think it scratched the line. Yes. And then Himmelbauer gets the ball secured to Speck Snyder. And then Walker again. There was no speed on it. Williams gives the ball to Rogge. Rogge from the middle start and slightly from the left. Spins, throws into the egg, uh, corner, but there is Rohner, Speck Snyder. And Speck Snyder again. Schädelich reacts late, but not too late. Gets the ball. Rogge now from the half right. Moves, throws the ball hard at the crossbar and inside the net. Well, from the crossbar, it comes back and then at the leg of Speck Snyder. And then it goes over the line. It was not that high bouncing, but still with much, much power thrown and a bit of a throw change and just right on cue. 12 9. Sam de, Sam de Jong on Walker. Walker stands up, counter attack down the line. Sam de Jong is there, slows down the whole thing. 
And we have nine minutes and 45 seconds to go. It's Sandy on a high bouncing ball from left to right. But there's Vogge. Vogge now from the half left. Throws the ball to the half right. And there's Himmelbauer. Himmelbauer finds the ball after the block. Pass back to Warner Specksnyder. Specksnyder from the half right. Throws down the line. Out of bounds. Well, it seems like a bit the offensive ideas are just a bit gone. All the defense from Chemnitz has a bit more stability now. And Walker with the ball in his hands. Spins, throws down the line. Sam De Jong is there. Ball goes in neutral zone to the middle line and the ball is collected by Himmelbauer. Brought back to Sam De Jong. Sam De Jong from the half left down the line. And Schiedlich is there. And then takes his time. Spins, throws, bouncing ball over Himmelbauer again yeah. and inside the net. It repeats, it repeats. 13-9. It's, yeah, it's Hercules now taking a timeout. I'm, well, I'm interested to see how long they will leave that mismatch with Schädelich and Himmelbauer, so it's a, a four-goal deficit. They had the two-goal deficit at the half, and now Chemnitz is really making a move, and of course they want to stop, they want to um, change the momentum again. But I think the game is now going just in one direction. It's one-way track, and it's not in the, in the way of Hercules. I don't think they have the offensive answers and the quality from Chemnitz in the offense with that, how deep that roster is. It's just too strong. 9.03 to go. Sam De Jong for Hercules with the throw from half left. Hard ball, but there is Schietelich over, handing over to Sein Walker from the right side. Again down the line and it's blocked by Himmelbauer and it's taking his time and going then over. If you, if you criticize, if you want to criticize Walker, it's like it's it's the choice of throws. It's so much down the line, so variability could be a bit more. Walker now with the next attempt. Sam De Jong with the block and the ball goes over again. And ball is with Felix Walker. Felix Walker on the half left now. The ball in his hand spins, throws the ball hard, and it's secured by Speck Snyder. Ball is free and it's rolling, and then it's out. Well, nearly five seconds now gone from that 10 second clock. Sam De Jong from the left side has the ball, starts right away, throws the ball, and it's secured by Schietelich. Schietelich from the middle, bounce ball to Henry Bauer, and inside now this time. He got help defense by Sam De Jong. And Sam De Jong with a response from left to right. Roger stands up and has the ball, claps on the ball to hand it over to Walker from the half right. Again, hard one, but this, these throws are no problem for him at all. The bouncing balls yeah. that he has problems with. Not Specs the flat Walker ones. From the right side to Walker. Walker secures the ball, stands up, comes now to the half left. Spins and again hard again and Speck Snyder is there. Can block the ball. Seven forty-five to go. And it's thirteen nine. And from the half left now, Speck Snyder down the line should Chetelich with a counter attack to the uh, uh, corner. The ball is up in the air and inside the net. Counter attack to the left corner where Speck Snyder was not in position and then he kicks the ball his himself up in the air and over him into the net. 14-9 for Chemnitz. Walker with the save. Walker now with the goal in his back from half right. Spins, hard throw again. Sam De Jong is there. And Sam De Jong with the response. Schädlich is there. Hands the ball over to Felix Rogge. And um, now from half left he bounces again. A long ball, long ball, long ball. Yes. That was a long ball, clear against Felix Rogge. Well, they scored with the last penalty, Hercules, but they also missed one. Specksnyder takes over this throw. 
or right, or right he starts on the left, Roger standing, the ball goes to the right corner inside. Very accurate. Warner Specksnyder, there are no chance for Felix Rogge. And so, 10th goal for Hercules. 14 10 the score, 7 30 to go. Chemnitz in command. Walker from the right side. Hard again. Yeah, no, a little bit more bouncing, but no problem for Himmelbauer. Himmelbauer to Specksnyder. Specksnyder from the right side starts again. Bouncing ball to Walker to left. But Walker it lost all, all, all uh, tempo after two bounces. Now maybe more energy from Roger from the right side. Hard down the line, into the net, into the net. There was so much topspin. The ball was going to the right post and then making a curve back to the center. <laughs> and uh, Sam De Jong was going to his left and then he recognized, oh no, it's going to my right. And the ball is in 15-10, the score. Sam De Jong with the response, Roger with help, defense is there. And the ball is in the hands of Ruven Schädelich. Schädelich now from the middle, bouncing ball to Himmelbauer and gets help by Sam De Jong. Sam De Jong from the left side, spins on and plays on his right. Rogge is there, Rogge just uh, faked the counter attack, then starts again with a lot of power, a bit of spin again. But now the ball is secured by Specksnyder. And Specksnyder down the line to Rogge. Rogge gets the ball with the second effort. And then he's asking for Walker, claps in his hands, gets the ball passed. Walker now bouncing ball, and this one time, no, Sam De Jong is there. So Walker start, starts to make more variety in his throws. Yes, it's interesting to see. And now from the half right, Walker again spins, bouncing ball, and the ball is in. Finds the gap, not touched. 16 10, the score. And also his first goal now for Chemnitz. His debut goal, sort yeah. of. For Chemnitz. Now from the right side, the ball is brought back in. Then at the back of Schiedlich, now it's secured by Rogge. And Rogge, Felix Rogge from the left side, starts, spins, throws, and inside it's the a long ball. ball. Was a close one to a long ball. Maybe we see it here in the slow motion. Yeah, is okay. Was a little bit too long, so another penalty for Specksnyder against Rogge. Both standing in the middle. Specksnyder in the right corner before. Now back in the right. No, this time it's saved and catched by Rocke. He grabs the ball and it was not as accurate as the first one. It was slightly to the right. And Rocke is there and saves the ball. Walker fakes to go to the left, stays on the right. Spin, hard ball down the line, but there is Sam De Jong. Counter attack by him, and then there is Rufen Schädelich. Schädelich with a counter attack, but there's Sam De Jong and Himmelbauer in the neutral zone. Finds the ball, pass back to the goal. Sam De Jong gets it, and Sam De Jong with the throw down the line. Walker is there. Walker stands up and spins and down the line, and it's blocked out Ooh. by Sam De Jong. Now we have a substitution. Number two is coming out. This is Himmelbauer. Imre Himmelbauer and number three is coming in, Femke van den Born. Yeah, her first uh, minutes here. She is one of three female players. We have seen the one from Hammerby, Rebecca. Well, we have seen one. The other is Cendresa Malici from the Füchse Berlin. So nice to see. And that's a good um, advice by you. Uh, Chandra Malici from the Füchse Berlin because they will be the next game. Oh, yes. Their first game in Group A. Second game will be for Aarhus. They win today the first match of the day. Yes. So Füchse Berlin against Aarhus is the next game coming up on uh, 120 Central European time. Roger now with problems with his throw. Ball slips out of his hand and it goes right out of bounds. So the ball has to be given to Hercules and the USV Hercules gets the ball on the left side Sam De Jong has it in his hands and now he starts spins throws the ball down line Walker is there Walker stands up counter attack by him hard ball and bang inside the net yeah, it it sign Walker it was not um, the normal counter attack it was just with one or two seconds between and that was maybe the surprising point and now 
It's backside on the left side. Walker is there. The ball is free. Ruben Schädlich finds it. Pass back to Rogger. Rogger on the half left. 17 10 the score. And now Rogger from the left side. Bouncing ball and the ball over Van den Born, but then secured by Sandy Young. Blocked out on the right side. Warner Specksnyder with the ball in his hand spins down the line and out of bounds. How much time is left? And we have uh, four minutes and 17 seconds to go. And there's a question, how hungry is Chemnitz still? And another top spin ball there from Rogge, but Van den Born and Speck Snyder can block it out together. And from the right side now, um, Warner's Beck Snyder with the next throw. Schädelich is there, Schädelich blocks it out. No, ball is still in, pass back to Walker. Sign Walker now with the spin, throws to the gap inside the net. Oh yes. No. Was a penalty, long ball uh. against Sign Walker. All right. He's more smiling. And so he has to defend against Backsnyder, Warner's Backsnyder on his left, also directly on his opposition and the ball right, no blocked. Well, it At the six meter line, Sign Williams is directly also on the same side and then he blocks it. it it's not really going anything now in, in their direction for Hercules. What they had in the first half, they, they don't get here. The ball with Felix Rogger, half left position. Spins and throws the ball down the line inside the net, and it's a goal this time. It is a goal. <coughs> 18 10. Yes, three minutes and 53 seconds to go. Could be a mercy rule win here. And the next try from Hercules, but uh, Hogger gets the ball. Hard ball, it was a long ball again. Now they're really wasting that. That's not really necessary w w when you are up that high, but. Will they score? That's the other question. The last two that were missed. Sam De Jong from half right has the ball. Roger stands in the middle of his goal. Now Sam De Jong also in the middle standing. Sam De Jong starts, spins, throws to the middle. And Roger goes to the uh, wrong side. And so mm. it's a goal for Sam De Jong. And the ball is in. 11 18. The score, three minutes 44 to go. And already we have seen. 11 goals in the second half, so it's just, well, we are really getting a tasty menu here. From the middle, Ruben Schädelich with the throw, bouncing ball over the crossbar. Ah. Van den Boer with the save from her hip, the ball goes over she the crossbar. She didn't get a throw yet, as far as I know. Substitution, Kay. number one out on Hercules' side. Number seven is coming in, Ronald Klafer. Coming back, and, uh, and Sam De Jong is yes. going out. Klaver, I think, with two goals. Yeah, he had a, an interesting impact when he was in, and I didn't really get why he was out again, but maybe he can now show the coach that he, well, deserves more time. But 18, 10, 11, sorry, 18, 11. On the right side now, Speck Snyder with the throw. Schädelich is there. And uh, Schädelich more stable than the first half. Rogge with the throw, bouncing ball over. Van den Born inside the net. It's a goal for Chemnitz. It's a goal for Felix Rogge. And there is a Van den Born straight in the air, but still the bounce is too high for her. And so the ball goes inside Felix Rogge now with the counter attack. Make it fast, Klafer can lock the ball, and now we see Speck Snyder has the ball in his hands. Throw to Schädelich, Schädelich is there. We have 3.05 to go, 19.11 the score. Walker from the half left out. Throws the ball out at the six meter line yeah. of the opponents. So Really good defense from him. Maybe one or two goals more would be what he likes to see from himself. He still fights for a place at the Paralympic Games for the U.S. national team. Van den Born with her first throw and the ball is taken by 
and Schädelich nearly comes through, but there was Klaffer helping out from Van der Moen. Spexner with the throw, Schädelich is there again. 2.40 to go. Sign Walker with the ball in his hands. It's been high ball, send ball, and it's secured by Klaffer. Ronald Klaffer from the left side, down the line, also bouncing. Walker is there, gets the ball. With a second attempt, claps on the ball and hands it over to Rogger. Felix Rogger from the half left. Down the line and it's locked out by Specksnyder. 2.15 to go. go. 19.11 still the score. Well, it's done and dusted. Just looking at the scoreline, this is the first, this is the first win for one of the big favorites, in my opinion. And now we'll have on the right half right Specksnyder. Borne, Spack Snyder with the throw to Schädelich Rogge. Rogge in the air, but no, he can keep the ball in front of him. And Rogge with the counter attack. Klaffer is there. Spack Snyder secures the ball on Spack Snyder from the half right again. Borne, Spack Snyder with the throw. Schädelich has some problems, gets it in a second attempt and hands over to Walker. Sign Walker from the half right. Bouncing ball to Van den Born. It's saved by her. And she passed back to Klaffer. One. 45 to go. Klaffer on the left side, down the line. Walker is there, no problem with that. Walker with the fast throw down the line. Van den Born is there at the center, and she blocks the ball. Pass to Specksnyder. 133 to go. Specksnyder from the half right to Schädelich. Ball still in play. Schädelich takes his time. And now timeout taken by Chemnitz and the Marburg Chemnitz and national coach. Coached nearly from every German team <laughs> except the <laughs> Füchse Berlin, I think, <laughs> today. Uh, Stefan Weil. Yeah. Well, it's just taking that time out, throwing some ideas in what what plays still could be possible, what plays, maybe what gaps are there, just giving an, an update, some kind of that. But we have seen... A dominant second half from Chemnitzer BC, and that's what they expect from themselves, I believe. Can you help me out? What, what was the halftime result? Uh, the halftime result was 10 8 for uh, Chemnitz. So we have a 9 3 in the second half? Yes. It's more stable in the defense. Chemnitz now with Schädelich from the middle bouncing ball inside the net. Schädelich wow. with the score 20 11, 121 to go. And now we are short before. The end of the game, not only in time, also with the mercy rule. Because if you lead with 10 goals, the game will be ended. Felix Rogge now has the chance after his save from the half left. Can he end the game? High bouncing ball, and the ball is secured by Klaffer. Klaffer's ball is in the hands of Van den Born. And Klaffer, Ronald Klaffer from the left side, now spins, throws the ball out. And we have 58.7 seconds to go. And I think Hercules' final or last goal for this game is not to end it before the time. And now it's ended. Well, Sire Walker. Target with the, missed. With the throw under the body of Klaffer. He was lying there straight in the air. And um, the next game will be at 1.20 in 13 minutes. The game between Füchse Berlin and yes. Aarhus Gobal. And uh, you'll see some highlights, but um, what were your highlights in this game, Kevin? Uh, uh, so many goals. Wh where can I start? So uh, a really interesting beginning. And well, Chemnitz with, with how many players they can bring in from the bench and sti uh, still show the quality. And of course, that young team from Utrecht, they are... Um, with Hercules, that they had really one half where they were able to cause Chemnitz big problems. That was really interesting to see. And, well, so many goals, 11 and 21, 32 in total. What a game we have seen. Who will top that? I, I'm s I can't see. And as you see some highlights yes. on the screen, we'll be out for this moment. We will be, we will be back in 10 minutes with the next game. Fix Berlin against Aarhus Goalball. Bye-bye.
Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin? Kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen. In vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin? Kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. 
und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen. In vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Warm welcome here from Berlin to the game of the Füchse Berlin against Aarhus Goalball. Aarhus had their first match today in the morning. They've beaten Hammarby 6-4. Füchse Berlin, the home team, has their first team today. And uh, we have some special change here because we will broadcast all the games in English except the Füchse Berlin because we are ho have a lot of Home crowd also here and watching on TV. So Füchse Berlin will do in German. Direkt neben mir sitzt Kevin Barth. Hallo Kevin, schön, dass du da bist. Aber wir wollen jetzt erstmal schnell auf die Starting Three gucken. Ich bin ganz still. Da ist sie nämlich. Also die Füchse gleich von rechts nach links in schwarz-grün. Spielen mit King auf links, mit Dennis auf rechts und Tauscher auf der Center-Position. Und links... Ahus mit Lund, rechts mit Gregersen, Center Jensen. Was erwartest du von diesem Spiel? Die Füchse haben ja auf dem Transfermarkt nochmal zugeschlagen, <lacht> Christian King. Ja, also ein, ein Schlüsselspieler des US-Teams, der jetzt hier dabei ist und äh, ihnen natürlich nochmal mehr Qualität und mehr Tiefe gibt. Also das ist meine Flügelzange mit Michael Dennis und Christian King. Es ist das Debüt der Füchse für die, also hier in der Champions League, in diesem Quali-Turnier. Aber ich habe das Gefühl... Das war erst der Anfang. Also mit diesem Team kannst du um den Gruppensieg mitspielen, um ganz vorne mitspielen. Aber 
Jeder Schritt sollte einer nach dem anderen gemacht werden und es steht, geht bei 0-0 los. Abs absolut, ja, natürlich. Ja. Ahus heute Morgen, solide Leistung, ja. schwer reingekommen ins Spiel, aber dann doch solide zu Ende gebracht gegen Hammerby. Ja, da ist halt jetzt die Frage, wie viel Luft ist noch nach oben, ähm, weil, ja, ich, ich weiß nicht, ob das reicht gegen die Füchse. Äh, die sind für mich jetzt schon, alleine wegen den Spielern, die ich gerade genannt habe, hier erstmal der Favorit, aber auch da, wir haben es eben gesehen mit Chemnitz, Du musst halt auch erstmal in so ein Spiel reinkommen und äh, vielleicht brauchen auch die Füchse eine gewisse Zeit. Ja, und wir sehen es auch. Philipp Tauscher, Teil der deutschen Nationalmannschaft. Christian King, Teil der amerikanischen Nationalmannschaft. Und dann Herr von der Gröben im ZDF nannte ihn mal den Toni Groß des Goalballs. Ich würde lieber sagen, das ist Freiner Ernest Hemingway. Das nächste Kapitel von Der alte Mann und der Ball. Michael Dennis, der immer mal wieder in Rente geht, aber für die Füchse immer noch am Start ist. Michael Dennis, einer, der mit allen Goalballwassern gewaschen ist, übernimmt jetzt auch den Ball auf der halblinken Position. Läuft an und wirft den Ball direkt die Linie entlang, rausgedrückt. Ja, naja, jetzt geht er auch noch bei uns durch Gregersen. Gregersen kriegt den Ball auch direkt wieder. Und mit dem Bouncer über die Hüfte. Das aber war aber direkt ein Long Ball. Also, der Ball nicht vor der zweiten 6-Meter-Linie aufgekommen und das muss er, er muss vor beiden dieser Linien aufkommen. Das halt Penalty, der Verursacher muss das Feld für einen Wurf alleine verteidigen. Krieger sind vorne an 6-Meter-Linie, Dennis läuft an, wirft den Ball und geblockt. Wird geblockt. Krieger geht nach rechts rüber, spürt sofort, dass Dennis von halb rechts auf halb links möchte mit dem Ball, mit so einem Crossball, aber das hat Krieger gerochen. Ja, da war das erste Goalballwasser, von dem du da gesprochen hast, schon mal nicht das Richtige. Ja, Zielwasser war noch nicht dabei, aber Lund jetzt für die, Dän für die dänische Mannschaft Aarhus von der linken Seite. Mit dem Bouncer, Tauscher, blockt den Ball in die neutrale Zone, sucht den Ball, kriegt ihn von der Mittellinie, bringt ihn ganz, ganz, ganz schnell zurück zu Michael Dennis. Michael Dennis von der linken Seite setzt den Ball die Linie entlang, bouncen der Ball und dann Reger sind mit dem Block und kickt ihn aus Versehen ins Aus. Gut, bei Dennis kann man ja auch vermuten, dass der jetzt eine Stelle so lange anspielt, bis dann doch mal eine Lücke auf ist. Ne? Und das ist aber das Tor für Aarhus. Und der Ball drin, wie wir in der Zeitlupe sehen, über die Hüfte von Philipp Tauscher geht er hinweg hinein zum 1 zu 0. Und Christian King kriegt seinen ersten Wurf, hat im letzten Jahr sehr viel an seinen Bouncern gearbeitet. Schauen wir mal, jetzt der Bouncer die Linie lang, tischt aber außen auf. Geht auch uns aus. Ja, da ist er, glaube ich, noch nicht so richtig drin mit der Orientierung, mit dem Rhythmus. Ich glaube, das, das kommt dann noch. Großer Vorteil natürlich für Aarhus, die jetzt mit Lund angreifen. Flacher Ball, Tauscher ist da, blockt den Ball zur Seite weg, findet den Ball auch schnell, bringt ihn zurück zu Christian King. Komme ich gleich auf den großen Vorteil zurück. Christian King jetzt mit dem Bouncer hoch in die Schnittstelle und dann gehalten von Lund. Regesen kam da noch rüber um auszuhelfen, aber Lund hat den Ball, bounce den Ball Richtung Tauscher, hoch über die Hüfte und der Ball geht an Nick Pfosten und ins Haus. Knapp war es, knapp war es. Ja, großer Vorteil wollte ich sagen, dass die Mannschaft aus Aarhus ja quasi komplett die dänische Nationalmannschaft sind. Ja. Eingespielter sind ja. die auf jeden Fall. Ja, das stimmt. Dennis von halb rechts mit dem nächsten Wurf, der Ball von Lund gehalten und Lund halb links an der Latte. Wirft den Ball jetzt flach, Christian King blockt ihn zur Seite und sammelt ihn ein. Christian King jetzt mit dem Versuch, geht über die Halbrechte, ist ein Linkshänder nach links, bounce den Ball auf die Schnittstelle und Lund ist da, kann den Ball blocken, gibt ihn zu Gregersen. Jensen musste da nicht eingreifen, der ist der Gregersen jetzt mit dem Ball die Linien lang. Hier Dennis hat Problem, der Ball rollt Richtung Tor, Pfosten nicht drin. Und Dennis Boah, das dann zweite Pfosten Mal. und Ball quasi zur Seite, Ball geht ins Aus. Und Dennis scheint sich da wehgetan zu haben, Ui. aber steht mittlerweile wieder auf. Michael Dennis von der linken Seite. Setzt jetzt an, ragt ihn wieder hoch, bounce der Ball und dann gehalten von Jensen zusammen mit Gregersen rechts ins Ausgeblockt. Ja, noch ist es noch nicht das Spiel der Füchse. Da gibt es durcheinander, sie sind noch nicht sortiert, hat man das Gefühl. Lund hat den Ball, wirft ihn und dann ist Tauscher da auf Center, weil wieder neutrale Zone. Tauscher aber ganz schnell auf den Beinen, findet ihn immer sehr, sehr schnell Richtung Mittellinie. Und übergibt an Dennis. Dennis wieder, gerade wenig auf eine Schnittstelle gespielt, aber Gregersen ist da, Ball ausgeblockt und dicht am Ball-Over dran. Also der Ball an der Ecke der eigenen Zone geht er ins Aus. 
fast in der neutralen Zone. Gregersen jetzt von der rechten Seite wirft den Ball. Tauscher ist da, gibt ihm wieder der Ball nach vorne weggeblockt. Tauscher sammelt ihn ein und übergibt ihn an Christian King. Christian King vor halb links setzt jetzt an, macht die Drehung lang in die Linie und dann Long Ball. Long Ball. Und da ärgert sich Christian King auch über diesen Long Ball. Der war aber klar. Das war noch nicht mal mehr knapp. Jetzt hatten sie den ersten Penalty verworfen, Aarhus. Was passiert jetzt? Aarhus mit dem Penalty. Wurf und dann Christian King blockt den Ball. Ist da, blieb auf der Linie stehen, geht dann in seine linke Ecke und kann den Ball mit der Grätsche rausbefördern. Michael Dennis und Christian King sprechen sich da kurz ab. Michael Dennis übernimmt den Ball. Läuft jetzt an und wirft den Ball bouncend auf die Schnittstelle. Jensen ist da, steht schnell auf, übergibt an Lund. Und Lund mit der Drehung wirft den Ball schnell. Dennis ist da, steht schnell auf mit dem Gegenangriffsversuch. Jensen ist da, Jensen kann den Ball einsammeln. Übergibt an Gregersen von halb rechts. Gregersen in den Bounce Richtung Dennis. Dennis ist da, steht auf und nimmt den Ball erstmal selber. King war zwar da, aber noch mal Dennis mit dem Bouncer Richtung der Jensen hoch in die Luft, aber bleibt im Spiel. Jensen übergibt an Lund und Lund von halb rechts mit der Drehung, hoher Bouncer, Tauscher mit den Knien da und Tauscher bringt ihn zu Christian King, der Center. Der links außen jetzt über die Mitte kommt Christian King, mit dem Bouncer rechts in die Ecke rein und dann ist Gregersen da, kann den Ball abfangen und ist ungefähr halb rechts an der Latte. Dreht wieder auf, wirft den Ball Richtung King. King mit den Füßen da, zweiter Versuch. Ja, naja, hat den Ball eingesammelt und übergibt ihn an Michael Dennis. Michael Dennis über halb rechts, läuft an. Gerade weniger Wurf, bricht der Ecke, Gregor sind ins Tor hinein. Nee, der Ball ist noch nicht, noch nicht, noch nicht, noch nicht, noch nicht. Der Ball Aber ist jetzt. doch im Tor. Da trudelt er auf der Linie entlang. Die Torrichter zeigen nicht an, dass er drin ist. Aber der schießt sich da war auf die Linie geeilt und entscheidet dann, der Ball ist drin. Eins zu eins. Michael Dennis kriegt da Gregersen in der Ecke. Ja, ich meine, da werden sie natürlich ihren beiden vergebenen Penalties nachtrauern, die Dänen. Ähm, solche Chancen musst du dann gegen so eine Mannschaft dann auch nutzen, weil früher oder später schlagen die zurück. Und ge genau das ist jetzt passiert. Ähm, ein Ball, der dann aber auch, wenn er so lange noch rollt und so lange noch äh, unterwegs ist, schon auch verteidigbar ist. Links, Lund. Hat jetzt den Ball in der Hand, läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball hart. Tauscher ist da. Tauscher sammelt den Ball ein und gibt ihn an Michael Dennis. Der steht jetzt gleich von rechts von der Mitte versetzt, läuft gerade nicht an, wirft wieder Richtung Regersen. Regersen blockt ihn rechts ins Aus. Und so dann nächster Versuch für Aarhus Golbar. Regersen, der rechts außen, wird den Ball jetzt übergeben. Und Geht halb rechts hin. Der Rechtshänder dreht sich, wirft den Ball. Tauscher hat Probleme, Tor! Oh. Tauscher mit Problemen da, die in der Position will dann nach rechts rüber gehen, war ein Stück zu weit links und kriegt dann unter dem Oberkörper den Ball hindurch gedrückt. Christian King von der linken Seite jetzt seinerseits mit einem Bouncer diagonal ins Tor. Das ist eine Antwort. Ja. Das Ist sein erster guter Moment jetzt, dass er so richtig mal einen Akzent setzt. Nächster Versuch Tauscher diesmal da und Christian King am rechten Pfosten mit dem Ball. 2 zu 2 der Spielstand, Bounce Ball. Jensen kann ihn nicht kriegen, aber Gregersen ist da. Gregersen hilft aus und jetzt Gregersen mit dem nächsten Wurf Richtung Tauscher. Tauscher und Dennis da zusammen. Michael Dennis rutscht sehr weit in die Mitte immer ein, um da die mangelnde Größe von Tauscher irgendwie zu korrigieren. Und jetzt der nächste Versuch von Dennis. Und der ist drin. Der ist drin. Ja. Über die Arme von Jensen rollt er dann über den Körper von Gregersen und rein zum 3 zu 2 für die Füchse Berlin. Die Maschine kommt ins Rollen so ein bisschen. Lund mit dem nächsten Versuch. Tauscher kann blocken. 7, 52 noch zu spielen. Tauscher übergibt an Christian King. Christian King mit der Drehung, mit dem Wurf, harter Wurf, aber dann jetzt Jensen da, kann den Ball im Nachfassen auch festhalten. Und Jensen von halb rechts mit dem Wurf, schleudert ihn, Dennis ist da, Dennis mit dem Konter direkt in die Ecke rein, aber nein, vorbei. Vorbei links am Pfosten, da wäre aber Gregor, Gregor sind auch da gewesen, da war die Lücke nicht auf, die Dennis antizipiert hatte. Aber sie verteilen, sie kommen langsam in ihren Rhythmus rein. 
über die linke Seite jetzt. Ist der Wurf Lund, die Ecke. Nein, King ist da. Da war die Ecke kurz auf, weil auch King, wie Dennis, nicht ganz so extrem wie Dennis von außen, hinter Tauscher zu Help Defense rutscht. Aber King rechtzeitig auf den Posten und kann dann den Ball mit dem Fingerspitzen noch um den Pfosten lenken. Michael Dennis geht an der Latte entlang, halb links ist er angekommen, läuft an, geradliniger Wurf auf die Schnittstelle. Die Jensen ist da, in der neutralen Zone geblockt, findet den Ball, bringt ihn zurück zu Kaspar Lund. Lund mit dem Wurf und da ist Tauscher, kann den Ball festhalten, übergibt ihn an Christian King. Der kommt von der halbrechten Position, läuft jetzt an, dreht, wirft den Ball hart die Linie entlang und dann rausgeblockt. Timeout von Ahus Goalball genommen, 3 zu 2, der Spielstand 7 Minuten und 7 Sekunden noch zu spielen. Ja, sie kommen jetzt so langsam ein bisschen in die Bredouille. Ich glaube, ich habe es vorhin gesagt, diese beiden vergebenen Penalties, das hängt ihnen vielleicht noch nach. Sonst wäre das hier vielleicht eine andere Partie, aber die Füchse schwimmen sich in Anführungsstrichen immer mehr frei. Auch wenn, wenn ich nicht weiß, ob Füchse eigentlich schwimmen können, dann muss ich, muss ich, noch mal, ich, muss ich mich nochmal weiterbilden. Aber natürlich, ja, gut geantwortet, die Erfahrung äh, eingesetzt, dass so ein kleiner Rückstand, so ein bisschen Stotterstart, dass das nichts heißt, vor allem für zwei so ausgebuffte Jungs wie Michael Dennis und Christian King. Ich würde sagen, Füchse können alles. Okay, passt. Und jetzt Lund für Aarhus mit dem nächsten Wurf von der Mitte. Startet er nach links raus Richtung King. King ist da. Und jetzt mit dem Gegenangriff von King flacher Wurf. Jensen ist da, blockt ihn nach rechts ins Aus. Also wieder Ballbesitz für Aarhus. Die sich vielleicht auch ja daran hochziehen können, dass sie im ersten Spiel, dass da auch nicht alles wie geschnitten Brot lief. Und der Ball jetzt rechts bei Gregersen. Dreht auf, wirft Richtung Tauscher. Tauscher ist da. Und Tauscher übergibt an Michael Dennis. Michael Dennis von halb links fängt an, läuft gerade wenig, wirft den Ball bouncend, aber dann sehr flach und Gregersen kann ihn nach rechts ins Ausbefördern. Ja, diese Variabilität im Wurf, das kann natürlich auch das Faustpfand sein im Laufe dieser Partie, dass man immer wieder noch mal einen anderen Rhythmus, ein anderes Wurfbild anbieten kann. Jetzt der Ball auf halb rechts. Wird jetzt geworfen von Lund, diesmal Richtung Tauscher. Tauscher ist da, blockt die neutrale Zone, kriegt den Ball nicht mehr. Der ja. Ball war dann schon drüber. Und so, nächster Versuch. Für Ahus Goldball. Gregersen rechts kriegt den Ball eingeworfen. Die anderen beiden auf dem Boden sitzen. Das heißt, Gregersen übernimmt diesen Wurf. Läuft an, dreht auf die Halblinke geworfen. Und Tauscher hechtet nach dem Ball, kann ihn sichern. Und Christian King über die Halblinke kommt er diesmal. Bounce auf die rechte Seite. Weggeblockt von den Füßen. Von Lund. Starke Abwehraktion da. Von Lund. Und. Und jetzt links am Pfosten, fast kurz an. Ha, hier bin ich, jetzt kann ich loslegen. Dreht auf, die Linie entlang und dann knapp am Pfosten vorbei, nicht King gelenkt. Und er war schnell, hart und leicht auch mit der Brille abgewehrt, dieser Ball. Deswegen wurde er gerade nach No Eye Shades gefragt. Und das bekommt er auch, das Official Timeout für Equipment Check. Ja, das hört sich so... An, als würde draußen die Welt untergehen, aber immerhin haben wir hier tollen Goalball. Ja, draußen regt es also. Wenn ihr in Berlin seid, kommt alle hier in die Halle. Hier ist trocken, hier wird geiler Sport geboten. Michael Dennis mit dem nächsten Versuch ins Tor hinein. Michael Dennis findet eine Lücke, wo keine Lücke zu finden ist. Wirft den Ball <lacht> zwischen Jensen und Lund. Und Lund hat keine Spannung in den Fingern. Und deswegen rutscht ihm der Ball durch die Finger hindurch ins Tor hinein. 4 zu 2 für die Füchse Berlin. Gregersen hat den Ball. Halb rechts wirft den Ball, Bounce, Tauscher ist da, wir haben noch sechs Minuten und fünf Sekunden zu spielen. Tauscher wieder vor der Mittellinie, kriegt er den Ball und sprintet dann zurück, gibt ihn an Dennis. Der läuft wieder gerade nicht an, Bounce in der Ball, Jensen, der blockt ihn nach rechts aus. Ja, es ist nicht nur der Druck der Füchse, die jetzt, der jetzt steigt, sondern in diesem Fall dann halt auch dann nicht ganz konsequent in der Defense bei den Dänen, so kleine Fehler, die sich jetzt einschleichen. Der Ball in den Händen von Gregersen von halb rechts wirft den Ball. Hier entlang Tauscher hoch in die Luft, aber bleibt vor ihm der Ball, deswegen kann er ihn einsammeln. 
und tausche über Gepflicht bewusst an Christian King für den nächsten Wurf. Der dreht auf der rechten Seite die Linie entlang. Jensen kriegt den Ball dann in die Hände, nachdem Lund geblockt hatte. Und Jensen, der Center, darf jetzt auch mal angreifen. Wirft den Ball flasch geschleudert. Jen, dann Dennis mit dem Block nach vorne, neutrale Zone. Wieder Tauscher, äh, wieder diese Bälle da auf 5, 6 Meter Entfernung immer wieder findet. Eingesammelt zu King geworfen. King mit dem Wurf und dann der Ball rausgeblockt von Jensen. Also wie zielgerichtet der Ball, drei, vier, fünf Meter vom Tauscher weg ist und der genau weiß, wo er hinlaufen muss, um ihn einzusammeln und dann auch noch im Höchsttempo zurückbringt. Immer wieder beeindruckend zu sehen, auch wenn er in der Defense natürlich immer wieder Probleme hat aufgrund seiner doch eher geringeren Körpergröße. Michael Dennis von halb rechts mit dem Profil hier entlang, da ist Lund da, der will den Gegenangriff starten, direkt über die linke Seite auf die Schnittstelle Tauscher, landet auf dem Ball und kann ihn erstmal runternehmen. Michael Dennis von der halblinken Position auf den Ball, die Linie entlang Schnittstelle. Nein, da ist dann Jensen da und Jensen kann den Ball ins Aus blocken. 4,55 noch zu spielen. Ja, guter Fluss hier. Von der rechten Seite geht Jensen mit dem Boot nach links. King, King steht auf, aber macht dann erstmal ruhig. Dennis macht den Platz, damit über halb links King jetzt mit der Drehung den Boot auf halb rechts spielen kann. Ins Tor hinein, findet die Schnittstelle zwischen Jensen und Lund. 5 zu 2. Der Spielstand für die Füchse Berlin. Christian King macht den Treffer. Setzen sich so langsam ab. Und über links jetzt. Lund mit dem Wurf wieder flach in die Schnittstelle Tor. Das ist doch mal eine Antwort hier ja, okay. von den Dänen. <lacht> Komplette Misscommunication da zwischen Dennis und Tauscher. Lücke war offen wie ein Scheunentor und die trifft Lund zielgerichtet. Dennis von der linken Seite will antworten, bounce den Ball. Jensen ist da, nimmt den und da ist jetzt der Ball bei Lund. Wieder auf die Schnittstelle, Tauscher diesmal da. Kriegt den Ball wieder von der Mittellinie eingesammelt, sprintet jetzt zurück zu Dennis. Dennis von halb links mit dem Bouncer wieder auf die Schnittstelle, aber dann Gregersens Beine sind da. Und Gregersen kann den Ball sichern. Von halb rechts läuft er an. Dreht einmal auf, da ist ein Dennis. Dennis sehr weit in der Mitte und ein Timeout gefordert ja. von den Füchsen Berlin. Ich da, glaube, da geht es darum, sich zu sortieren, ein bisschen wieder zu ordnen, ein bisschen wieder ähm, Dinge zu stabilisieren. Das war ihm jetzt vielleicht ein bisschen zu, zu wild, gerade Michael Dennis. Ähm, ansonsten hast du aber natürlich recht, dieses, das ist ja dann doch auch viel instinktiv. Auf der einen Seite kannst du das trainieren, dass du als Center da so flexibel bist und die Bälle immer wieder holst. Aber auf der anderen Seite ist das dann irgendwann, glaube ich, auch etwas, was in Fleisch und Blut irgendwie übergeht. Und die kommen ja auch nie an die Grenze der 10 Sekunden. Also ich habe eben mal gezählt, wo dann Tauscher den Ball zurückgeholt hat. Da hat Dennis bei etwa 7 Sekunden abgeschlossen. Es passt noch nicht alles bei den Füchsen, aber genug, um hier diesen 5 zu 3 Vorsprung zu haben. Das könnte man vielleicht sagen. Michael Dennis fängt von der Mitte aus an mit dem nächsten Wurf. Direkt auf die Schnittstelle. Jensen ist da, kann die Schnittstelle zumachen, aber der Ball, Ball rollt. Der Ball rollt over. Der Ball. Der Ball geht auf die andere Seite. Deswegen neuer Angriff für die Füchse Berlin. Von halb links in die halb rechts. Christian King orientiert sich, dreht, kann wieder hart die Linie entlang gehen, aber Lund ist da, kriegt den Ball nicht direkt, deswegen kein Schnellangriff, trotzdem Lund jetzt mit dem Tor, Lund mit dem Tor, King und Tauscher absolut nicht in Position, da merkt man vielleicht dann doch die Mangel, der eingespielt ja, hat in der genau. Defense. Ich weiß nicht, ob da zusammen trainiert wurde vorher. 5 zu 4 nur noch der Spielstand und Michael Dennis von halb rechts will das natürlich jetzt nicht so stehen lassen, trotzdem hat Jensen was dagegen, der blockt den Ball erstmal, holt ihn und bringt ihn zu Lund. Lund von halb links mit dem hohen Bounce und rausgekickt vom Tauscher. Und so nächster Versuch gleich für die Füchse Berlin. Michael Dennis hat den Ball jetzt an Christian King übergeben, den wir von links starten. Der Christian King mit dem Wurf. Jensen ist da, macht den Oberkörper breit, kriegt den geblockt und so Gregersen in Szene gesetzt, der jetzt sich dreht, wirft und King in der Hälfte Fans ist er da, kann den Ball abblocken. Michael Dennis von halb links läuft ihn an, wirft den Ball Richtung Jensen und fast unter seinem Körper hindurch. Trotzdem die den sicher. Das Ball und mit dem nächsten Versuch steht Stelle und der Ball ist geblockt. Christian King ist da, Tauscher war noch dran. Und über rechts vom Pfosten kommt jetzt wieder Christian King, hoher Bounce, aber weggenommen von Jensen und Jensen 
an die Latte von der Mitte aus, fast im Fall dieser Wurf, Tauscher ist da, blockt nach rechts, sammelt den Ball ein, sprintet zurück Richtung Dennis, der von der Mitte aus kommen wird und der wirft den Ball jetzt auf den rechten Pfosten, hoch, raus, gebaut. Ne, der Ball ist noch im Spiel, aber jetzt gesichert von Jensen. Und so, so haben wir noch 2,44 auf der Uhr, direkte Antwort von Gregersen, von Tauscher geblockt und wieder eingesammelt. Wir haben noch 2,38 auf der Uhr und jetzt wieder Christian King, Bouncer auf die Schnittstelle, hoch in die Luft der Ball, rollt Richtung Tor. Ne, da ist Lund dann da, kann ihn einsammeln, Lund, schneller Ball, hoch, Ja, Das heißt, diesmal zum ersten Mal nicht vor der eigenen 6 Meter Linie den Ball aufgesetzt und deshalb das erste Mal haben wir einen Penalty für die Füchse. Michael Dennis hat, glaube ich, schon ein Penalty verworfen. Ich schau mal. Farbe. Da haben wir noch über Zielwasser geredet. Aber jetzt trifft er links unten ins Eck. Da haben wir noch gesagt, darüber geredet. Da hat wohl nicht alle Goldbarwasser gewaschen. Ja, das stimmt. Das war sehr, sehr früh im Spiel. Ganz ja. am Anfang. Aber dieser Penalty ist drin, links unten ins Eck. Nächstes Tor für die Füchse Berlin. 6 zu 4 jetzt der Vorsprung. Und Gregersen von der rechten Seite wirft den Ball. Tauscher blockt den Ball zur Seite weg. Und der Ball rollt ins Aus. Ja, mal schauen, wie sie damit jetzt umgehen. Da ist ja auch ein bisschen was weg von den 10 Sekunden. Und jetzt Michael Dennis von der linken Seite. Bounce den Ball. Jensen ist da. Und Jensen übergibt an Lund. Der ist jetzt schon leicht links von der Mitte versetzt. Wieder in Szene. Wirft den Ball aus. Der war so weit ins Aus, dass Dennis schon mittendrin aufgestanden war. <lacht> Weil er sich dachte, ich hole mal den Ball schnell aus der Ecke der Halle. Aber nee, muss er nicht. Da haben wir Torrichter. Der hilft ihm da. Christian King von der linken Seite mit dem nächsten Wurf auf die Schnittstelle und dann gerade so rausgeblockt. Der Sein schon über die Füße von Jensen bouncen, aber der kriegt dann den Kick noch dahinter und schießt den Ball nach links raus. So Aarhus im Ballbesitz, noch 1,58 auf der Uhr. Gregersen mit dem nächsten Wurf Richtung Dennis. Dennis ist da, liegt teilweise immer hinter Tauscher, also die ganze Ecke ist eigentlich offen. Dennis mit dem nächsten Wurf ins Tor hinein, findet die Schnittstelle zwischen Lund und zwischen Jensen und Lund ist bedient. Lund ist sauer, steht da richtig gefrustet auf nach dem Tor. Und so 7 zu 4, das erste Mal eine drei tore führung Schneller Ball jetzt von Lund, Tauscherblock nach vorne, Richtung Mittellinie, sammelt ihn wieder ein. Christian King klatscht in die Hand, kriegt den Ball übergeben. Und er setzt jetzt an mit der Drehung. Christian King auf den rechten Pfosten, hoch geblockt. Nee, keine Gefahr, Ball ist frei. Jensen übergibt an Gregersen. Gregersen, der eben geblockt hat, darf auch angreifen. Und mit dem nächsten Wurf, Tauscher ist da, Tauscher sammelt vor der 6-Meter-Linie ein, läuft zurück zu Michael Dennis, Michael Dennis hat den Ball in der Hand, dreht sich jetzt gar nicht, sondern nach dem Wurf wieder Bouncer, Jensen ist da, Ball ist frei Richtung Ecke und dann übergibt ihn Jensen schnell an Lund, Lund von halb links mit dem schnellen Wurf, Tauscher ist da, wieder so ein ganz flacher, kaum hörbarer Ball, Christian King von der Mitte läuft jetzt an, macht den nächsten Bouncer, relativ flach, Jensen blockt nach vorne weg, wir haben noch eine Minute auf der Uhr. Gregersen von halb rechts läuft an, wirft den Ball hier entlang. Dennis ist da, Dennis direkt mit dem Gegenangriffsversuch auf die Schnittstelle. Jensen ist da, Richtung Mittellinie geblockt, findet den Ball im zweiten Nachfassen und ist ins Ausgelaufen und schmeißt den Ball dann lieber ins Aus. War absolut orientierungslos und äh, ja, dann dann, ich weiß nicht wohin. Die einzige Gefahr war nur, dass der Schiedsrichter direkt vor ihm stand. Der ging dann schnell zur Seite, als er merkte, dass Jensen den Ball nur wegwerfen will. Dann ist es aber, glaube ich, sinnvoll statt hier in Gefahr geraten. 42 Sekunden, Michael Dennis von halb rechts läuft jetzt an, wirft den Ball die Linie entlang und da ist Lund da und der Ball geht aus und Lund hat sich ein wenig wehgetan bei seiner Fußabwehr. Und nächster Versuch über die linke Seite. Jetzt der Ball von Lund. Diagonal gespielt, Dennis ist da. An der 3-Meter-Linie fast liegend. Nahm er da den Winkel weg. Jetzt Dennis nochmal mit dem nächsten Versuch. Bounce der Ball. Jensen ist da. Noch 23 Sekunden zu spielen. 20 Sekunden zu spielen. Gregersen von der rechten Seite mit dem nächsten Wurf. Dennis ist da. Tauscher sammelt den Ball ein. Wir haben noch 14 Sekunden zu spielen. Tauscher bringt den Ball zu Christian King. Aber nein, Tauscher darf auch mal werfen. 10 Sekunden noch. Tauscher mit dem ersten Wurf in diesem Spiel. Aber Lund hat was dagegen. 7 Sekunden auf der Uhr. Lund nochmal. Tauscher ist da. Noch 4 Sekunden auf der Uhr. 3, 2, 1. Eins. Kein Wurf mehr in diesem Spiel möglich. Ja. Also in dieser ersten Halbzeit zumindest möglich. Und äh, ja, Kevin, dein äh, Fazit soweit in dieser ersten Halbzeit. Ja, zweimal waren sie hinten, die Füchse Berlin. Dazu hat Aarhus noch zwei Penalties vergeben. Das ist für mich immer noch ein Faktor. Wenn man da clean ist, wenn man da sauber trifft, dann kann man 
dem Gegner hier noch mehr ärgern. Aber die Füchse haben sich reingebissen, trotzdem, dass es da gewisse Defizite in der Defensive gibt, haben sie eben in der Offensive die Qualität und die schlägt dann eben zu, während die dänischen Gäste hier zu wenig aus den Sachen machen, die da defensiv doch angeboten werden. Michael Dennis hat das Zepter übernommen, aber auch Christian King hat äh, einiges beigetragen. Also die wurfgewaltigen Füchse, die haben sich so Stück für Stück in dieses Spiel gearbeitet und jetzt dann doch auf drei Tore abgesetzt und ich denke so dieses immer wieder mal einen nachlegen. Das ist etwas, was wir, wenn es so weitergeht, auch für die zweite Halbzeit erwarten können. Natürlich dann die Frage, ob die Füchse irgendwann noch wechseln. Ich glaube, noch ist der Vorsprung zu klein. Und Aarhus wird natürlich jetzt auch noch mal auf gewisse Dinge hinweisen. Wie du es gerade gesagt hast, wenn da bei Micha Dennis das Eck offen ist, dann könnte man das ja durchaus ein bisschen besser treffen. Also äh, für die Füchse ist alles gut. Es ist ein solider Start. Ich glaube, es geht besser. Aber Sie haben die 7 zu 4 Führung und das ist äh, alles in der Reihe. Ansonsten können wir vielleicht einmal gucken. Wir haben hier nach, das wäre dann um 14.25 Uhr, ein weiteres Spiel in Gruppe A. Das ist dann Hammerby IF gegen den GC Peru und das ist dann Schweden gegen Tschechien. Das wird dann wieder in englischem Kommentar stattfinden. Ja, mein Satz in der Analyse dieser Halbzeit von dir war, die Füchse haben sich reingebissen <lacht> und äh, dementsprechend schauen wir mal, ob sie die Beute auch in ihren Fuchsbau geschliffen bekommen. Ja, nicht mehr loslassen. Nicht mehr loslassen, genau. Der Equipment Check findet gerade statt. Philipp Tauscher, Michael Dennis, Patrick, Patrick King, natürlich Christian King. Ja, es gibt ein paar Kings, die wir dann... Ja, Patrick King ist, glaube ich, Trainer beim, im Basketball ja. bei den Riesen Ludwigsburg. Ich hätte jetzt noch Mervyn King, das ist ein Dartspieler, aber das äh, geht zu weit hier. Äh, Christian Nein, King, Christian heißt King und deswegen soll auch weiter Christian King heißen. Wenn wir uns natürlich jetzt gerade eingeblendet bei den Blindenfreunden bedanken, bei der Stiftung Blindenfreunde, bei helpix.net, Arbeitsassistenz, gemeinsam stark. Beim Berliner Pilsner, bei der Berliner Brauerei, die hier auch unterstützt, beim Ibis Hotel, und den anderen Partnern natürlich auch, wie auch Profil Beton. Jetzt geht es aber zurück in die zweite Halbzeit. Und natürlich auch danke an Mai, VIP, limo.de, First Class, Limousine Service. Die haben nämlich den ganzen Shuttle gestern übernommen und werden ihn auch wieder zum Flughafen übernehmen. Danke an alle, die diese Vorrundenturnier, dieses Qualifikationsturnier in der Global Champions League hier so tatkräftig in Berlin unterstützen. Auswechslung auf Seiten der Dänen. Koch ist jetzt drin, dafür ist Jensen raus. Mhm. Bei den Füchsen hat sich nichts geändert. Und Aarhus kriegt den Ball. Sieben zu vier, aber weiter geht's. Koch darf direkt den ersten Wurf nehmen. Und läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball auf die Schnittstelle, hoch in die Luft, ins Tor. Das ist doch mal auf der oh. Da sehen wir noch mal in der Zeitlupe, der Ball kommt und dann von den Füßen von Christian King katapultiert er in Übersicht drüber hinweg ins Eck. 5 zu 7 aus Sicht von Aarhus. Und jetzt willst du da natürlich dranbleiben. Michael Dennis von halb rechts läuft an, bounce den Ball, aber Lund ist da und Lund von halb links startet jetzt der Ball auf die linke Seite. Dennis noch da, nachdem Tauscher den Ball abgefälscht hatte, kann Dennis ihn mit viel Mühe uns ausblocken. Und Christian King sagt, komm, ich habe gerade den Ball gekriegt ins Tor. Das ist mein Wurf. Und Michael Dennis gibt ihm auch den Ball. Und King von, von halb rechts läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball die Linie lang bouncend. Aber Lund, kein Problem, muss sich kaum bewegen. Fängt den Ball ab und übergibt an Gregersen. Gregersen von halb rechts läuft an, auf den Ball und jetzt Tauscher, kann ihn nicht erreichen, King ist da, zweiter Ball dann bei Tauscher, bringt ihn zurück und zwei Leute rufen Help, Help, Help und Dennis kriegt ihn dann am Ende. King wurde weg ignoriert von Tauscher und so Koch mit dem nächsten Save, auf Center übrigens, also positionsgetreuer Wechsel. Gregor, äh, Koch mit dem nächsten Wurf ins Tor hinein, über die Boah, Füße der von Tauscher hinweg, das 6 zu 7 und da sehen wir es wieder, er schleudert den Ball so fast aus der Seitwärtsrotation heraus und so nur noch 6 zu 7 und jetzt haben wir eine Substitution. Tauscher muss runter, Friebel kommt dafür rein. Mhm. 
Positionsgetreu deiner Meinung nach, Kevin? Ja, er, er sagte zu mir gestern auch, ähm, er, Center ist einer seiner Positionen. Also Center oder rechts ist Friebel, soweit ich das weiß, beheimatet. Und äh, das ist schon eine Position, die ihm, die ihm liegt. Und da bin ich jetzt natürlich mal gespannt, wie er sich einfügt. Ich meine, dieser Ball eben, der ist natürlich auch im richtigen Moment gesprungen. Ne? Das muss man auch sagen. Also es ist ja auch die Kunst, wenn du ihn so äh, bounst, dass, dass es dann so schwer wird, ihn zu verteidigen. Und der Ball wieder im Spiel. Christian Kinn über die linke Seite. Koch ist da. Krieger sind über die rechte Seite. Jetzt mit dem Wurf. Und Friebe mit dem ersten Ballkontakt kann ihn wegblocken. Bringt ihn jetzt zurück Richtung Christian King. Klappt da auf den Ball. Haut auf den Ball. Und jetzt King mit dem nächsten Wurf. Koch nimmt ihn vorne weg. Koch macht einen ruhigeren Center als Jensen davor. Sah ein bisschen hektisch ab und zu aus. Friebel jetzt auf Center. Bringt auf jeden Fall mehr Länge mit, als Tauscher das hatte. Und Michael Dennis von halb links. Läuft an, gerade weniger Wurf. Gehalten von Koch. Koch übernimmt jetzt auch mehr Wurfverantwortung wie eben noch Jensen. Das heißt, einige Würfe, die hier Koch nehmen darf. Und die haben aber dann links ins Aus, so ungefähr an der 2-Meter-Linie. Oder auf Höhe 2 Meter vor dem Tor. Ja, man kann ja diese Centerrolle ganz verschieden interpretieren. Auch Tauscher eben nur einen Wurf genommen. Es gibt die Center, die sich total aufs Verteidigen konzentrieren, ja. Christian King von halb links läuft an Bouncer rechts die Linie entlang aus, 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 aus. Da kriegt er den Eifee dann nach rechts aus. Und so geht dann der Ball ins Aus. 10, 19 noch zu spielen. Und mit dem nächsten Wurf Schnittstellenball, aber. Dennis ist da, Ball ist jetzt frei. Friebel hat ihn nicht. Dennis sammelt ihn für ihn ein. Und Dennis muss sich jetzt beeilen. Und Dennis bleibt hängen an Koch. Koch übergibt an Gregersen. Und der von halb rechts wirft den Ball. Friebel blockt ihn rechts hoch ins Aus. Aber da sieht man schon einen Unterschied. Ne? Friebel in der Defensive mehr Länge mitbringt. Auf der anderen Seite Tauscher, was dieses Einsammeln ja. von Bällen angeht. Ganz anders. Gar viel schneller auf den Beinen. Unterschiedliche Spielertypen. Friebel, äh, wollte ich gerade sagen. Nee, jetzt aber das Tor, das Tor, das Tor. Christian King von halb links lief um Friebel herum, um den Wurf anzusetzen und findet die Schnittstelle zwischen Lund und Koch. 8 zu 6, der Spielstand 9,52 vor dem Ende dieser Partie. Krieger sind von der rechten Seite, wirft den Ball. Friebel kriegt ihn geblockt, bringt da Stabilität so ein bisschen rein. Ja. Und jetzt King wieder von links, Bouncer auf den linken Pfosten aus. Geht so bei 1,50 ins Aus vor dem Tor. Eben hat man ihm dann schöne Kommunikation, da hat ihm Dennis dann vorher noch angesagt vor dem Tor. Eight Seconds, also da hat er mitgezählt. Und das hat King dann gut genutzt und super abgeschlossen. Ball bei Koch in den Händen des Center von Aarhus. Läuft an, wirft den Ball schneller, flacher Bouncer, aber Friebel da mit den Beinen. Ist ein Ball over. Aber er ist da, macht die Schnittstelle zu. Kriegt die, den sofort den enthusiastischen Jubel von Michael Dennis. Und jetzt Lund von halb rechts, der links außen. Wirft Richtung Dennis. Dennis ist nicht gefordert, weil Friebel mit den beiden da ist. Dennis wieder weit in die Mitte reingearbeitet. Und Michael Dennis wieder am linken Pfosten. Läuft an, geradliniger Anlauf, wirft den Ball und dann gehalten zwischen den beiden eingeklemmt von Gregersen. Der Ball, da sagt Koch, meine Brille muss gerichtet werden, aber spielt spiele erstmal weiter. Gregersen mit dem Bouncing Ball und der Ball dann durch die Beine durch von Friebel. Jetzt hat er ihn gefunden, jetzt wirft er ihn lieber ins Aus. Weil er lange gebraucht hat, um ihn zu finden, hebt auch die Hand, entschuldigt sich, auch wenn seine Mitspieler es natürlicherweise nicht sehen können. <lacht> Gibt es jetzt erstmal das Officials Timeout. Das ist dann die Brille des dänischen Spielers wahrscheinlich. Genau, ist auch schon geklärt worden, war nur leicht verrutscht. Die wurde wieder gerichtet. Mit ein bisschen Glück hätte Friebel vielleicht darauf hoffen können, sobald er ihn unter Kontrolle hat, dass sie Officials Timeout geben. Hätte er neue 10 Sekunden bekommen, aber in dem Fall haben die Schiedsrichter den Gefallen nicht getan. Und Tor, Tor für die Dänen. Wieder Gustav Koch, wieder mit seinem Rundschleuderwurf und diesmal geht er über die Füße von Friebel hoch rein. 7 zu 8 der Spielstand. Und Christian King seinerseits ist von links wieder mit dem Wurf. Koch ist da, Ball in der Transzone jetzt eingesammelt. 
8,50 noch zu spielen. Lund mit dem Wurf. Ne, Gregor ist aber das. Entschuldigung, Ball in die neutrale Zone. Ebel kriegt den Ball nicht mehr erreicht. Es bleibt nach wie vor ein schweres, ein hartes Stück Arbeit für die Gastgeber. Auf halb rechts. Der Wurf. Die Linie entlang und Friedel ist da. Und dementsprechend der Ball jetzt links außen geblockt. Michael Dennis übernimmt den Ball. Halb links steht er jetzt. Christian King überlässt. Michael Dennis läuft an. Der Ball auf die Halbrechte. Gehalten von Lund. Lund links am Pfosten orientiert. Läuft an. Dreht, läuft den Ball auf halb links. Und dann ist dann Friebel da. Übergibt an Christian King. Ein Tor nur davor steht Christian King mit dem White Bouncer. Aber Lund ist da. Lund steht schon auf. Schnellangriff von Lund. Und dann wird rausgeblockt von Michael Dennis. Ja, das, das sind immer wieder Herausforderungen, die sie da bekommen und haben gerade nicht den Run, den sie vielleicht schon mal gekriegt haben. Michael Dennis wirft die Linie lang, gehalten von Koch. Koch, von halb links kommt, hat er von der Bank gebracht, wirft die Linie lang, King ist da und King sammelt den Ball auch direkt selbstständig ein, geht halb links an die Latte, dreht, wirft den Ball, langer Weg hoch, ins Tor hinein, ins Tor ja. hinein, über die Hüfte von Gregersen. Schlägt der Ball ein zum 9 zu 7. Wichtiger Akzent vom US-Boy. Lund jetzt mal von rechts. Dennis ist da. Und Dennis kann den Ball erstmal sichern. Kommt auf die Halbrechte rüber. Wieder gerade Linie Anlauf. Lund ist da. Der sitzt einfach nur da. Kriegt den Ball ans Knie. Sammelt ihn dann ein. Also Stellungsspiel ist das halbe Leben. Über rechts, Gregersen jetzt wieder Richtung Friebel ins Tor hinein. Friebel landet da auf dem Bauch. Was ja, hat er denn da vorgehabt? Landet auf dem Bauch und deswegen rutscht der Ball ihm über die Hüfte ins Tor hinein. Also da hat er gar keine Körperflächenvergrößerung mehr gehabt. Und so 9 zu 8. King wieder von halb links, wieder mit so einem Bouncer. Aber nein, diesmal ist Lund da und es wird eine Auszeit angezeigt vom dänischen Trainer. Und wir haben noch 7,25 zu spielen. Ja, und da ist jetzt natürlich die Geschichte, sie sind dran, sie, sie können aber nie diesen Punch dann nochmal setzen, auszugleichen. Vielleicht hat da der Trainer nochmal ein paar Ideen. Für Berlin ist das jetzt natürlich die Chance, sich wieder gerade zu rücken, vielleicht nochmal sich zu sammeln, nochmal das Wurfbild zu besprechen. Die Defensive sah eigentlich besser aus, aber trotz allem findet Aarhus immer wieder mal Momente und ich glaube, da geht schon sehr viel, wie du es gesagt hast, über die Eingespieltheit und mal sehen, wer da noch mehr im, im Köcher hat, wann die Fitness ein Faktor wird. Für Aarhus ist es ja jetzt schon das zweite Spiel, für die Füchse das eine, das heißt Eingespieltheit gegen Fitness, ein interessantes Match. Und dabei in den Händen von Koch. Setzt an, wirft den Ball, Friebel blockt ihn nach vorne weg, findet den Ball jetzt auch, bringt ihn zurück Richtung Christian King. Am linken Pfosten setzt er an, wirft den Ball, bounce diagonal, aber dann ist Koch da. Der arbeitet rüber, übergibt an Gregersen. 7-10 noch zu spielen. Gregersen vom rechten Pfosten, schneller Wurf Richtung Friebel, der blockt ihn zur Seite weg. Landet aber wieder so halb auf dem Bauch. Schafft es nicht, stabil auf der Hüfte zu bleiben, auf der Seite. Sehr erfahrener Spieler, schon zu Beginn der Goldball Bundesliga 2013 dabei gewesen, Daniel Friebel. Und jetzt Dennis von der Mitte startend, läuft wieder gerade durch, wirft den Ball und dann gehalten von Koch schneller Griff. Nein, Koch bricht ab, übergibt an Lund. Lund von der Halblinken mit dem Diagonalball, aber da ist dann Dennis dazwischen, kann den Ball aufhalten. Dennis von halb links spielt den Ball und dann ist Koch da, taucht ab kann den Ball halten, Koch. Übernimmt jetzt viel Verantwortung auf dem mit dem Schleuderwurf wieder. Und dann ist dann Friebel da. Friebel vor der Mittellinie hat er den Ball gefunden. Dennis ruft Job, Job, Job. Kriegt den Ball jetzt übergeben. Dennis ist mit dem schnellen Wurf die Linie entlang und dann mit den Fingerspitzen raus von Gregersen geleitet. Ja, etwa acht Sekunden abgeschlossen. Also alles im Lot. Aber sie hätten gerne die Tendenz, glaube ich, beibehalten und sich einfach so Stück für Stück weiter abgesetzt. Aber sie kriegen Aarhus nicht los gerade. Und über die Halblinke. Jetzt kommt Koch die Linie entlang und gerade so vorbei von King mit den Fingerspitzen dran. Kann er ihn rausbringen. 
Und Dennis holt sich draußen Tipps ab von der Bank. Dann ist der Ball in Händen von Christian King. Der kommt mal auf die Halblinke rüber. Läuft jetzt an. Läuft, bounce Ball. Und der Ball gehalten von Gregersen. Kam zu früh runter. Gregersen deswegen ohne Probleme. Und über, über rechts selber gegen Friebel. Friebel mit der Brust da. Kann den Ball einsammeln. Christian King wird den Ball übergeben. Rechts am Pfosten. 6 und 4 auf der Uhr. Christian King mit dem Wurf. Koch ist da. Sammelt ihn ein. Übergibt an Lund der leicht von links von der Mitte versetzt anläuft, Bounce Richtung Friebel, der geht auf den Bauch. Und jetzt kriegen Und Sie einen Equipment Check. Der Equipment Check auf Seiten Aarhus. Dieser Equipment Check heißt aber nichts anderes wie, ist ein bisschen nass hier geworden. Und ah. da muss erstmal hier gewischt werden. Kriegersen hat da wohl eine Schweißpfütze hinter sich hergezogen. Und natürlich ist es gefährlich. Ja. Gerade wenn man dann auch in Wurfbewegung ist, weil sonst sind sie ja meistens auf den Knien oder auf der Hüfte. Aber sobald sie werfen, ist unglaublich viel Kraft, die auch aus dieser Rotation herauskommt, die auf Knie, Knöchel, alles wirken. Wenn er dann wegrutscht, das wäre bösartig. Absolut, ja. Und also, der, ja? gut, dass wir das im Auge behalten, definitiv. Links, Michael Dennis vom Pfosten setzt an, läuft an, ruft den Ball und der Ball gehalten von Koch. Ja, da war mal wieder Fufu drin, da war mal wieder ein bisschen Tempo drin. Aber Koch auf dem Pfosten. Von rechts Koch, jetzt Linie lang, geht ins Aus, der Ball. Ja. Viel Effe geschmissen, aber dann doch aus. Die würden sie natürlich jetzt gerne vermeiden, wo sie halt irgendwann mal denken. Und es gibt eine Timeout von den Füchsen Berlin. Interessant, dass jetzt haben beide zwei Timeouts genommen. Heißt aber auch, dass beide noch zwei nehmen können und wenn das so spannend bleibt, dann ist das vielleicht, vielleicht kennt es der ein oder andere vom US-Sport, wenn du denkst, ach, es ist doch noch eine Minute. Dann kommen aber noch vier Timeouts. Also die lassen sich die Möglichkeiten offen. Das Spiel hat sich seit der letzten Auszeit von Aarhus nicht verändert. Also ein, ein Spiel, bei dem man jetzt den Eindruck hat, sie wissen ganz genau, was sie kriegen. Es ist so ein bisschen Abnutzungskampf. Wer weicht als erstes ein paar Millimeter? Ja, beziehungsweise nicht nur, wer weicht vielleicht als erstes ein paar Millimeter, sondern auch, wer geht vielleicht das eine Mal zu viel Risiko und schiebt ja. Penalty vielleicht ja. sogar her. Christian King jetzt von der rechten Seite dreht und läuft. Und da ist Lund, blockt nach vorne weg. Koch hört den Ball, findet den Ball, bringt ihn zurück. Und übernimmt von, übernahm von Lund. Lund auf die rechte Seite, rausgeblockt von Dennis. Diagonal versucht er von Lund. Aber Dennis kann ihn mit, dem, mit einem Hechtsprung nach links, nach draußen katapultieren. Und Dennis übernimmt jetzt wieder Verantwortung. Von halb rechts läuft an, läuft den Ball, und der Ball geblockt von Lund. Also in der richtigen Bewegung kriegen sie die Defense nicht mhm. mehr von Aarhus. Von halb links Koch, Schleuderball und Tor. Puh, ja, sie waren drei Tore zurück. Und jetzt haben wir 9-9. Unter der Achselhöhle von Christian King rutscht der Ball hindurch. Mit diesem Schleudergriff von Koch haben sie echt Probleme. 9-9 der Spielstand und jetzt Michael Dennis scheitert. Wir haben noch fünf Minuten auf der Uhr ab. Jetzt Lund mit einem Bounceball aus. Ja, der aus. nicht nur aus, sondern der erste oder zweite Bounce hat da auch jede Wucht genommen. Das ist ja die Kunst auch beim Bouncen. Christian King vom rechten Pfosten setzt an, dreht, wird die Linie entlang und der Ball rausgeblockt. Rausgeblockt nach links von Lund. Ja, King haben sie, glaube ich, jetzt auch durchschaut, so das Gefühl. Ja, der macht nochmal Trockenübungen, Christian King mit seinen Armen, macht den Motto, ach, so muss den, so muss den. Jetzt aber jetzt mal Gregers eine Linie entlang. Tor, Tor, Tor. Oh. Da ist Dennis zu weit in der Mitte. Jetzt, jetzt haben sie die Ecke gefunden. Jetzt haben sie die Ecke gefunden, die wir schon in der ersten Halbzeit angesprochen hatten. Zu mittig und so steht es auf einmal 10 zu 9 für Aarhus. Für Michael Dennis will jetzt eine Antwort finden, geht jetzt Risiko, aber wieder ist Lund da. Und die knappen Situationen. Wir hätten immer weniger aus Sicht der Füchse. Aarhus klar dran in diesem Spiel. Und Michael Dennis mit dem Ball will jetzt Verantwortung übernehmen. Überhalb links wirft den Ball. Koch ist da. Und Koch steht auf. 4 Minuten 23 auf der Uhr. Nächster Versuch von Lund nach rechts in die Ecke. Da ist jetzt Dennis und übergibt an Christian King. Christian King kommt auf links außen, wirft den Ball. Diagonal. Koch ist da. Ball nach vorne weggeprallt. Und dann Koch sammelt ihn ein. 
407 auf der Uhr. Gregersen von der rechten Seite wirft den Ball die Linie lang und dann gerade so noch die Füße von Friebel drin. Daniel Friebel darf jetzt, will es jetzt auch mal wissen, läuft an von halb links, wirft den Ball auf halb rechts. Mal ein neues Wurfbild vielleicht in denen geben. Fallen sie aber nicht drauf rein. 3,50 noch auf der Uhr und Lund wirft den Ball weit ins Aus. Und so 3,48 auf der Uhr, 10 zu 9 für Aarhus Goalball. Michael Dennis von halb rechts kommend, gefegt dabei von King und dann die Linie entlang, ins Aus, ins Aus. Aber Lund wäre auch da gewesen in der Ecke. Ja, gab es dann auch, glaube ich, die Zusammenfassung eben von der Bank, wo die Würfel hingegangen waren. Das Feld ist ja unterteilt in sieben Zonen. Dazu vielleicht gleich noch mal mehr. Und der Ball in den Händen von Koch. Koch wieder mit dem Schleuderwurf. Dennis ist diesmal auf dem Posten und übergibt an Christian King. 3,30 auf der Uhr. Christian King von halb rechts läuft an, wirft den Ball. Koch ist da, Ball nach vorne weg, aber den kriegt er eingesammelt. Träger sind jetzt von der rechten Seite und wirft die Linie entlang. Diesmal ist Dennis weiter draußen. Dennis mit dem Schnellangriff versucht die Linie, aber da ist dann Gregor, ist ein Block, den ist aus. Dennis ja. ist jetzt wieder weiter raus aus der Mitte. Defensive mehr versucht, seine Zone zu halten. Kluger Spieler ja auch, der das alles lesen kann. Und über halb links. Da kommt der Wurf jetzt von Lund. Lund von King geblockt, der Ball in der Transzone. Nee, kurz davor von King, aber selber eingesammelt. Und King läuft jetzt seinerseits an und wirft den Ball die Linie entlang. Ins Tor hinein! Ins Tor das hinein. hat er oft versucht, aber jetzt klappt es dann doch. Und das Erste, was Michael Dennis sagt, ist Defense. Weil er so, ist so nach dem, wir machen schon noch unser Tor. Aarhus wirkte so stabil. Ja. Und einmal Lund so weit weg vom Pfosten. Schon kriegt King mit diesem Ball die Linie entlang. Koch jetzt direkt mit der Antwort. Die ein Latte, Latte, Ball noch im Spiel. Und oh. Dennis hat ihn, Dennis hat ihn. Und Dennis jetzt seinerseits mit dem Bouncer und der wird abgeblockt ins Aus. Knapp ja, wichtig vorbei. für Aarhus, da dann jetzt nicht in den Negativlauf zu kommen. 10-10. 2,45 auf der Uhr, die Linie lang geworfen. Dennis ist da, Dennis steht auf, beruhigt erstmal, übergibt dann an Christian King. Christian King über links, will wieder die Linie entlang. Lund ist da, Ball nach vorne geblockt und Lund hat den Ball in den Händen. Links an der Latte orientiert, läuft den Ball diagonal und... Dann Timeout genommen von den Füchsen Berlin. 2,26 auf der Uhr. 10 zu 10 der Spielstand im Auftaktspiel. Der Füchse Berlin hier beim Vorrunden- oder Qualifikationsturnier für die EGCA Champions League im Goalball. Blankenberge, darum geht's. Tickets für dieses Finalturnier. Da kommen acht hin. Es gab schon ein Qualiturnier im Februar in Krakau. Das hier ist das zweite. Der Titelverteidiger aus Litauen ist dabei. Der belgische Gastgeber, die nennen sich Nordsee, die sind auch dabei. Und dann werden jetzt hier an diesem Wochenende drei Plätze ausgespielt, unter diesen zehn, die teilnehmen. Zwei Fünfergruppen, die jeweiligen Gruppensieger sind durch. Der Gruppenzweite und Dritte, der muss dann Sonntag in die Playoffs. Also das wird noch richtig spannend. Und wenn du hier dieses erste Spiel gewinnen kannst, umso besser. Füchse Berlin mit Michael Dennis über die rechte Seite läuft an, wirft den Ball die Linie entlang und zwischen den Füßen eingeklemmt von Lund. Hätte auch durchrutschen können. Lund von der linken Seite nach rechts rüber geworfen aus. 2,15 noch auf der Uhr. Jetzt wird es hier ein Nervenspiel zwischen den beiden Mannschaften. Christian King ist jetzt auf rechts wieder rüber gekommen, wirft den Ball, bounced Richtung Lund. Lund Probleme, aber Koch sammelt den Ball mit ihm ein. Koch jetzt. Wieder einer seiner Schleuderwürfe, Fragezeichen. Er wirft den Ball hoch raus, gebounced von Friebel. Wieder einer seiner Schleuderwürfe und mit dem Ellbogen, mit dem linken, hat Friebel den Ball irgendwie hoch nach außen weggelenkt. Equipment Check haben wir jetzt. Ja, Friebel, kurze Probleme gehabt mit äh, der Lippe. Und dementsprechend musste man kurz, wollte er mal kurz anfassen, aber man kann ja nicht einfach im Gesicht rumfahren. Ja, es gab gerade den Hinweis für Michael Dennis, niedrige Zahlen, das heißt alles im linken Bereich von sich aus gesehen. Das heißt Gregersen, alles auf Gregersen, was geht. Gregersen liegt da schon bereit. Dennis von der rechten Seite läuft an, wirft den Ball jetzt hart und Highball. Und Ausgerechnet. Dennis, Dennis versteht da die Welt nicht mehr und sagt, das kann nicht sein. Freunde, sieht das anders, grinst sich ein und Michael Dennis 
Kann sich beschweren und aufregen, wie er lustig ist. Hilft nichts. Koch jetzt vielleicht mit einer kleinen Vorentscheidung. Fragezeichen. Ja. 1,55 noch zu spielen. Dennis kommt vor an die 6 Meter Linie. Koch es steht zentral. Dennis sitzt zentral. Koch wirft den Ball ins Tor. Wirft ihn ins Tor. Links unten ins Eck. 11 zu 10 für Aarhus. Goalball. Dennis auf dem Weg in die andere Ecke. Und so der Ball. Jetzt laufen sie hinterher. 1,55 noch Zeit, hier vielleicht den Ausgleich zu schaffen. Christian King hat den Ball. Kommt auf die Halblinke rüber. Läuft an. Bounce der Ball. Schwierig zu halten. Der Ball ja, auf der Linie. Auf der Linie geklärt von Lund, nachdem er durch Koch durchgerutscht war durch die Hände und Beine. Jetzt nächster Versuch. King rettet für Friedel. Friedel übergibt an Dennis. Dennis mit Wut im Bauch. Läuft jetzt an. Wirft den Ball. Bounced an die Linie ran. Und dann halten Longball. Entschieden. Longball entschieden gegen Michael Dennis. Nächster Penalty. Und jetzt kann Aarhus hier alles klar machen. 1,35 vor dem Ende. Wieder Koch gegen Dennis. Dennis stellt sich zentral auf die Linie diesmal. Koch zentral im Tor. Jetzt läuft Koch an. Nee, er wartet noch. Jetzt läuft er an. Wirft den Ball diesmal nach links und Dennis kriegt ihn nicht. Highball. High ball. Es war ein Highball. Highball, das, das ist, ist natürlich Vollkatastrophe jetzt ja, aus weil, Sicht von Aarhus. Weil die Zeit ja stand und du dann noch... Anstatt zwei Tore vor, jetzt die Chance zum Ausflug. Michael Dennis läuft an, Michael Dennis wirft den Ball. Gehalten, gehalten. Was ein Drama hier, was ein... Unfassbar, rauf, runter, du weißt nicht... Und Timeout genommen von Aarhus. Das ist der dritte... Das dritte Timeout, das heißt, beide Teams haben noch eine Auszeit, die sie hier geben, nehmen, wie auch immer, können. Und es steht 11 zu 10 für Aarhus, nachdem sie ihren ersten Penalty verwandelt haben. Die ersten beiden gingen vorbei, beziehungsweise äh, wurden gehalten. Und jetzt haben sie dann aber die Nerven behalten, zumindest bei diesem einen Mal. Und dann kostet sie dieser Highball fast wieder alles. Aber auch hier könnten die Füchse nicht Kapital schlagen. Also es ist eine extrem intensive, extrem interessante zweite Halbzeit. Beide Teams geben alles, arbeiten sich aneinander ab und gewinnt hier Aarhus das zweite Spiel. Ballbesitz für, für Aarhus. Aarhus. Genau, Friebel hält den Ball. Noch 1,28 auf die Uhr. Die Zeit tickt Christian King von der rechten Seite. Harter Wurf, Lund ist da. Keine Probleme damit, ihn aufzuhalten, Lund. Vom linken Pfosten an läuft er, wirft den Ball, bounced und Friebel ist da hoch in die Luft und King kann ihn einsammeln. 1,13 noch auf der Uhr. King von der rechten Seite wieder mit dem Bouncer. Lund ist da. Koch sammelt mit ihm zusammen ein, noch ein 7 auf der Uhr. Und der Ball in den Händen von Koch läuft an. Schleuderball, Dennis ist da, Dennis steht auf. Und wir haben noch 58 Sekunden auf der Uhr. Dennis kommt auf die halbrechte Seite rüber, läuft an, wirft den Ball rechts die Linie lang aus. Aus, oh. 52,5. Sekunden noch zu spielen. Und beide können noch eine Auszeit nehmen. Der Ball in den Händen von Gregersen. Hat den Ball auf der rechten Seite Linie entlang. Dennis ist da. 45 Sekunden. Dennis mit dem Schnellangriff. Hoch weggebounced. Ball im Spiel. Jetzt im Aus. Und Und jetzt kommt das letzte Timeout hier der Füchse. Ja, yeah, and uh, just one short uh, explanation, because uh, I see it in the chat on YouTube. Yes, in some countries uh, you would do all in English. Uh, we uh, talked about that we will do the German games in German, but uh, then we said no, not all German games, because the three German teams are here, just Füchse, because they are their home crowd here, and uh, we do also the audio description here in the gym. That's why we do it in German. Uh, you don't, if you don't like it, it's okay for us. All the other games will be broadcasted in English. So sorry for that. But that's the way we decided it to do after negotiation also with the organization here who are doing the whole tournament. So just for you, the next game will be Hammerby against Perun and this will be in English again. Christian King now from the left side 
auf der linken Seite an Koch hängen geblieben. 30 Sekunden noch zu spielen, 30 Seconds to go. Auf der rechten Seite Gregersen jetzt mit dem Wurf. Friebel hält ihn. 24 Seconds to go, 20 Sekunden Auswechslung. Substitution Deutschland, Germany. Berlin. <lacht> Berlin, ja. Wer ist das? Philipp Tauscher äh, kommt zurück ins Spiel. Mhm. Und dann Friebel raus? Oder? Und Friebel geht wieder raus. Ja, es ist natürlich die Frage, ob, sich, ob, ob sie dann umstellen. Ich meine, Dennis hat jahrelang Center gespielt, aber eigentlich muss der die letzten Würfe nehmen. Es ist halt auch Risiko, ne? wenn du da jetzt... Es war ja in der ersten Halbzeit durchaus auch anfällig. Wenn du da jetzt einen kriegst, dann ist jetzt auch vorbei. Ne? Ballbesitz Berlin. Auf der linken Seite Michael Dennis läuft an, wirft den Ball, bounced und der Ball gehalten, aber... Long Ball. Long Ball. Das Long Ball kann es sein, das kann es sein. Gegen Michael Dennis. 16.4 Sekunden, 16,4 Sekunden vor dem Ende. Um, und, now, und jetzt haben wir einen Equipment Check. Bei Gregersen. Mhm. Natürlich zieht sich das dann jetzt. Ich bin mir sicher, dass Aarhus auch noch eine Auszeit nehmen wird. Und jetzt Gregersen mit der Möglichkeit, hier alles zu entscheiden. Sechs Meter Linie, Dennis zentral. Gregersen läuft an, wirft den Ball, geblockt. Ja. Noch ist nicht alles durch. Beide Teams haben Chancen im Penalty-Bereich vergeben. Zieht sich durchs Spiel. 16.4 Seconds to go. Christian King. Christian, Christian King mit dem Wurf und der Ball ist gehalten. Block bei von Koch. Es reicht noch nicht, dass sie den Ball festhalten können. Sie sind noch nicht unter den magischen 10 Sekunden. Und nun Koch von der linken Seite. Läuft an. Auf den Ball wird hoch in die Luft und der Ball auf Christian King gelandet. Er hat noch drei Sekunden Zeit. Christian King Substitution 2,5 Sekunden. 2,5 Seconds before the end. Substitution Füchse das Berlin. Ist jetzt ein Wechsel, damit man noch mal reden kann. Das war keine Zeit äh, Timeout mehr übrig. Ne? Ja. ja. No timeout was left, so substitution the only thing way to stop the clock. Wer kommt Tauscher hin? raus? Und Friebel wieder rein. Und jetzt der Wurf und der gehalten. Ins Tor, ins Tor, ins Tor mit der letzten Sekunde, with the last second. Goal, goal. Is it? Ja. Wird es gegeben? Clarification. Ja, jetzt muss Tor man oder nicht? Schauen. Is it a goal or not? Die beiden Schiedsrichter kommen zusammen. Both referees are coming together. Die Sirene für mich war. Nachdem der Ball im Netz ja. war. The siren was for me after the ball was over the line. But what will be the decision? Win for Aarhus or a draw? 11-11, sorry. Still clarification. Ja, also. And? Oh, kein Tor. Kein no Tor. Goal. No goal. Aarhus wins 11-10. 11 zu 10 für Aarhus Gobo. Ich glaube, sie haben es in einem anderen Bereich verloren. Na, das, also, man war drei Tore vorne zur Pause. Und we'll be back in 8 uh, minutes, 7 minutes at 2.25 Central European Time. We will be back with the game Hammer BFG against GC Perun, Sweden against Czech Republic, if you want like that. So, I'll uh, hear you in a minute. Bye-bye.
Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen. In vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen. In vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Welcome back here in Berlin for the next game on day one of the qualification tournament for the EGCA Champions League here. And we will now see the second game for Hammerby. They lost 6-4 against Aarhus in the first match of the day. And we see GC Peru in the second time. They've lost 2-12 against SSG Blister Marburg. Two teams without a win so far, so... Whoever wins is in a well in a okay position, and a second loss in the second game, of course, would 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 make it really difficult to get to minimum the third place, which you would need to progress to the playoffs. And now we will be back here. Um, we see Perun from left to right in yeah two players with red blue jerseys at the center with a blue jersey. <laughs> And Hammerby with uh, black and yellow jerseys with stripes. And the starting three is for is Smet, no, not Smetberg, is uh, Roswal on right, Mozart on the left, and uh, Rebecca Krebs on center. And Perun will start with Josifek, with Schweiner, and with Kujan. Boschek is the substitutional player, but yep. also as a coach standing outside. 
So, last preparations before the game here. About to start. A two, three minute delay because that Füchse match before took nearly every time out and many stops on the clock. We had that 11-10 win for Aarhus. They take the first spot in Group A. Yeah, we have some problems at the table. We don't see the 10 second judges there. There is just one official sitting at the table at the moment. I don't know where the others are. Where the referees are for the 10 second. And so Perun is uh, getting, w is warming up themselves now with some slight movements on the floor. Hamabi still standing there and waiting that maybe something will happen. And now the referee is still waiting. Sarah Küpper from Germany is at the table side. But I think there are some people still missing at the table. For example, the 10 second judges. So we have to wait. And also one for the protocol now. All judges are all on their spots. Yeah, it's lunchtime. Maybe some uh, some people heard that there will be lunch in the restaurant across the Füchse Sportpark and uh, missed that uh, we are still have to work here. This is the uh, sixth match of the day. After this one, we will be back in Group B just it will be the first match of GC Nixic and they will play against the Northern All-Stars. Just to let you know what's next then. And today in total we will have 11 matches. The last one will be played at 7.30 Central European time. Tomorrow it will be also the start at 9, also on, Saturday, uh, on Sunday 9. So now we are prepared to start. Amabi has the first throw of this match. Mozart takes the ball in his hand. Left winger goes to the half left. Now to the left post. Now back to the half left and he starts, he spins. Throws the ball into the net. Finds the gap between Kujan, Kujun and Josifak. 1-0 from the half left to the half right. It was played. Dream start, first throw, first goal. Yossi Fek now from the left wing for Peru. Kozu, uh, for Perun. And now there is Roswal has the ball in his hands. Starts high bouncing ball. Schweiner, the right winger is there. Schweiner going to the right post. Spins, throws down, no, out of bounds, down, wasn't down the line, was out of bounds directly. And the ball is given in back on the left side. Mozart takes it in his hands. Mozart from the left side spins, throws the ball, and then the feet of Kujun are there. And Kujan pass back to Josifek, Martin Josifek from half left. But no problem for Roswell. Roswell with the counter attack down the line and saved by Josifek. Josifek now takes his time, goes to the left post, starts, spins, throws, and there is Krebs, the center player. She plays the ball to Roswell to the half right. Roswell with a spin, high bounce again, and the ball is inside the net. Goal wow. for Hammerby. 10.50 to go in the first half. 2 0 for Hammer BEF. And already again it's all going wrong for Perun. And on the half left now Josifek 
again, throws the ball, bounce without speed. Mozart has no problems to secure the ball, goes to the left post, starts, spins, throws down the line. Schweiner is there. Kujan, Rudolf Kujan has the ball, then brought back to Schweiner. Schweiner from the half right starts, throws by falling on his knees, but no problem for Mozart. Not and Rossmann fast enough. from the half right. Starts, no spin this time with the bounce and high in the air with the feet. Rudolf Kujan blocks it out to his right. Yeah, also important for them not just to get the offensive touch, but also get some defensive stops. And the ball is brought in on the right side of Perun. Schweiner from the half right has the ball in his hands. Starts, throws the ball, falling on his knees again. It's getting really loud when he falls on his knees. And Mozart now from half left with the spin down the line. The ball goes at the post and out. That was pretty close. The attempt by number three of Hammerby. Number three of Hammerby. Ten minutes ago, 2 0 the score. Yossi Fekis has come over to the right side to get the ball from Schweiner. Yossi Fek now going the half left again from the right side starts runs throws the ball out was blocked out at the end but the wall was out when Roswell was reaching it with his arms and now Roswell from the half left direct throw and Yossi Fick is there stands up counter attack Krebs is there no she isn't go for Schweiner go for Perun over the hands of Krebs the ball goes into the net one, two, the score from the left side, Mozart. Now starts, spins, throws, and high ball. High ball, yes. High ball by Mozart, no goal. So a chance to equal the game after it looked like, well, they would never score. And the ball is in the hands of Martin Josifek. Josifek comes to the middle. Mozart stands in the middle, one meter before his goal. Does he to the left? No, out, out, out. That was nearly an assault attempt to the official's table. Ball was never going to the direction of the goal. You have Hammerby. to bring them into the field, really. And here is Roswell with the spin, with the bounce, and the ball is saved by Kujan and blocked out to his right. Took, I think, two or three seconds already. That Nine. blocking action. 9.23 to go. And now the ball is in the hands of Schweiner at the right post. Number six from Peru. Starts, spins, throws, stands this time, and the ball is secured by Krebs. The center player goes to the left post. And she starts from there with the spin, crossing ball, and the ball is secured by Schweiner after the block of Kujan. Good effort from her. And now from the half right, Schweiner again plays the ball, and Krebs is there with her legs, gives the ball to Mozart. He comes over to the half right, direct throw to the left post, but Yossi Feng blocks it out. Still that one goal lead for Hammerby. And the ball is brought in on the left side of Perun. There we have Josifek, Martin Josifek from the left side. Starts again, throws the ball across to the right post, but there's Mozart and he can secure the ball. Hands it over to Roswell. Roswell from the half right, bouncing ball to the right post and inside the net. Roswell from right to left finds the gap. Schweiner cannot close it. And it's a 3-1 for Hammerby EF. Deserved lead as far as... And the ball now, Josef fakes, Schweiner throws the ball. And then over the bodies, no, Roswell is there. Krebs with some problems. But then there is Roswell. Roswell from the right side, a high bounce ball. Kujan in the air, but the ball is now in the hands of Schweiner. And... Josifek with the next attempt for Peru and left side out. He throws directly into the legs of Salah Kupa, the referee. And Marcos Mozart, and Mozart come, came over, but then goes back to the left side, starts, 
spins throws no problems and then he just brings the ball over at the end rolling really slow and then Schweiner with a direct attack falling on his knees again Krebs secures the ball Krebs takes the shot herself from half right with a bouncing ball to the gap no there's Yossi Fake Yossi Fake from the half left spins around brings the ball Krebs no there's Mozart at the end that can block it and from the left side, Mozart again brings the ball down the line. Kujan is now right winger. Schweiner pl now plays the center. And Kujan with the ball just had it handed over to Hammerby. And Roswell now from the half left starts with a direct throw. Kujan is there. And it's blocked out to his right. Well, it's full control for Hammerby so far. And difficult for the opponent. And the ball now by Krebs secured after the throw of Schweiner. And Mozart comes over to the half right, the left winger. Shoots the ball, Schweiner is there, ball is free, and he finds it. Josefik claps his hands, pass back to the goal. Josefik gets the ball in time, plays it to the other direction, but there is Roswell from the right post. He will start. He throws the ball now, and the ball is at the feet, blocked by Kujan. Kujan then with the throw, but there is no Whoa. real power in it. It bounced once, and that destroyed the whole speed. Mozart from the left side down the line, blocked by Kujan. And timeout taken now by Jan Boschek, the player's coach substitute. And he's also the water boy bringing the bottles for his guys for this timeout. Well, and 3 1 the score. He has much, much to talk, much to adjust because they don't get the offensive um, end of the game really into a rhythm. They don't, they are not dangerous enough, and it's just. A matter of time, it looks like, until Hammarby is scoring one or the other goal. And of course, Boschek would still have the option to substitute himself in. But maybe he is also looking at his stamina, at his possibilities. Josefik from the left side now with the throw. And the ball is taken by... Mozart from the left post. He starts again, spins down the line, inside the net, finds the gap between Schweiner and Kujan. And Mozart scores with 6.06 on the clock for the first half. It's 4 1 for Hammerby EF. They use that weaknesses in the defense. Now the ball is on the left side. Krebs get it. And the ball now on the left side is thrown to Kujan. Kujan blocks it, but still in it. No, now he gets it out with his right hand. And so blocked out. Ball on Perun's side. And Yossi Fick has it on the half left. Brings the ball out near the middle line and Jan Boschek is getting ready to yeah. substitute himself in. He now is sitting on the bench and is taping his eyes so he cannot coach anymore the way he did before. We also see Smetberg and Lovnichak ready and being taped on the Swedish side by Hammarby. But Mozart now from the left post. He starts now, spins down the line, out, it's blocked out by Kujan. Well, even if Boschek gets in, I don't see every gap closed there. He alone, he can't win the whole game. And from the right side, the Osifek this time comes and high ball. But it was, it was out. out. That was lucky for him because he was standing on the high ball line and the first bounce was clearly over the line, but they gave it out. 
So no penalty and but just there is the substitution. the substitution's possibility for Hammerby. And Mozart is going out and Lovnichak is coming in. Yes. Also a former Swedish national player. Someone who can really also turn it on still. So uh, maybe could give that, let's say, struggling defense on the other side even more to do. On the right now. Oh no, half right. Roswell down the line into the net over the hands of Yossifak. It easy. slips through and 5 1 for Hammarby EF. Number one, Hujan comes out. Number eight, Jan Boschek comes in. So we have the substitution here, 5-1 of the score. Five minutes and 17 seconds to go here in the first half. Well, he needs to stop. One thing which could happen is like stopping that, that run because if he wouldn't gone in, then the danger of getting a mercy rule loss again would be there. It would be high. And the ball is in the hands of Jan Boschek. He takes the first throw, comes from the half left, throws it hard, and then blocked by Krebs. Left to her, to her left, out of bounds. Lovely check is now left winger. Roswald stays on the right wing. Krebs as the center, Boschek on the right wing. So, lovely check from the right side, and the ball is blocked by Josifek. Schweiner takes the ball, pass back to Josifek. Josifek gives it to Boschek from left. Boschek with the throw, and then there was the ball in the hands of Lovnicek. And Lovnicek from the half right starts again. Throws the ball down the line, but it's blocked out by Josifek. But that action showed like how the attitude is now. Every ball to Jan Boschek. Why didn't he throw by himself? Is it like, well, he is now there. He will, he will do what we. Is the confidence that low? That's difficult really. Josifek from the left side. He starts, spins, throws, Krebs is there, ball is free. It's now passed back by her to Lovnicek. Lovnicek with a fast attempt that was close to a high ball by Lovnicek. But now Boschek from the right side spins, bouncing ball and it's secured at the end by Krebs. Nearly slipped through under her legs but then she had it. And Roswell from the right side, direct down the line, but there is Josifek. Josifek blocks it out to his left. No significant changes so far. Two or three throws from Bosek, but no goal. From the left, Bosek. High bounce, and then the ball is secured by Krebs after Roswell in the help defense helped her out. To Lovnicek from the half left. Lovnicek left post. No, there's Bosek. This Czech giant over two meters in height. And now Boschek with the next throw. Krebs again gets the ball. It's passed back to Roswell. Roswell from the right side to the gap. Schweiner up in the air, but still in. And he's searching for the ball, finds it. Pass back to Josifek. Josifek now from the left side. Bounce to Krebs, and she gets it again. Closes the gap between her and Roswell, and from the half right now. Lovely check for this throw, and out of bounds. How high ball, high ball. High ball number nine, Piotr Lovely check. So maybe Bosek with Bosek with the chance for his first. 3.18 on the clock, Bosek from to the right side, not to the left side, with a lot of spin, and it's in. Boschek It's rolling it like uh, a bowling ball, and it's going first to the right, then makes a curve to the left, and so Lovnicek is in the wrong corner. And 5-2, the score. And next try by Hammerby is thrown out. So we'll see Josifek now on the left, having the ball in his arms, giving it to Boschek. Boschek at the post, starts, spins, throws to Krebs. Krebs blocks it in front of her, gets the second. And now there's a timer taken by Hammarby EF. 
and it, it, it's 5-2 it's and 3 minutes and 3 seconds to go. Yeah, it's... I can't really say... Well, if the only option that you still have is throw every ball to the only female player in the field, I'm not sure what that says about you and your game. I'm, and, and Krebs isn't the weakest point on that field. She's really doing a, a solid, a, defen a good defensive job. And um, yeah, maybe it's maybe you should change that. Maybe you, you have many other throwing options, and that it only so far came into the mind of of this team, especially Jan Boschek, to throw just in that direction. I, I expected more from a player with his class. Lovely check now from the right winger position with the throw, but uh, Schweiner can block it. So we have now Oswald on the left. Lovely check on the right winger position. And uh, Krebs as center. Check seem to stay in the same scheme. Schweiner as center. Boschek now on the left just for this throw. And Josifek as uh, original left winger. Boschek now comes over to the half left. Runs, spins, throws, and the ball is secured by Krebs. Gets it. Ball brought back to Roswell. And Roswell now with the throw. High bouncing ball. Boschek is there. Helps out for Schweiner. And Boschek now from his right winger position. With the spin down the line. Roswell is there. And Roswell takes the ball to Lovnichak. Now Lovnichak back on the left winger position. And then the bouncing ball. Schweiner is there. Schweiner blocks it to his left. Finds it, pass back to Josifek. And Josifek with the throw, Krebs is there. And pass back to the now again right winger, Roswell. Starting from the middle, spins, bouncing, and the ball is up in the air. And it is secured. Secured by Josifek from the half left. Josifek now hurries up, brings the ball, Roswell. Locks it and Roswell hands it over to Piotr Lavnichak. Three minutes and three seconds to go. No, I think there's a problem with the watch here with the clock in, in the gym. But Boschek now with the ball and we'll have the ball in the hands of Roswell. Roswell brings the ball and it's blocked out. And there are, is the clock not running or? It's not running at the moment. The well ball again is blocked out. The bouncing ball which just was heavy, but after the first bounce anymore, not anymore. And uh, we'll just uh, take a look. Don't know how long this uh, match in the first half will take because the watches uh, clock is not running here in the gym. On at the officials table, I think they have the other watch, but uh, here we can't tell you at the moment. Must be m less than a minute, I assume. But as long as the 12 minutes are effective sp uh, playing time, it's hard to tell. Krebs has the ball passed over to the half right. And now Roswell from the right position with the throw, but Schweiner is there. And the ball is now with Boschek. Boschek from the half left. Hard throw into the net. Boschek finds the gap between Roswell and Krebs. Roswell is not able to block this ball. 5-3 the score. And Lovely check with the response. No. Blocked by Schweiner. Boschek now from the right post. Starts, spins, throws and up in the air. It's blocked or to the right side. Three seconds gone from that clock. And now we see the ball up and blocked out. Five three. We still try to figure out how long this will take. 
And the ball in the hands of Lovely Chat from the half right. Out, directly out of bounds. And another possession for the opponent from Praha, from the Czech Republic. For them. Faking. And it's now half time. And Hammer B IF they lead five three and Perun really they have work to do. Boschek came in. The defense is now a lot more stable and it's some kind of an equal game, but the start without him was really disgusting some kind of. Um well and the Swedish team plays solid, very much respect to um, Krebs, to the female player, Rebecca Krebs, really a good defensive job and well, they have that two goal lead and it's deserved because they had the better start. Now it's an open and equal game, but still with the slightly well, better defense, be uh, offense, sorry, because they have more throwing options. At Perun, it's just Boschek trying to boss the things, trying to turn it around. And this will also be a, a thing which, well, stamina will be a factor, I'm sure. So still interesting, still not decided. It could have been if Boschek wouldn't have decided to, to go in if he would have stayed out. And yeah, one and a half minutes left here in this half time. Teams have changed sides, now preparing for the second half. And just after this match, we will switch over to Group B. It will be at 3.30 Central European time. And it will be a GZ Nixic versus Northern All-Stars. So the first match for this Montenegro team. It's nearly the whole national team. So in my opinion, one of the favorites. They didn't play so far. So really excited to see what they can show us. But we still have 12 minutes left against uh, between Hamrabi and Perun. It's a 5-3 lead so far for the Swedish side. They are the former reigning Swedish champion and last year they have been part of the youth championships from the European Goalball Club Association. And Perun, well, last year wasn't like they wanted it, but they have won silver in 2019 and have been on fourth place in 2021. And now back to the second half. Perun in their right and the blue jersey from right to, to left and Hamad BEF in their black and yellow striped jerseys from left to right. And Perun is starting with the ball. Ball in the hands of Schweiner, given to Boschek. Two goals down, Boschek. With the first throw of the second half, now spins down the line and it's out, it's out. Close to the left post, it went out of bounds. So the first possession for Hammerby. Now the ball in the hands of Piotr Lavnichak from the left, half left. He starts down to Boschek. Boschek gets it, was deflected by Schweiner, but Boschek then secures the ball. The right winger starts from the right side, brings the ball down the line and into the net. Well, Boschek really gets Lavnichak under his uh, fingertips. The ball slips through and it's 5 4. 
really fast and hard to defend. Bounce ball there from Roswell, but Boschek can secure the ball. Boschek now on the half right. Comes over, brings the ball to Roswell. Roswell can get the ball under his armpit. And now again, Pete Lovely check to Boschek. Boschek is there, stands up, spins, throws the ball, and Krebs is there together with Roswell. Roswell now comes to the half left, the right winger. Throws the ball down the line, up in the air, and saved by Josifek. Josifek held out for Boschek from the left on Josifek with the next throw. Krebs can block the ball, goes back, but keeps the ball herself, throws the ball, bouncing. Schweiner is there. Schweiner goes back to the net and says, no, I want to throw it. Boschek takes the ball out of his hands, and Boschek with a fast throw into the net. 5-5 five, five uh, the score. He shows us who is the boss. <laughs> Finds the gap between Roswell and Krebs. And now we have a timeout taken by Hammarby EF. Yeah, a necessary one because now they are on a... Well, they, they receive a four-goal run from their opponents and they wanted just to stop them, and especially Jan Boschek. It's a one-man show, although uh, Josifek helped him, but in scoring ways, he is doing what he can do, and it's five all now, and I'm really, I'm really interested what turn or twist this game will get next. Timeout over, possession, Hammarby. 10, 32 to go in the second half, and now everything is equalized. Lovicek with the throw, the ball is free, lying there. Boschek takes the free ball from half left. He starts down the line and left the post. He missed. And you can hear it when it cracks into the wall, how hard he still can throw, maybe a few years older now than in his best times, but still much quality. Oswald from the right side. Starts from the post, down the line, and it's out. And I think the success really started when he also started to get a different throwing choose here. Yes, effect with the throw to Krebs and Lovnica. Krebs is there, gives the ball to Lovnica. Lovnica on the half left. Spins, throws, and there must be a noise. Timeout, yeah. It sounded like a school bell. Bell when, when there's a break or something like that. So the ball should be given back to Hammerby in this time. And now we have a goal here for Jan Boschek, and it counts. And there yeah, should be no throw, should have been before. But it's the first league for Perun. Perun 6-5 ahead, and the Hanovi coach was not happy with this decision. But I think the referee decided that uh, we stop with the official timeout after control of the ball was uh, taken by Perun, and so they can keep the ball. Was not uh, whistled death earlier, oh called wow. death earlier. Close decision, not the first today for the referees here. And now the try by Roswell. He's now as a left winger for several throws. Lovicek is now on the right. And now Josifek with the throw and Krebs with the save. Right side. Lovicek throws down the line and it's locked out by Josifek. Uh, still. No goal for Hammerby here in the second half. And now Josifik from the half right with the throw, but it's secured by Roswell. Roswell with the counter attack. Schweiner can secure the ball. Pass to Boschek from the half right. Number eight down, up in the air. It's blocked and it's rolling to the goal. Roswell has it. Roswell can save it and throws it out on purpose. Was afraid about the 10 seconds, so. Next attempt for 
GC Perun from the Czech Republic and Josifek from the half left. Faked attempt by Boschek, then Josifek down the line, but Lavnicek without a problem. Lavnicek with a counter attack. Boschek is in place and gets the ball from Schweiner. Next try from the half left. Josifek again down the line. It's blocked by Lavnicek. Lavnicek finds the ball, goes back and starts from the right side. Spins, turns, throws inside the net. 6-6. Six, six. Lavnicek finds a gap between the legs of Josif Fek on the left and Schweiner important, on the right. Important wake-up call for Hammerby. Six each. And now Boschek from the right side starts outside the field, comes inside the field, throws the ball, and Krebs is there with a great save, blocks it to the her right, out of bounds. Yeah, if there is another player of the match from the Hammerby side, it's, it's her for me. And now a loving check from the right side to Schweiner, but this time he can block the ball. Pass back to Martin Josifek. Josifek from the left side bounces the ball, and the ball is now blocked to the side by Krebs, and it's out. And it's really interesting to see how the throw of Josifek has changed. Did you realize it? Now a loving check from the half left, and it's blocked to the left of Schweiner. And so Schweiner has wants to have the ball, but Josifek says, no, no, I will do that. And Josifek pass to Boschek. Boschek brings the ball over and then throw by Boschek and it's blocked out by Roswell. I really, Josifek really with much more force since the game has turned a bit. So for him, a bit more confidence, it seems like. A long bond, bouncing ball but blocked from the Czech team. And it's a possession for Hammerby. And now again, Josifek with the throw, but it's secured by Lovnicek, who's back on his left winger position. And now starts from the middle, and the ball is blocked by Schweiner. Ball goes to the right and out of bounds. 6-6 six, six the score, Jan Boschek gets the ball and we have some problems with the clock here in the gym so I'll give you the time as fast as I can and now Boschek with the throw and Lavnicek, goal, 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 goal. Lavnicek uh. with problems then wants to kick the ball with the right out of the goal but Krebs also came back and then he hits the ball, Lavnicek kicks hits the hip of Krebs and from there it went in to the net. But there is a substitution. Yes, we have a substitution, 7-6 for Perun and we have a substitution. We see uh, Roswal is going out and Mozart is coming back in. Yeah, I had a good impact on the game in the first half. So maybe he needs, he just needed a bit of a break. Or it's just like switching, just like changing things after they are down again. 7 one to play. 7-6 to score for Global Club Perun. And after the equipment check with Schweiner, Peter Schweiner, we can proceed in this game. Lovely check. On the right winger position from the half right, starts, spins, throws down the line into the net, finds the gap again between Schweiner wow. and Josifak. And so we have a tight game again, 7-7. Seven, seven. I'm really no clue what happens next. Boschek from the right side, starts, no spin, with a lot of top spin in the ball. He tried to get Mo uh, Mozart, but Mozart with the reply now. Schweiner is there, blocks the ball to his left. And now pass back to Josifek. Josifek with a fast throw right to the post. Lovely check is there, it's blocked out. And again, it is nail biter. Lovely check with the try, but Boschek is there. Ball is going from right to left. Cross ball, but there was Boschek. Boschek, high bounce ball to Krebs into the net. 
through the hands of Krebs. It slips through 8-7. And Lovnicek cannot repair the situation. And so 8-7 for GC Perun. Ball now in the hands of Mozart. Mozart with the throw. And the ball is secured by Schweiner. Pass back to Boschek. Boschek spins, throws, and the ball is secured or blocked by Krebs. And now on the right side, Lovnicak down the line, but there is Josifek blocks it to, to his left. Boschek, the guy with two different shoe colors, one is blue, <laughs> one is orange. And now Josifek with the ball to the center position, up in the air, but there's Krebs at the end, and Mozart gets the ball. Mozart comes to the half right, starts, and then throws the ball to his right. And Boschek, I think he scored the last seven goals for Perun. So As we mentioned in the first game, he's the main attacker. Yes, he yeah. is the main attacker. He's the life insurance here. And from the middle he starts. Boschek spins, throws, and Krebs is there. Krebs with a counter attack to Boschek, but there's Schweiner helping out. And Schweiner passed to Boschek. From the half right, Boschek again bounce to Krebs into the net. 9-7. Yeah, he's really hunting now. 9-7 for. And it's timeout. GC Perun. Yeah, it should be timeout Hammerby. And it should be the third one. And well, they have been 5 1 up, but then a storm came. That storm was called Jan Boschek, and it's really. Um, he, he is the one that decides this game, it looks like. But still. A few options, they have to find something again. Yes, they didn't score that much after he was in, but there are still some gaps, still some opportunities for Hammarby, and maybe they just try to readjust exactly that they need to start. 5.18 to go. Next throw by Lavnichak. It's bouncing, but then secured by Josifak. Yes, effect from the left side starts again, throws the ball, and Krebs is there. Krebs pass to Lavnicek. Five minutes are a lot of time in goal ball. Yes. And then Lavnicek again up in the air, it's bounds, and Josifek then blocks it out of bounds to his left. And again, the ball in the hands of Jan Boschek. From the right post, faked attempt by Josifek. Now Boschek down the line. It's it's the post, but was whistle death, was blown death before, because it was out of bounds. Was this spin move again coming a curve ball from right to left? So it was out of bounds. Mozart from the right side tries to get Schweiner. Schweiner deflects it, but there is then Boschek and Boschek at the right post. Starts, spins, throws down the line, and it's inside Jan Boschek again. Yeah, no. 10 7, and yeah, that was uh, a mental error, I think, by Mozart. He got the ball under his arm. Yeah, now a few mistakes creep into the game of Hammerby. Lavnichak down the line on the right side, blocked by Josifek. Josifek has the ball, runs fast to the crossbar. From the crossbar, he starts again, throws down to Lavnichak. Lavnichak stands up with the counter attack, down right the line. Josifek blocks out to the left side. And then Josifek hands over to Boschek. Boschek from the half right, brings the ball to Krebs. Krebs blocks it and secures it. And the substitution for Hamlby, number nine, is going Lovnicek. out. Piotr Lavnichak and Roswell is coming back in. Yeah, they. They have that opportunities just to change here and there, round and round. This is what um, Perun, they can't do it. And there's, of course, the question when they get tired, they have that one opportunity to substitute, yes, but um, 
the only thing that they can hope for is that Boshek is just getting a bit tired and can't um, influence that game that much, but it does not look like at the moment. He's really powering through and has now scored nine goals, the last nine for his team. Four or six to play in the second half. Three games the lead for Grober Club Perun. And the ball secured by Schweiner. Ball by Boschak. Boschak with the throw and Krebs is there. And now from the half right, Mozart starts the left thrower, blocked by Josifak. Ball is free. Now it's found. Pass back to Schweiner. Schweiner brings the ball to the other side and it's secured by Mozart. He hands it over to Roswell. Roswell now from the right post. The Hammerby player bounced the ball. Schweiner can secure it. No help defense needed by Yossi Fek. He went behind Schweiner. And now Boschek going to the middle, slightly from the left. He spins down the line. No, it's out of bounds. It's thrown out of bounds. A bit, maybe the focus maybe a bit has gone, but Boschek, he's always dangerous. He has shown us, especially in this game after he didn't find his rhythm when they lost with 10 goals deficit to Marburg. Now the ball in the hands of Mozart from the half right throws the ball. But it's a, a high, high ball. ball. Yeah. So I was wondering if, if this is not a high ball what should be a high ball and then the far side referee called the penalty against Mozart. Second penalty against Boschek has the ball in his hands. Mozart, three meters before the line in the middle. Boschek down the line on the left. It's in. It's in. 11 7 for Boschek. <laughs> That's it for Boschek. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way uh, this uh, whole game turned. Yeah. Schweiner, I think, uh, I think, had one goal. You think the, ver the very first. Josipek had one. Uh, and all the rest was, I think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, could have been that he scored 10 out of 11, but can also be so. It's a uh, substitution again. Is Lavnichak back in for Krebs? Lavnichak is coming back for Krebs, yeah. And so, just I think Smetberg is not in this game participating so far. Yeah. And now they make the substitution. Krebs out. Lovely check in. And just to remind you what's next, it will be GC Nixich versus the Northern All Stars. Montenegro versus England or Great Britain. And but now we have still some time left and Bjorn will tell us how much it is. Three minutes and ten seconds are left and now Roswell with the throw, and look, Josifek gets it. And now Schweiner is a right winger. Boschek plays the center now. Mm -hmm. And the ball in the hands of Schweiner. Schweiner throws the ball. Lavnicek is center for Hammerby. And with the counter attack, Boschek is there. The ball is near the middle line. He get No, he doesn't get it. So ball over. New attempt for Hammerby. Well, with his uh, height, he would be the. Um, the one way I think he, he should play the center position. And now from the left, Mozart starts, spins, throws, high ball. Yes. High ball again. It's now high going Mozart. all wrong. And he's nodding his head like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Was a high ball. So I think no discussion on this call by the far side ref. And the ball is handed over to Boschek. Oswald. One and a half meter before his goal in the middle. Boschek comes from the right, down the line. It's in. 12 7 for yeah. GC Perun. That is class that he just takes these opportunities, and now it gets really unrealistic that there is a way back for Hammerby. Lovely Jack takes the ball. On the half right, he starts, he spins, he throws for right, out. Well, no rhythm, no real accuracy. 
Josifek, no, with the ball down the line, Ross Wallace there. Yeah, had a good start, Hammerby. Yeah. But uh, after the substitution in by uh, the coach and uh, player Boschek, <laughs> um, they still had a good rhythm, but yeah. in the second half, all the rhythm had gone. Yeah, the longer the game took, the more it all collapsed. And the next high ball, no, it's uh, out called, was, I think, uh, scrapping the rope, the line there, but now Josifek for Pedersen from the left side. It's going down the line and it's secured. And the next try for Rosler from the left side. Schweiner blocks it out. Yeah, Boschek also made his teammates a bit better. He gave them... I saw in the chat uh, we should call him, uh, Jan Boschek, not Jan Boschek anymore. So it's Bosek. No, it's a Bosch attack. Ah. Jan Bosch attack. Uh, in this game, it is a very, very good choice for his yeah. new nickname. But the ball in play with Lovnichak from the left side down the line, it's out. And, and Bosch, like when, when the ball is uh, hammered into the net, like Bosch. So the, 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 the sound it could be. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Thank you. And the ball now on the Peruvian side. Ball in the hands of Josifek. High ball, no? It was up before. And yeah. we have a high ball. One minute 45 to go. Uh, was and it a high ball or was it out before? We have a high ball panel. No, it was out before. Yeah, yeah. So, ball on the hammer B side. Mozart from the right post starts now. Brings the ball across to the left side, but out. So, 142 to go, maybe. And it is illegal now an illegal coaching coaching. Yeah. So, a team penalty. They can choose who will defend. So, if Boschek is that merciless and again. And Boschek can show us if he really is Boschek. Bosch attack. Now from the right post, he decided that Roswell should uh, be in the goal to defend this team penalty of illegal coaching. And the ball in the hands of Bosch comes now from the middle, plays the ball to the right post, it's sight. And Bosch scores again, 13-7. Yeah, he's just... One minute and 41 to go. His hunger for goals, it is still there and yeah on the left side now Lavnichak down the line Boschek has the ball and now takes some time 13-7 the score here and the ball with Josifek Josifek plays the ball and there is now Mozart on center Lavnichak on the left and on the right winger position we have Oswal Oswal with the throw from right but Boschek is there Jan Boschek plays the ball right to Schweiner Schweiner with dropping on his knees again, uh, gets the ball to the other side, but there is Mozart. Mozart with the next throw, and now the ball in the hands of Schweiner. Last minute started, and Schweiner with the ball down to the center. There is Lavnichak on the left with the throw. Schweiner, Boschak together. The ball is still in and is now in the hands of Schweiner. He has to get rid of it. And now throw it away, otherwise 10 seconds. No, he cuts it away in time. Well. <laughs> he had time. He had calm down, time. calm down. And the ball in the hands of Lavnichak. And now it's a 40 ball. seconds to go. And we'll have another penalty yes, here. It should be a long ball. Oswal made a long ball. And now Boschek. Started from the right, from the left, from the middle, now from the left again, and he plays the ball down the line and makes a high ball. Mm. High ball by Jan Boschek with his penalty. <laughs> and so Hanbabi has the chance. He showed us that he is human. To close the gap from six to five goals. Boschek goes to the middle, is now 
Slightly on his right, and the ball goes in. Lovely check. Straight down from right to the middle, and the ball is in. And as you see, no chance for Jan Boschek there in the slow motion. And 25 seconds to go. Josifek with the throw, and the ball is blocked by Mozart. Mozart with the pass back. And 15 seconds to go now. And the ball in the hands of Boschek. 10 seconds to go. Schweiner has the ball on his right. And now we have the throw. Five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. That's it's the game. Goal Club Perun wins 13 8 against Hamra BEF. And the next game will start at 3 30. Yes, and that should be uh, GC Nixich. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst.
Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas Welcome back here in Berlin to the qualification tournament. And the next game will be the goalball club Nikšić from Montenegro against the Northern All-Stars from the UK. And now I have yeah, uh, a fellow right next to me. He is player, is head of the organization committee here. Michael Dennis right next to me and uh, looking forward to this game, Nikšić against Northern All-Stars. Hello everyone, also from my side. And uh, yeah. Thank you, Bjorn, for introducing the matches. What's the starting lineup? The starting lineup uh, will be. Um, I'd, I'd take a look. Hudson on center for <coughs> Northern All Stars. Then Nanavi on the right winger and Loftus on the left wing. And I see Nikola Nikolic on the right wing, Marko Nikolic on center, and Ranitovic on, on the left wing for Montenegro. 
In the red jerseys from left to right, we will see the Northern All-Stars. And from right to left in the white jerseys, there we will have the Global Club Nixic. And now the referee announces the, the game here. And later on, Michael, we also have to talk about the first uh, match of the Füchse today. Don't remind me to that, Bjorn. <laughs> but uh, you still have uh, this German clash later on at 5.30 against Marburg, so maybe you can... Um, Fix what we messed up earlier, I would say. That's... Uh, now, the ball in the hands of Nikola Nikolic from the half left. He starts, he spins, he brings the ball around, and there's Hudson, and Loftus takes over the ball from the half right. No spin, throws the ball down to the center. Marko Nikolic is there, goes back to the goal, starts from the half left. Marko Nikolic down to Loftus, and he blocks it to his right and out. Bonds brought in on the right side for the Northern All-Stars. Nanavi, Caleb Nanavi has the ball in his hand. Comes from the half right, no spin, and throws the ball to Ranitovic up in the air. But Oh, long ball. We have a long ball here by Caleb Nanavi, so early opportunity for Nixic to take over the lead. I do assume that Nikola Nikolic will take that ball uh, there, in my eyes, best offense player from the team. He's at the left post, he has the ball in his hand. Both standing on the left. Now oh, good call. Uh, like, uh, I'd say Northern All-Stars just stole Nixic a timeout because I assume that uh, Caleb Nanavi was shifted to a side where Montenegro was trying, or I'm sorry, it's not Montenegro, uh, where Nixic was trying to score. Yeah, Nikola Nikolic was at the left post and Caleb Nanavi was on his right side, so they were standing face to face, mano a mano, and maybe he wanted to go along the line. And uh, so, first timeout is gone after 20 seconds, maybe. I don't know, you're the one with uh, the, uh, the working We have some technical problems because uh, for us the scoreboard is uh, not uh, really seeable and uh, we try to fix the camera where, where we can see the scoreboard. So, um, we're working on that. We apologize. But now from the half right, Nikola Nikolic with the penalty. Nanavi comes to the six meter line in the center position, faked. And then Nikolic in the left corner. Goal for Nixic. He stayed with the same side. It's always a tough question if you're taking a timeout and what are you doing afterwards? It's like, do I say take the same side? Do I switch it off? Good job from Nixic. Loftus from the right winger position. Brings the ball down to Ranitovic. He blocks it to the middle line and it's not secured by Marco Nikolic. So we have a ball over there. Now, Nanavi wants the ball by Caleb. Nanavi throws the ball to Ranitovic. And the ball is passed back to Ranitovic by Marko Nikolic. Ranitovic has to hurry up, brings the ball to Loftus. Loftus, the right winger with the counter attack down the line. Ranitovic is there, secures the ball and stands up. Hands it over to Nikola Nikolic from the half right with the spin down the line. Caleb Nanavi with the counter attack, fast one. Ranitovic with the block. Marko Nikolic gets the ball. Pass back to Ranitovic to the left side. And from the half left, he starts again. Spins and then to Loftus. Loftus catches the ball, brings it back to Ranitovic. Ranitovic now has the ball himself. And Ranitovic from the half left to Nikola Nikolic from the half right and then to Loftus and he can catch the ball. And now from the half right, Loftus down the right side now, out before the midline. I'd say it looks right now that uh, Northern Allstars is trying to pace up the game. Uh, I've seen a lot of quick shots in a really short amount of time, but so far not successful. Uh, Ranitovic, Milos Ranitovic again from the left side, spins, throws down the line out. And the ball is out. For those of you who are wondering, uh, I do think the ball is a new ball. It sounds at least like it because some of us as the players like more the older ones and some of us like more the newer ones. So just for those who are interested. 
Loft is hands the ball over to Caleb Nanavi. Faked shot now Nanavi. And the ball is up in the air over the crossbar. It's deflected. And so the ball is now brought back by the goal judge. Milos Ranitovic gives it to Nikola Nikolic from the left side. Clear ball standing. Nikolic will start right now. Spins, throws the ball out. Six meters before the line. It was the second one in a row, I think, he threw out that far. And the ball is brought back on the right side of the Northern All-Stars. Loftus has the ball, is on the half right. Now starts, throws the ball, bouncing up to the outside, to the left of Rani to which it was blocked. I personally think uh, Northern All Stars have a, has, a, has a good start to the game, especially against such a strong team as Nikolic. Marko Nikolic with the throw, counter take Hudson directly to Nik Marko Nikolic. Marko Nikolic passed the ball to Nikola Nikolic. And the right winger from the right post starts with the next attack to the gap. But there's Hudson again, and Hudson runs. Uh, across the ball, now finds the ball, brings it back to Nanavi. Nanavi with the throw, and the ball is out. I think they made the best out of that decision because they were already, really far in the 10 second shot clock. And the ball now in the, the hands of uh, Ranitovic. Hudson is there, the center catches the ball, gives it to Loft as he comes over to the hot left, starts, no spin, throws the ball to Ranitovic, and it's out. The corner was open. Rito, which was too far inside, but he missed the post or the corner around half a meter. Nikola Nikolic from the half right spins, throws the ball down the line, and the ball's in. Good line shot there from Nikolic. From right to left, under the arms of Loftus, it went through, hits the net, 2 0 for Nikolic. Loftus now. From the left post starts another one after Caleb Nanavi, and again they want to try also this cross ball from the left to the right, and uh, Ranitovic was also a little bit far inside with it with his half defense, so corner was open. Now from the left, Marko Nikolic, the center starts, runs, turns, spins, the ball is blocked, and now secured by Nanavi. Nanavi directly to the left. Corner, but there's the block by Ranitovic, uh, by uh, Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic has the ball in his hand from the right, half right again, but there's Loftus can block the ball. And Loftus down the line, out. Michael, do you also have this uh, feeling that uh, Nikolic at the moment is totally in command? Um, I personally think their offense game is right now focused really on, uh, from their view, the left wing from, from Montenegro Street to the left. That's where a lot of the balls are going. Um, but I personally also prefer always a little bit of a slower start and then, you know, try to get like more and more goals in between you and the opponents and like get 2-0 up so they're not doing that many things wrong. Now after counter-attack, Marko Nikolic slows the game down, goes to the half-right, the center, spins down the alley and up over the crossbar from the lack of Nanavi. It is deflected over the crossbar. That is what I mean. Sometimes you have uh, opponents where you, as the coach, see um, defense issues, but it's like a matter over time. Like if you keep throwing there, at some point they will just go in. And I think it looks for me like that Montenegro is doing this right now. From the left, the ball's brought back in to the Northern All-Stars. Now he comes over to the half right. He always starts at the three meter line with his movement. And then he shoots the ball. Counter-attack Nikolic, but it's secured. Counter-attack Hudson, but it's blocked. Out. It's a little bit of a surprise he tries to do because also Erki in his uh, try to do these things 
because for a defending team, it sounds like the ball is coming out of nowhere. Now the ball secured by Hudson. And in the arms of Loftus down the right side, but there's Ranitovic. And uh, gives the ball to Nikolic. Nikolic from the half right throws the ball down the line. Loftus is there. Uh, Nenevi's there. And nearly a high ball. He was standing on the high ball line before he released it. That was close. I think Northern All Stars, they shouldn't overpower right now because they try to go really fast and fast and fast. And obviously, that always can bring uh, high balls. And the ball in the hands of Marco Nikolic on the left. He starts, spins. Ball is secured by Loftus. Counter attack by Loftus. And inside finds oh, the great gap. job. They kept doing it, and now they were successful with it. So uh, they just told me that it was wrong with what they just said. <laughs> finds the gap. Nikolic is not in position at the right time. 2 1 the score. Now Nikola Nikolic with the response. Oh, great ball. Great ball from Nikola Nikolic. High bounce on the feet of the center Hudson, and from there it's deflected over the body of Nanavi into the left corner. That was a great bounce ball. Nanavi now from the left post starts. The ball goes to the chest of Ranitovic and then blocked out of bounds to his left. So the ball gets dropped in back on Montenegro's left wing. I see Nikola Nikolic over there. No, I was wrong. It's Ranitovic. Has the ball in his hands. Starts, spins, throws the ball, and Hudson is there. And looks for Nanavi. Gives the ball to Nanavi from the half left. Left winger with the throw. Marko Nikolic with some problems, but then secures the ball, hands it over to his brother Nikola Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic again with a bouncing ball, and this time Hudson. That's under his body, and then timeout time out taken out. by the Northern All Stars from the United Kingdom. And um, yeah, Michael, what have we seen so far? And maybe you can also talk a little bit um, what uh, are your aims for this tournament after this really bad start you had against Aarhus. Yeah, I personally need to say that um, our defense was not strong enough to. Um, get the victory home against Aarhus. It was actually our goal to uh, win that game. But we had way too many easy goals we gave up, uh, including some penalties. And then we didn't capitalize on two other penalties. We had that really unfortunate decision made at the end um, with the referees, uh, with, the, with the ball that it was like parts of seconds if it was in or not before the goal. So um, yeah, let's see. I think uh, we should talk about that at halftime, Jan. We can do that, but now the game resumes with Nanavi to the left corner, but Nikolic, Nikola Nikolic with a block to his right. And so, next shot is going to the Montenegrino team. GC Nixic, Nikola Nikolic comes over to the left, spins to Nanavi, and he blocks the ball in front of him, and the ball is now found by Hudson, gave, given to Nanavi, Nanavi to the right corner, and now 20 centimeters missing there. As I mentioned before, um, Northern All-Stars is playing a good game in my eyes, and Montenegro tries to do it kind of slow, step by step. And the ball in the hands of Ranitovic, Milos Ranitovic from the half right, spins, throws the ball, but Lose a lot of power, Nanavi with the counter attack, but there is the body of Ranito, which blocks the ball, has the ball now, goes back to the crossbar, hands it over to Nikolic, goes over to the half right. Nikola Nikolic with the fast throw to Hudson, Hudson with the counter attack. Marco Nikolic is there, Marco Nikolic slows down the game. And then from the half left, the center of Nixic with the bouncing ball. Hudson is there, straight Great with defense. his body. And now we have Loftus. Bounce out. That last defense from Hudson was uh, really good. It was just, again a good bounce ball from Nikolic. And now Milos Ranitovic bouncing to this right, but out of bounds at the three meter line, even a little bit before. And so now the ball is handed over to Caleb Nanavi. Nanavi from the right. And then 
It's blocked. Marko Nikolic finds the ball. Pass back to Nikola Nikolic. And from the half right, Nikola Nikolic with the bouncing ball inside the net. Hudson with they his feet. They tried really hard to get it off the goal line, but it slipped through. Hudson with his feet, Nana with, with his feet, and at the end, the ball hits the net. 4-1 for the Nixic Goalball Club. And the ball in the hands of Marko Nikolic. Marko Nikolic now from the left side. Bouncing ball, long ball. Long ball. Let's see if Northern Olsas can do it better than I did in our game. <laughs> this is not so hard to do it better than you did in the first game, Michael. Okay, one of them was good, but the other one were like a straight four. I don't want apologies. Make it just better in the next game. <laughs> I will I, I at least extra. <laughs> but now back into the game now on the other right post. And now he brings the ball to the left corner. And it's in. There we go. That's what I mean. Perfect shot. Goal for the Northern Olsas. No chance there for Marko Nikolic and so two goals for the Northern All-Stars. Next try now Nikola Nikolic, it's taken away by Nanavi and now Nanavi with the throw and by the chest or the shoulder of Marko Nikolic is blocked out to his left. In the hands of Ranitovic the ball is now on the half left. He's going down on his knees, spins, throws the ball. Hudson is there. Hudson gets up, gives the ball to Loftus. And the ball from Loftus to the other side. Marko Nikolic is there. Pass back to Nikola Nikolic. And Nikola Nikolic spins, bouncing ball. And Hudson again, counter attack by Hudson and high ball. And so. Hudson has to defend this goal, and uh, maybe we see a little penalty draw where Michael can learn something. Somebody should teach me. By At least I didn't throw out. By Nikola Nikolic. We'll see. Nikolic on the left post starts, faked again. Start and then into the left corner, down the line. It seems to be his preferred side. Both of the penalties went there. One was a cross ball to the left corner. The other one should have gone down the line in the left corner. And now he, then they took a timeout. And now down the line in the left corner, he makes the 5 2 for GC Nixic. Now we had a short equipment check at Nikola Nikolic. The ice shades were brought back in place by the table side, uh, by the far side referee. But now Caleb Nadevi. From the middle, he stands there. Hudson makes the par three, and then Nikola Nikolic, no, Marko Nikolic with a block to his right. For me, it stays still a little bit the same in the game that Montenegro is looking to play the match play by play, and uh, Northern All Stars is trying to catch them off guard. High ball back. into the goal, into the net! Marko Nikolic! with the bouncer on the hip of Hudson and from there it goes very very slow over the line in the left corner had also some help Marko Nikolic during his throw and by his brother who was doing a faked shot running and shortly before he started to do the throw Nikola Nikolic stopped so this was uh, well executed Absolutely. Four minutes and 20 seconds to go. 5 2 the score. And Milos Ranitovic from the left side with the bouncing ball to the right. But there's Nanavi. The clock is ticking. 4 10 to go. Nikola Nikolic with the block out. Do we have a view on the clock again, Bjorn? Yes, we have a view on the oh clock amazing. again. Amazing. I'm we so happy. I'm <laughs> so happy. We know what's happening at the end. 4 8 to go. And now from the right side, so the ball is bounced to Loftus. He's now on center for Northern Olsas. Hudson is doing the right winger position. So the coach Turner maybe she thought uh, she needs to change something in her lineup. No, uh, because she also has just one substitute with Peter Doyle on the bench. 
now from the half right Nikola Nikolic to Loftus. Ball is bounced to his right and it's going out of bounds. It was a little bit unfortunate in Northern All Stars. Uh, they were planning on coming with five people, but somebody got injured close to the tournament. And now, good attempt by Nanavi. Help defense by Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic was there. And now Marco Nikolic with the throw to Loftus. High in the air to neutral zone, running by the ball, then finds it, brings it to Nanavi from the three meter line. He starts again. He's always so close at the high ball line by releasing the ball. And now again, Nikola Nikolic bouncing ball. Loftus takes it away, hands it to Nanavi. Nanavi, and uh, then counter take by Nikolic after the save, and the ball was Nanavi was already home in my, so I don't think that that would have been dangerous for him. From the right side, Hudson high bounce right down the line, and from the body of Ronito, which it's blocked to the left. And now from the left, Milos Radanitovic. Spins, throws, ball is on Nanavi, and he secures it. And the counter take by Nanavi. Marko Nikolic is there, stands up. Counter take by Marko Nikolic with spin. Uh, Loftus is there, Loftus with the counter take to the other side. Marko Nikolic is there, and then they slow down. And Nikola Nikolic with the ball in his hands. 2.40 to go with the bouncing ball, and it's blocked out and it's a ball over so another chance for Nixic to get another one on the scoreboard 238 to go from the left side Milos Ranitovic to the right side but there's Nanavi Nanavi stands up slowly then throws the ball Marko Nikolic with problems Ranitovic then now gets the ball tipped out and it's called blocked out and now the ball in the hands of Nikola Nikolic from the left side. Spins down the alley, but there's Hudson, stands up quickly, goes to the half left with a quick response, and the ball is blocked out in the neutral zone. The ball is over. We also heard Lois Turner giving instructions to her team as the coach from the Northern All Stars. The ball now by Nanavi up in the air and inside the net by the feet of Marko Nikolic. It's deflected to the left corner. So and apparently they got the perfect instructions. From there it went in 3 5 the score. Northern Allsters are fighting themselves back into this game. Nikola Nikolic with the response. No, Nanavi. Great there. block. Great block. Two minutes to go by from now on. And Milos Ranitovic in his first half has the ball and the chance with the throw and it bounces but Loftus is there, Loftus with a quick response, there is Ranitovic is blocked to the left side he takes the ball himself, Nikola Nikolic comes over and says give me the ball from the half right now Nikola Nikolic to the gap but Loftus is there and now Nanavi with the counter attack Nikola Nikolic is there, counter attack by Nikolic and out of bounds, he but starts he out. What do you think, Bjorn? Will Northern Alsace maybe uh, put another one in the net to make it a really close game before half time? I, I don't think so. But uh, Northern also surprised me in this first half, really. Um, played a really solid defense, where sometimes unlucky, and now the next ball is in. Next there, ball we is in. there we go. There we go. I jinxed it. <laughs> you jinxed it 4 to 5, the score, because they really played a solid defense, had where some unlucky bounces by deflections, um, by these throws on the gap by Nikolic, but they are really fighting here into the game. And I had uh, the opportunity after the first match they had um, against Lyon, what they lost five to 10. All the players went outside with their coaches and uh, the coach asked her uh, boys, okay, do you want to say what was wrong? Should I say what I want to see better? So it was really a, a good format of discussion they had outside. And uh, everybody was saying in a clear and straight way uh, what uh, they disliked and what they liked in the last game. So they seem to be uh, really together as a group. I think always that that is really important um, because that is what can turn things around and what the neighbor had to just take the time out.
Valitovic down the line, and it's blocked by Hudson, the right winger. Hudson now from the half left with the ball to Marko Nikolic. Nikolic stands up, and Nikolic to his brother Nikola Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic from the half right, bounds the ball, and it's saved by great, Nanavi. Great Nanavi again with the response. No, Marko Nikolic is there, and on the half left now. We see Milo Ranitovic. 55 seconds to go, and the block to the right. It's blocked out. 53 seconds to go. 5-4 five, four, <coughs> five, four the score. The Northern All-Stars will have around about 9 seconds to set up their next attack and maybe equalize the game. Hudson from the right doesn't take too much time. And, and throws, throws it out of bounds. Out of bounds. 51 seconds to go. And the ball in the hands of Milos Eranitovic on the half left. He spins, he brings the ball, and then it's secured by Loftus. And Nanavi gets it handed over. From the middle he starts, bouncing ball to Marko Nikolic. He stands up, but doesn't make it too fast. Gives the ball to Nikola Nikolic. 33 seconds to go. Nikola Nikolic to the gap, but there is Hudson with 29 seconds to go. Hudson on the half left. Has the ball now in his hands, brings the ball to Marko Nikolic. He secures the ball, 21 seconds to go. And the ball in the hands of Milos Ranitovic on the left side, half left. He starts and he spins. He throws the ball and the ball is secured. The ball is running into the net, into oh. the net. So unlucky for the Northern All-Stars. Now we see the slow motion. Yeah, Peter Hudson gets it on his legs and then it's going to Nanavi. And Nanavi wants to kick it away from the goal, but uh, he doesn't reach it anymore. Gets it unlucky on his feet, and so 6 4, 9 seconds to go. Nanavi takes his time, 6 seconds. Now he starts, he spins, he throws, and Ranitovic is there. 2 seconds, 1 second. And that was the first half. 6 4, the score for Global Club Nixic against the Northern All Stars from the UK. And uh, now, Michael, what have we seen so far from the both teams? Uh, I see a lot of talent and potential on the Nixich side and I see a squad working as a group together on the other side. I also think that the Nixich team is together as a group but uh, you definitely see the talent that team has. They uh, beat last week um, as the national team with the same up Brazil uh, at this year's uh, Van der Global Nations Cup and they've also beat Ukraine and Europeans last year, so two top teams in the world. Um, so there you see how good their potential is. And for especially with that in the back of your mind, the Northern All-Stars are doing a great job. A little bit unfortunate that they got that goal uh, in the net slightly before halftime, but maybe they can fight it back again. Yeah, and then uh, let's come back in the halftime before the equipment check starts. Your next game will be against uh, Blister Marburg at uh, 5.30 and maybe you can tell all our viewers why we will do that in German again. Um, we do the games with Berlin participation in uh, German because of the reason that we had uh, this morning a lot of uh, younger people also here in the gym and um, they are not as fluent in English and we are offering the audio description and the commentary also with uh, headphones here in the facility for all those who are blind and visually impaired and uh, that is the main reason and um, also all of our sponsors and partners are interested in that. And to our sponsors and partners, thank you to Profil Beton, to the Blindenfreunde, we see them now on the screen, also to Helpix.net, Working Assistance, Together Strong, to MyVIPLimo.de, they made all the shuttle service for the uh, teams. Then. We as a media partner, and uh, yeah, also Berliner, that's the Berlin Brewery. Thank you also for their participation and to the Evis Hotels as hotel partners. We have them now on screens, and without sponsors, all the tournament couldn't be um, broadcasted, couldn't be done in this way um, without them, right? Absolutely, and I think everybody who's hosting global tournaments or in general sports events knows without partners these things are not possible. But one thing back to Blister Marburg later, that will be a special game for me because that's the club where I've learned playing global. I have a good relationship with those guys. Um, so it will be interesting. 
Let's see if we can fix our issues, if we can especially fix our defense. We didn't have under control this morning. Um, if you score 10 goals, that needs to be enough to win a game. Um, we don't need to look anywhere else than except on us because we lost the game even with the unfortunate decision made at the end by the referees. Um, it had nothing to do with anybody else than with us. So back into the game, Mixic leading 6-4 against Not. And the ball in the hands of the Northern All-Stars. They play from left to right, uh, from right to left, sorry for that. And in the dark, red jerseys. This is Loftus, blocked by Marko Nikolic into the neutral zone, gets the ball back, and then brings it back to the half right, to Nikola Nikolic, to the left post. No, there is Hudson in the corner, can get the ball, and so the ball is now on the right winger side with Hudson. He spins, throws the ball down the line, and then Marko Nikolic blocks it out to his left. And the ball will come back from the left side into the game. Miloš Ranitovic gets the ball handed over. And now he spins down to the gap, but there is Loftus. Loftus still on center. Hudson on the right wing and Nanavi on the left wing. Miloš Ranitovic on left wing, Marko Nikolic on center and Nikola Nikolic on the right wing. And the ball, now a new ball is taken. And the ball is in the hands of the Northern also as Nanavi came over to the right side, goes over to the left again. That's the hot skate of Nanavi now with his movement. Brings the ball, Marko Nikolic blocks it, finds the ball, goes back to the goal. On the half right, Marko Nikolic spins, throws, and the ball is secured by Loftus. Handed over to Nanavi. Nanavi again with this ball blocked by Marko Nikolic, but into the neutral zone. So we have a block over, a uh, ball over. Sorry for that. And now the ball in the hands of Caleb Nanavi on the half right. He starts. He throws the ball to the corner, and Nikola Nikolic is there, saves it with his hands, and so he can secure. Claps his hands, his legs, his chest, pushes himself up, Nikola Nikolic, before he gets now the ball given back by the goal judge. And from the half right, Nikola Nikolic starts, spins fast, and the ball is secured no it's now out of bounds it was blocked by Loftus and Nenavi from the left starting directly and it's going out of bounds and the ball now on the Nixich side 7-4 the score for Nixich and now the ball is brought back to Nikola Nikolic from the half right again, fast spin and in the gap there are the feet of Nanavi. Nanavi leaves the ball for Loftus. Loftus from the center position plays the ball to the right left side and is blocked away to his right by Nikola Marko Nikolic. And now the ball in the hands of Marko Nikolic with the throw, Loftus is there, Loftus slows down the whole thing and from the half right now Hudson with the throw, it's locked out to the left and after this the ball is now in the hands of Milos Ranitovic, the left winger and now he starts, turns, throws and the ball is secured by 
the Northern Ulsters. Nehemi from the left side again with the throw, and it's taken away. Marko Nikolic with the counterattack. Loftus is there, and Loftus stands up slowly, slows the game down. And then Nanavi down the line, and it's deflected out of bounds by Nikola Nikolic. Nine minutes and 59 to go, 7 4 the score. And Nikola Nikolic from the right side spins, throws the ball, bounced high. Hudson is there. Hudson without a problem. And now from the half left again, Hudson came over, and then Marko Nikolic with the block. And on the left side, we see Vlanitovic throwing down the line. Hudson is there. Hudson with a counter attack Sl with a fast try, and it was close to a high ball. Also, the British, the, the Golden Ulster's bench was looking like, but no, no discussion. There's a goal. No discussion about that because Nikola Nikolic with the next throw has the opportunity to score and he did between Loftus and Nanavi there was a short gap 8-4 the score Marco Nikolic now with the fast response and into the net again 9-4 the score from the legs of Loftus it's deflected into the left corner and so five goals down the Northern All-Stars here 9.18 to go. And again, the throw. Marco Nikolic takes it away from Hudson. And Ranitovic on the half left. Now starts again with the throw bounced and under the body of Loftus. It's secured, given to Nanavi. And Nanavi out of bounds. And so the ball is now in the hands of Global Club Nixic. They are now totally in control of this game. Five goals ahead. Now eight minutes and 58 seconds to go. And now we see Nikola Nikolic throwing the ball out on the left. And now the ball is handed over from the right side to Hudson. Hudson again, shifting over to the half left. Gave it to Nanavi. Nanavi with the throw. Marco Nikolic is there. 8.49 to go. 9-4 the score. And the ball will be given to Global Club Nixic. Now the ball in the hands of Marko Nikolic from the middle. He starts high bounce ball into the net on the line, on the long, long ball line. It comes down and then bounces high over the bodies of Loftus and Hudson. 10 4, the score now. And Michael, what do you think about the game? And now we have a goal. We have a goal. Sorry for that. Great response there by Loftus over the legs of Marko Nikolic and then over the body of Nikola Nikolic. It went through. Northern All Stars are still alive. So now back to oh. now back to my thought. Um, I was just calling the uh, shuttle company to make sure everything runs smoothly for Sunday, and I'm coming back and have missed like six goals. <laughs> the ball now blocked out by Loftus and Hudson again comes from the left post high bounce ball and Nikola Nikolic blocks it secured by Ranitovic going back to the half left and now spins throws down the line to the gap but there is Loftus with the counter attack Marko Nikolic is there slows the game down 8 10 to go and from the right side, Marko Nikolic, the center, down to the gap, high in the air, the ball is. And Nanavi can secure it. Nanavi, fast response, but out before the middle line. So Bjorn, um, maybe you can also at some point go over all the games we have still left on the schedule today, because I think this is game six of today's 11 matches in total. 
Yeah, with the next time out of substitution, because I see that Doyle is getting ready on the side of the Northern All Stars. We'll give you the schedule for today, the rest of it, because we have a lot of goalball left here. In the meantime, Loftus locked the ball out, but it was in the neutral zone, so we have a ball over. And again, Nixic can get the ball. Nikola Nikolic. And Nikola Nikolic for Nixic has it now in his hand from the half drive. Nikola Nikolic squeezes the ball, spins, throws, and it's deflected. Nearly it went through, but no, none of his hands at the end can deflect. Good thing he ball. didn't cut his fingernails, I think. <laughs> I said in the game before, I think that it's a nail, or in your game, that's a nail biter. I <laughs> hope he isn't a nail biter because otherwise he couldn't have saved this one here. And now Nikola Nikolic has the ball in his hands on the half right. And now we have a substitution. Substitution Montenegro. Number five is going out. Mm. Number three. Ranitovic. Ranitovic out, but who is number three? Can you help me out? Isn't that Obradovic? Obradovic is number eight, nine, is uh, still sitting there. What else did they have? So. I'm sorry, guys, that we're a little bit confused. I just think that the tournament director didn't update the paperwork that well for the commentators. Yes, that's the main problem we have here right now. Uh, we have to talk to the tournament director. I afterwards. will just fire him. <laughs> after, after that. But he will go on the left wing. Number three for Nixic, and he now spins, throws the ball, and Hudson takes it away. And Hudson now has the ball in his hands and throws the ball down the line. It's uh, blocked, and then again Nixic from the half left with the throw, and it's secured by Nanavi. We have seven minutes and ten seconds to go, and the ball blocked by Marko Nikolic brings the ball back and nearly into the own goal but it was secured at the end and then the throw is out of bounds from the left winger and the ball now from Hudson to Marko Nikolic and Nikolic on the left side has the ball given to Nikola Nikolic from half left long bouncing ball and Ooh, I'm back with hot news Bjorn the, uh, the goal judge was there in front of the post with his foot <coughs> he shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, number three is? Matej Ledinek, Ledin. former, S Slovenia, the former national player from Slovenia. Ledinek, on the left winger position, and we have Marko Nikolic hand over the ball to Ledinek. Ledinek now from the middle, shoots the ball, Loftus takes it away, and then it's secured again by Nixic and Nikola Nikolic for the Montenegrin team with the bounce in ball. Nanavi is there. We have 6 minutes, 20 seconds left. Timeout. And we have a timeout here taken by the British coach Turner. And so we will take a look at the schedule. At six, uh, at 4.30, the next game will be the French team CSAVH Lyon against the Dutch team USV Hercules. And then we will have the German clash, SSG Blister Marburg against uh, Füchse Berlin. At 6.30, we will have the top of the table in Pool B, our house goal ball against the Czech team GC Perun. And at the end of the day will be the match between the German team Chemnitzer BC against GC Nixic, the team oh. in white you see here. Especially the last game, guys. Tune in. There will be some high-class goal ball. And now Nanavi for the Northern All-Stars from the half right brings the ball. Ladinek is there, but the ball is reflected. Nikola Nikola just there and then. Great save. He's cheered up without a tone by Ranitovic from the sideline. And now Nanavi with the fast response. Now there is Ladinek together with Marko Nikolic against six minutes to go. Now Ladinek now from the right side. And it's blocked, fast response, and to the pose, to the pose, and out of bounds. Ladinek with his legs. He just got his, heads, uh, his, his, his legs on the ball. Just the feet. 
Well, I thought were there. Now Nikola Niklic from the right side. Bounce ball out. Left side. And an equipment check. 10-5. The score. First game for Niksic in this tournament. Northern Allstars had their first game already against CSAVH Lyon. 5-10 to ten they've lost. So is a hard group this uh, group B, right? I definitely agree, especially with uh, Chemnitz as well as Niksic in that pool. Northern Allstars do a great job, um, but especially Niksic and Chemnitz, only one out of the two will make it right away into the final stage. And now from the left side, Laninek has the ball in his hands. 5.35 to go down the line. Hudson with problems, and Nervi now has the ball. Substitution is called. Peter Doyle now is coming. Number three, Hudson is going off of the field. I think at the beginning, Hudson started struggling a little bit with those bounce balls, especially when he was in center. But it was a good move from uh, Lois Turner to put him on a wing. And it gave them more stability in my eyes. And he did a good job. Uh, I know how difficult it is to get your head back into the game after you gave up a couple of goals. Yeah, and I think uh, also uh, it, it, it seemed to me after getting Loftus from the right wing to the center and also Hudson then to the right wing, both mm, uh, of the, the those guys have found a position they were more comfortable in than their starting position. P potentially. Marco Nikolic with the throw. Loftus is there, blocks the ball, finds the ball. And then Doyle claps his hands, gets the ball, is at the crossbar, starts from the half right and swings the ball out of bounds. That was Early. also... An assault attempt against the official stable. <laughs> <laughs> 5 to go. 10 5 the score. Nikola Nikolic from the right. The ball is blocked. And now Loftus will take this shot. Loftus from the half right. Ladinek high in the air at the back of Marco Nikolic in the hands of Nikola Nikolic. And Nikola Nikolic from the half left, bounced, and there's Loftus again. Nanavi wants the ball, Nanavi has the ball, is on the half right, starts from there, throws the ball down the alley, and Ladinek helps out for Marko Nikolic. He had, didn't get the ball blocked. Ladinek from the left side, and Doyle with the block to his right, out of bounds. Ball be dropped on the right side, I think, of Northern All Stars. Fast attack, cross court out. Was that right? Yeah, totally right, the goal judge. <sighs> and now we have a timeout by the goal club of Nixic. We have it now 4.20. So we have a little delay for the next game because after this match is over, we will have seven minutes of break where the other teams can warm up themselves. But uh, you will see a lot of great, great goal ballers here on the one hand, USV Hercules, the Dutch team last year in the... Dutch champion. Dutch yes. champion, and they were, I think, in the under-23 tournament last year, yes. very successful. And on the other hand, you have Lyon with a lot of Paralympian uh, hopes of Hopefuls, the Fren yeah. French uh, national uh, games they will have in Paris, the Paralympics for national team in global, and also with Felix Vargas, uh, one of the outstanding Spanish global players in their squad. Absolutely, but honestly, I haven't seen Felix Vargas uh, lately on the Spanish squad, but maybe I'm just missing out. And now a goal for Niksic. Great timeout call, I would say. Nikola Nikolic makes his coach happy. <laughs> First throw after a timeout and you score. That's what you want to see as a coach, right? Absolutely, that makes you so happy. 11-5, the score, Nanavi from the right side starts and then high ball, clear high ball. He was one with one foot over the high ball line before he even started releasing the ball. I know somebody else who happened that too. You need a mirror? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nikola Nikolic from the half right and Nanavi slightly to his left and then he is in with the ball, Nanavi. Couldn't get the ball, is jumping to the right side, to his left side, is in the right corner, but the problem is the ball is too fast. And, and well so placed. It's 12 5 with 4.20 to go. Loftus from the middle. 
for the center starts. Direct throw. Latinek is there, stands up, but no, there's a substitution called. Number nine, Obradovic is coming in, and Nikola Nikolic Nikolic is getting out. I honestly need to say that um, the Northern All Stars they fought so well, but at the end, you see what I tried to describe at the beginning of the of the game. Um, Montenegro is not trying to speed through the game; they are taking it a little bit slower and rather wait on one goal going in after the other after the other and if you look on the game as a as a total i think the result is a little bit too one side because the northern all stars fought really well in my eyes yeah nixic uh, they executed well they, they executed well and they are totally in command they are not we're not getting nervous after maybe one or two goals by northern all stars they just were playing the game the whole time by now, but now Obradovic as a right winger, the ball is directly bounced outside. 4.07 on the clock. And now you see Caleb Nanavi from the left side, brings the ball, blocked by Marko Nikolic, handed over to Ladinek to the left winger. He goes to the left post at the crossbar, starts, spins down the to the gap, but there's Loftus, blocks it to his left, out of bounds. And now Nanavi with the throw, Marko Nikolic, no problem at all. Claps on the ball, Obradovic takes it, and Obradovic now with the spin, down the right side, inside the net. It also, it's always a blast as a coach when you can uh, bring in a substitute who has still good offense. Um, that also helps your team just with that knowledge in the, in the back of your mind. And now Peter Dorn from the right side with the throw. Marco Nikolic is there and we throw the slow motion because now we have a substitution. Number one is now coming in for Montenegro. Mm, for Marco Nikolic, I assume. Marco Nikolic is out. Marcinovic, can that be? Marcinovic, I think, yes. Marcinovic with the number one, we think. Uh, but just let me get this uh, thought for a second, what I wanted to say that uh, as we saw the slow motion of the goal of Obradovic, the ball was perfectly placed at the long ball line, so uh, it was hard to defend for Nanavi, and so Obradovic with a great throw there. But we see now Marcinovic is going in the middle, and now Ladinek left, Obradovic right, Nanavi now with the block, gets the ball back. 3.33 to go in the second half. 13.5 the score and down the line of Radovic with the block against Nanavi's throw. And maybe we see another great throw by Obradovic. And number one is, as you said, Goran Markanovic. Markanovic. And then Obradovic, his first throw directly out of bounds. His second, a great goal. A his great goal. third was totally out of bounds. So we know what's happening next. We wait for it, but now on the right side, Doyle starts. Now spins and done also out of bounds. And now the chance, I assume, is Ledinek still on left wing or did he switch into center? Ledinek left wing, Markanovic on the center and Obradovic on the right wing. And now timeout by the Northern All-Stars. Just a personal opinion. I I think it's really cool that Matei is back on the goalball court and playing some international goalball. I've enjoyed playing a decent amount of matches and uh, especially in my first goalball years in the national team. He was one of those experienced guys in my eyes who uh, taught me a lot. Like He scored a decent amount of me in, in my first years. So he was one of them who taught me basically by failing a lot of goalball. So it uh, was in the first years for, Italy, uh, for you uh, learning through through pain, yeah? Uh, it was a lot of pain, to be honest. I, I don't know whom I told it. I think it took me with the team from 2012 till 2017 that we didn't get mercy by Lithuania. <laughs> now from the half left, we see a throw from Loftus, blocked to the right, Obradovic gets the ball. And still Obradovic right, Latinek left, Markanovic on the center position. And this was the fourth throw again out. Okay, he so he thought he doesn't want to... 3.03 three on the clock. 
And now Malady on the left side throws the ball. Ooh, that was lost. high. Okay, they didn't call it high. It sounded kind of high. But we trust the referees. You trust the referees? Mostly. That's good to know. Sometimes I'm not so sure when we see you on court if you really trust them. I've talked to the both referees from the uh, previous game from us and they were like emotions is totally fine as long as we all stay like humans with it. Yeah, now uh, attempt by Doyle, but it is secured at the end by Ladinek. 2.40 to go and now down the line on the left, but Doyle is there, blocks it out. 2.38 to go. And there we see Nanavi coming from the right this time, bounce the ball, Ladinek is there and secures the ball. Obradovic wants it, but Ladinek says, no, I'll do it. And Ladinek with the throw, and it's now blocked and secured by Doyle. 2.22 on the watch, on the clock. And now high ball, high bouncing ball, but this is secured by Obradovic. 2.13 on the watch. And now the next try by Obradovic taken away by Laftis. Laftis from the center, and he Brings the ball to Ladinek, ball is free, and then Obradovic can save it. Obradovic on the half right with the spin, and to the center, Loftus again, hands over to Nanavi, Nanavi with the high ball. And he is, uh, it 12? is complaining about it. Number eight, Nanavi, and so we have uh, the score is 13-15 with 150 on the clock. So the chance for Gitsi Mixic to make a plus nine out of it and maybe even looking for the mercy. And the ball in the middle with Ladinek. Ladinek waits from his left. There's Nanavi. Ladinek to the right inside. He scores. We see the slow motion here. Ladinek from the middle starting and then with his left arm he puts it to his right. 14 15, and so the next goal for Nimitz. I mean, 14 5. 14 5. So the next goal could be the end of this game when Nixic is the team who scores it. And the ball now in the hands of Obradovic as a left winger, Ladinek more on the right. Obradovic from the left. The ball is in the hands of Loftus. 136 to go. And the next ball in the hands of Loftus. Obradovic saves it, stands up. Goes back to the post, 127 to go. And Obradovic again, bounced ball to Loftus. Loftus takes his time, brings it to Nanavi, 120 to go. Nanavi from the half left to Obradovic to the right. Markanovic with the pass then to Ladinek. And Ladinek on the right post starts, spins, throws, and the ball is secured by Loftus. 105 on the watch, on the clock. And on half right, Doyle with a bouncing ball taken away by Obradovic, still in play. Last minute started, 53 seconds to go. Obradovic from the left side to the right side. Loftus is there, gets the ball. Now to Nanavi, he blocked it before. And Nanavi now with the throw. And Ladinek is there, Markanovic back to Ladinek. 40 seconds to go on the right side now. He spins, he throws. Loftus is there, counter attack. Loftus to the right post, and Ladinek is there. Ladinek takes his time, 30 seconds to go. Ladinek now from the right side, brings the ball to Loftus with a lot of spin. For 23 seconds to go, Loftus from the middle of the goal starts, spins, throws to his right side, and out of bounds, 16.6 seconds to go. It was quite a rally, Michael. Time was running down. So Good, you know, I have always that organizer's view on it, so I'm always hoping that the delay doesn't get too big for all of our great volunteers and uh, referees. Nobody's talking about the commentators. No, they work. <laughs> okay, that's, that's right. We work <laughs> the whole day. And now from the left side, Obradovic, out of bounds. From left to right, out of bounds, 13.2 seconds to go. So one more try for Montenegro to now make Nan it plus 10. Nanavi. Northern All-Stars waits from the left side, throws, and the ball is secured by Ladinek. So we have five seconds, 5.3 seconds to go, and we have a timeout taken by Montenegro. You mean Nixic? Montenegro's home country, of course, of the team 
Global Club Nixic. Excuse us, guys, when Excuse when us, we uh, have that little mix-up in between countries. Because the whole team, except of Ladinek, were not. What we are last week here as Montenegro beat Brazil eight to six, and now they're here as Nixic. Ladinek was the only one not in the squad. That's true, and I think that is a little bit confusing for for us, and especially when uh, people uh, were since nine a.m. on the microphone without a bigger break. So, apologize that guys i hope you take our apology there and uh, don't be too hard to us now last driver ladinek ladinek throws it it's blocked two seconds to go and the clock is stopped with 1.1 second to go and the ball was out of bounds and now nanavi he's gonna try it again from half right he tries and the it's over and the ball was blocked so 14-5 we are finished here with the game of Nixich against the Northern Allsters. Michael, thank you very much for joining me and uh, supporting me here at the microphone. Good luck uh, for this German clash at uh, 5.30. We will Plus witness X. it. <laughs> we will witness it. We will commentate it. And uh, yeah, do you have one last sentence maybe to all the global fans all around the world watching on YouTube and the Füchse Berlin uh, homepage? Uh, keep watching these great global teams uh, support them by uh, tuning in and uh, I have to go now to my team because we want to do a more proper game planning <laughs> especially about our defense <laughs> okay then see ya and the next game will start in seven minutes and Kevin Bart and Christoph Scholz will be for you at the microphone bye bye
So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Champions League in goalball. We are in Berlin, Reinickendorf, and we are waiting for the match between CSAVH Lyon versus USB Hercules. So we will check who will play, and we are checking the starting three on both sides. Referees already checked the equipment, so everything fine. And next to me here is sitting Kevin Bart, waiting as well as me for the match to be started. And then we will see who will start this match and who will score the first goal, Kevin. Well, the favorite, in my opinion, is Lyon. They have won the first match, but uh, Hercules, they also have shown a great performance against Chemnitz, so could be an interesting game. And we are now about to start this match. And we got Hercules on the left side with the ball in their hands. It's Sam de Jong with the first try, but a good block by Lyon. Aris Nimatiak and the first try for Lyon, but that as well, a good block, a good defense. This time we got Forne Spicksneider on the right wing with a number five, and in the center position, there's the goal. I wanted to say in the center position, there is Imre Himmelbauer, but then there was the gap. The first gap between Himmelbauer and Speck Snyder in the center and on the right. So the first goal for Lyon, 1-0 after a few moments. Next attack, next goal. I'm so sorry, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's when things happening and just it's, it goes fast, it's difficult. Well, already a time out after how much time? Yeah, I have to check. I can't see the clock from my position. That's mm -hmm. a but pity. Uh, I think but if, if, if one minute any. if one minute has passed, it's, yeah. it's my, well, dream start for one and a nightmare for the others. <laughs> so two two goals for Lyon and uh, well the. The start was good in the last game for Hercules, um, but now really two, two defensive mistakes. They have to wake up and I think the coaches try exactly that with this timeout just to that, that everyone focuses because if you don't do that, the game slips away quickly. Absolutely. And the second goal was scored by Felix Vargas from the right side. Now the attack for Hercules, but no problem, no problem for the left winger who scores. Another goal! Who scores by himself. We have to check the teams because I don't got them on my list. I'm with the number two, but I will tell you very soon. Next try, we got a three. Zero. I guess it's not. Now we got it. And so the next try by Hercules, and it's blocked out, ball over. So again, the team from the Netherlands, UFV, Hercules, and they will try to score this time. Sam de Jong on the left wing, and the ball is coming down the line. Blocked again by Felix Vargas. Felix Vargas, next try. Ball blocked out and oh, no ball over. That was very, very tight. Very, very tight ball. Nearly a ball over. And so the next try for, for Hercules, Fauna, Speck Snyder. Ball was going down the line and was passing the line. So 
Keel could score again on the left side, but the ball went next to the post. No chance for a goal. But they have what they want. They are, I think, more than pleased with this early 3 0 advantage. And Hercules have to find something and they have to find it quickly. Well, quickly, okay. 24 minutes in goal ball. This is a long time. But if you throw so many times the ball outside the field, you can't really get into your offensive rhythm, offensive action. Oh, good fake. <laughs> Twice. Yeah, Felix Vargas. <laughs> but the ball is kicked out. Kicked out in the center by Imre Himmelbauer. Or lying on his right side and with his left foot was kicking the ball away. Now Hercules was trying from the left to the right, but the ball again outside the pitch. As you said, they have a lot of mistakes. Yes. Leon as well, now from the left side, ball to the right side, outside. And so we are waiting for the next goal. We'll check very soon the time. And it's Hercules now from the half left. Ball is going in. Oh. Ball was going in half left. It was uh, and no, it was Sam de Jong with his first goal. Sam de Jong for the three one. And it's again Lyon. Good block. Good block by Ornus Beck Snyder. On the right wing, ball is bouncing hard. The ball is blocked again. Lyon starting again from the right side with Felix Vargas. Didn't score. Because of Speck Snyder. Down the line. And safe with the foot. Oh, they were running together nearly oh no, equipment check. I just remember uh, Hercules just scored 11 goals against Chemnitz and actually they really have problems to get into their rhythm still that 3-1 advantage for Lyon Solid goal ball, effective goal ball, and that's all what it needs. And they are actually on course for the second win here. So there are still about nine minutes to go. Eight minutes 45, exactly, in this first half. And Leon is trying again. Ball is blocked out. So next try for Fonne. Speck Snyder from the right side, ball is going down the line, blocked with the legs. Leon, next attack. All down the line, bouncing hard. But Speck Snyder giving the ball to Sam De Jong, blocked again. He's got the only goal so far in this match for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bouncing, bouncing ball inside. Mm -hmm. It's the goal. It's the next goal for Felix Vargas. It's the 4 1 for Lyon. He had not that much impact in the last game, but now he is really showing his qualities and his experience. Next attack for Hercules. Blocked in the center by Harris. Nematia was trying him for himself. The ball from the center to the right. But there is Sam de Jong. Sam de Jong with the next attack. And the ball blocked again. Felix Vargas, right wing. Spinning around. Ball is bouncing hard. And ball is blocked again. This time Imre Himmelbauer. Next attack, next block. And Leon is attacking. And the ball is in. Oh, the ball is in. 5 1. 
I can't tell you who scored because it was the man with number two. I don't got his name. Mm -hmm. There was no number two in the yeah yeah <laughs> the lineup of Lyon. So we'll have to check. We have to check who he is. Maybe the unknown. Hercules trying again. 5-1 for Lyon. Seven minutes to go. Felix Vargas, right side. Balls going in the center. It's blocked and it's blocked out. So now they have to hurry up, Hercules. Yeah, um, they, they need to have their own to have an own run because 5-1 is a really it's a heavy deficit already. And the ball that is out. That early, um, the defense was a problem against Chemnitz, but now it's even more because they don't find a scoring, uh, an, an offensive rhythm. And now, the next throw. And it's out again, so this is maybe also a reason why we don't have that quick pace yeah. we had in games before. We, we have many um, balls thrown, thrown out of the field and um, the clock is stopped every time. So we can't really, we are not that fluent at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So we got a substitution for Hercules. Yes. Going out was with the number two Imre. Himmelbauer yeah, yeah. and coming in is Femke Vandenborn. One of three female players only in that tournament. Yeah. I think she is in the center position. Yes, normally. exactly. She was clapping on the floor. Ball was in the hands of Sam Leon, but he didn't score. So next attack for Leon. Again, Felix Vargas from the right side. He was hurrying up. Ball is played cross, but two cross next to the post. It goes outside the field. So still 5-1. Six and a half minutes to go. And we are waiting for the next attack of Hercules. Hercules with Fauna Specksneider. Ball was blocked by Felix Vargas. He's trying from the center. Ball is bouncing, but ball is bouncing outside the field. And on the right side, he was trying to find the way into the corner on the right side of the goal. But that was too far away. Blocked out by Lyon. Six minutes, 17 seconds to go. Felix Vargas going to the center. Some stepping sounds and the next blocked ball by Fauna Speck Snyder. And out again. This is yeah. it's just really it seems to be difficult for both to, to get the focus in maybe the, the afternoon, maybe had some coffee or something, but normally you shouldn't do that as a professional. Sport. Next attack for Lyon. Ball was blocked. And the counter attack for Hercules with Fauna Speck Snyder. Timeout. Timeout for Lyon. Coach wants to say something. They are four goals ahead. Yes. But they could, I think, be quite more goals ahead. Yes. They, I think there are still things to improve, uh, like those the, 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 um, the number of balls you get into the field or throw them out. So yeah. I think defensively everything is all right. They played, they continue to play a good defense. They did it in the first match. And maybe now he wants to see something different and says, just like you do, there is more potential in the offense there there are gaps maybe the substitution um, changed that a bit but still 
Bouncing ball. And the ball oh, is in. This is a dream for everyone. I think someone said it in the match before. The ball you is take, in. It's you take Felix a out And you tell your team something, and in the next throw, they score. They can do, can't do you a better favor. Absolutely. It was Felix Vargas again from the right side. Cross ball into the left corner to the 6 1 and it's for seven one. and 7 1. Oh my. So that was fast. Again, Vargas? No, again, the for us unknown mm, player. I'm so sorry. It, I'm quite sure that number two could be. I'm checking the bench. Uh, no, number five is Kada Buaya, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but is sitting on the bench. And I'm checking the other numbers. Guess we. Yes, Inis, number eight. Yeah, exactly. But I. Uh, and number. F I guess it should be number three, Nabil Baish. Yeah. Because there is no number three yeah. sitting on okay. the bench. So, so I will change that here. Thank you, maybe. I think so. Um, so they really found a run again after that time out. Lyon, two more goals, and so they only need four more yeah. to finish off early. And oh. three more. You wanted to say three more. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> the ball was coming and the ball was going inside the left corner on the left side. Oh, and on the on the cr crossbar. crossbar, yeah, exactly. Ball was blocked with the foot on the crossbar, and then it was going up in the sky and jumping from above on the crossbar again, and then behind of the goal. So no goal for Hercules. Still seven one. And the next, it should be. Oh, the next try down the line for Nabil Baish, but the ball was blocked. The ball was blocked by Sam De Jong on the right side. Now Sam De Jong changed the position, but he didn't score. And I guess there will be the next substitution on both sides, because there is Thomas Ramos Martins who is waiting and jumping up and down. And now there is the substitution. Yeah. We call him normally Ramon Martin because we think uh. he is from France. So, um, Well, then it's Ramon Martin. You're absolutely right. Sorry. But we never asked him, so <laughs> maybe. But who, who is out now? Now out is going, I guess. Guess Nabil Baish. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's and Ramon Martin Martin is, in, is coming think. in, going to the left wing, the left position. I think it's the first time he gets some time on the field in the tournament, so it's interesting to see. I think he also played for the French national team okay. last yeah. year. Then oh it's a high ball. High ball. I guess high ball, yeah. Yeah. High ball from Felix Vargas. So first penalty of the game. For the first time, he has to defend the goal alone. And there is the substitution for Hercules. Fauna Specksneider is going out and Ronald Klaver is coming in. But it's Femke Vandenborn who will attack against Felix Vargas. Some some preparations and preparing on the side of Hercules because Ronald Klava is coming in, had to be checked. And who and is out then? Out is Fauna Specksneider. Oh. Yeah, and it's, it's Ronald Klava who received the ball from Femke Vandenborn and he doesn't it's score. Blocked. He doesn't score. It's Felix Vargas who jumps to the ball, on the ball, and he catches the ball. Uh, when you are Hercules, you just think, well, we had that crossbar, we had that block penalty, yeah. nothing is going, we can't get anything. Yeah. Four minutes to go. 
exactly 352. It's 8 1. What a game for one, and what a disappointment yeah. for the other. Because they had a good performance against Chemnitz, and they really, I think, had some hopes for this. So Lyon could finish this before the end of the first half. Yeah, which, well, some of the organizers wouldn't be, uh, I say, mm. wouldn't be angry if that would happen yeah. because we started with well, 11, 12 minutes delay at the moment. But this is nothing against Hercules. If they could fight back and give yeah. us a game, we we would love to commentate on, of course. But um, exactly, uh, I can't see that at the moment. Ball was going out by Lyon, and now there was Femke Vandenborn trying through the center, but it was blocked in the next attack. Ball is bouncing, but ball is blocked again by Sam Lyon on the left side, left wing, ball down the line, and again there is Haris Nematia. Felix Vargas, cross ball, oh, that was very tight. There were the fingers, the fingertips of Ronald Klaver, who saved the ball. It was a very, very cross ball, I guess it would have been directly and exactly into the corner of mm -hmm. the goal on the left side. Yes, there were some noises. Next ball out by Hercules. Three minutes still to go in this first half. Yes. Another possession for Lyon and blocked by Hercules. Well, they still try to score, but not with yeah, a ball, next, the ball like next that. Next blocked ball, but at the moment on both sides, the balls are blocked very good and not that hard in the attacking. And that was a ball by Hercules Sam Lyon. Next ball was going out. So another Felix Vargas from the center is going to the left side next to the post outside no goal but yeah. that was very tight I guess yeah. a few centimeters you feel they are still nearer to yeah. the next one yeah. than Hercules to re reducing the deficit here next attack for Ronald Klava blocked ball Felix Vargas. And the ball is in. Uh, yeah, Felix he, Vargas. He was near a few seconds ago and now he's just scored. Yeah, he's he was he was spinning around like like playing a cross ball. But his ball didn't went cross. Mm -hmm. His ball went to the half left. Oh, and there is the post. Ball onto the post. Was a great defense of Femke Vandenborn with her feet. She was yeah, touching the ball, kicking the ball a little bit and was going onto the post. Next attack for Felix Vargas. And the ball is in. Yeah. <laughs> Again, a goal. Felix Vargas. It was bouncing, then it lost some power after the bounce, but still it dropped in. And that's the 10 1. <laughs> and Lyon just needs one more goal to finish this match. And there are 1 minute and 49 seconds to go. Next attack, ball is kicked out by Ronald Klava. Yeah, and as Hercules, you are maybe just in a position saying, well, we try to keep this game as long yeah. as we can. As long as we can. Ronald Klava. And the goal. Oh. And the goal. Goal for Ronald Klava. There is the 10-2. Avoidable, I think. Yeah, exactly. That was very, very tight. It was... Thomas Ramo Martin. 
was blocking the ball and with his fingertips he couldn't reach it mm -hmm. and then it was bouncing over himself, over his body, into the goal. So 10-2 ball was blocked over the crossbar by Hercules. So we got a 10-2 and one and a half minutes still to go. Leon needs two goals to finish. But now there is Sam Leon on the left wing. Ball was catched. No problem for Nemartia. And the next attack, but the next blocked ball, blocked out by Klava. Klava taking the ball. Femke van den Born in the center of the goal. Clapping by Sam Dion. Oh, that was very, very tight, very near to a long ball. And the next block by Sam De Jong. Sam De Jong with a cross attack directly into the arms of Ramo Mata. And Ramo Mata, no, he doesn't score. Next good defense by Sam De Jong. And next good defense by Felix Vargas. Bouncing ball, hard bouncing ball, and Femke van den Born is jumping into the ball and blocking it with all her body. Ramon Mata. Ball is bouncing and ball is going to the line, but not over the line. Next, blocked ball and the last 14 seconds on the clock. 10. So I guess there won't be any goal in this first half. <laughs> Last. And that's it. So we got a 10-2 for Lyon. Yeah. And we got a short break. Both teams are changing sides. So the second half time, second half, we will have Hercules on the right side and Lyon on the left side. And Lyon needs two more goals to have an early finish to make the mercy rule say, thank you, that's it. Yes, and it would be the second win out of two matches in, in these groups of five. That will That is, of course, something you appreciate, something you... Um, you go for something you take because if you win the group, if you get first in the group, you are yeah. automatically um, qualified for the, uh, for the main tournament of the yeah. Champions League. And if you get in second or third, you will play um, in the playoffs on, I think, on Sunday. So uh, Lyon, for them, the second win would mean they maybe already have done enough for playoff qualification in a group of five. And just to let you know what would be next in our stream, that it would be at, well, 5.30 German time. I think we only get that if the game finishes a bit earlier. Absolutely. And that is SSG Blister Marburg versus Füchse Berlin. And then warm greetings to some people who were criticizing us on YouTube <laughs> for commentating in German when a German team was playing, this is then a game from the host, from Füchse Berlin, and we will have people in the hall, and of course we will do also an audio description, which we do all the time. So, please, um, well, I just thought it is a German thing to, to try and find something to criticize. <laughs> we have 27 games here, and m maximum six of them won't be in English, so... Um, I hope it I hope it still doesn't hurt. <laughs> Maybe we will give you a German curse some words or something like that in that game, but just to let you know that will be in German Marburg against Füchse Berlin in well twenty to thirty minutes time. We still have a half year left, but actually it does not look like we will play the full half because 
um, even if, for example, they substitute Felix Vargas, uh, Lyon, they would still have some, for, for example, Bua Nabil Baish, for example. Hmm? And yeah, Nabil Baish, for example, who already scored. And yeah, yeah. So they can also bring some quality in. And for Hercules, it's just maybe they can get on a little roll, but I don't think they have the um, expectation to turn this really around. So, and we have... We have a substitution. Yeah. Okay, we have to... Yeah, to make that clear. Because a player with a number two can't be Nabil Baish because a player with a who, who is the one who is wearing the number three and the number three is on the pitch now. So I guess a player with a number two should be Elia Uni, because there is no number eight. Mm -hmm. No number eight, well, that should be him. I'm very sorry for the confusion. But we don't have that lineup, we just got one, uh, our lineup, which was official at the moment or before, yeah, the, just before the, the tournament, tournament yeah, started. Yeah. And so at the moment we got for Lyon Kada Boalia on the right wing with this uh, yellow long sleeve under his jersey. And we got Ramu Mata in yeah. the center position and on the left wing there should be Nabil Baish with a number yeah. three. So our player with a number two, I think so should or could have been Ilya Uni. We also had substitution at the other side, but we just try to keep that sorted. In the center there is Imre Himmelbauer. Back in the game. And there is the goal for Nabil Baish. So 11 2, and again in the situation, only one goal missing for them. Exactly. And the next attack for Lyon. Now it's Boralia. Boralia. But he misses because there was with the number seven Ronald Klava on the right wing. I already got Imre Himmelbauer in the center. And on the left wing there is Sam de Jong. So now we got all of them, ball over. Next attack for Lyon. And there will be Nabil Weich. And maybe he will score this final goal. Ball was bouncing, ball was bouncing. Good, F nearly finding the gap. Next ball over, yeah, next so attack. An another attack for them. And that Himmelbauer, he was some weak part, some, some weak point also in the first game. But they saved the ball. Yeah, Sam de Jong. Uh, Sam, yeah, Sam de Jong saved against Nabil Baish, who tried with his left hand. And now it was uh, Ramo Mata. But again, good block by Sam de Jong was trying now, blocked out by Ramon Mata. And there are nine minutes, 46 seconds left. Official time. But as we already said, if there could be one more goal at the moment for Lyon, it will be the sudden finish of the match. Next try by Boalia. Ball was next to the post. Was outside. And the goal that was a very, very sorry for saying that. Very, very strange goal. <laughs> Ronald Klava was 
moving himself and then he was stopping directly in his movement like oh wrong steps or something like that and he couldn't or, uh, di or didn't move anymore and he stood there <laughs> and then he was like standing and throwing the ball bouncing the ball and was going in so now we got a 11 3 And we got a 12-3, it's Kada Boalia. And again, we are in this, in this moment yep. where there's one more goal needed. And uh, the chance. No, it's ball over, so minimum one more possession for Hercules. That is blocked, and this time they get the throw. Yeah, ball is blocked, and ball comes back to Lyon. Maybe with Nabil Baish, ball is bouncing, ball is not going in, because Ronald Klaver is jumping on the ball and catches it. Next attack, ball is up in the sky, but then there is Sam de Jong to have it, not to score. And now Nabil Baish from the left side, half cross ball into the center, not really dangerous for Imre Himmelbauer. And Ronald Klava with his next attack, ball is kicked away. And we got Kada Boalia. Cross ball, bouncing, blocked. There are about eight minutes to go. And Leon is trying. And again, blocked with the legs of Imre Himmelbauer, giving the ball to Sam de Jong. Sam de Jong. Ball down the line directly to Garda Boalia. And with his left hand, he scores. Garda Boalia, and that that's it. That means they win. Leon wins 13 3. Second win for them, and th they are on top in Group B so far. And for Hercules, it's the second loss, and also the second loss by Mercy Rule, so especially this time, really didn't find any rhythm in the offense from the beginning. They had to hunt, they were behind, and well, really nothing for them to turn or nothing for them. It was really, again, really solid and really straight from Lyon, and so they deserve that win. And for us, it's a little break. We are back in time again, and next it's the German battle between SSG Blister Marburg against Füchse Berlin, and that will be in German commentary. We will be back soon. So Kevin Bart and Christoph Scholz say bye-bye, and I hope, or we hope, you will be back as the same as us in about 10 minutes. Yes. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. 
der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin? Kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport. Und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen. In vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. 
Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Hello everybody here from Berlin, uh, from the next match here in Pool A, SSG Blister Marble against Füchse Berlin. And I know uh, some of you were irritated, but if the Füchse Berlin are playing, we'll do it in German. But we will try in substitution breaks and in timeouts to make short summaries in English for you. The other games uh, will all be broadcasted in English, but we also have uh, some spectators here in the gym, some uh, pupils, some schools are here and uh, they also listen to us and that's why we do it in German when the home team is playing. So Füchse Berlin is right now on the line. But first of all, one question I saw in the chat on YouTube. Um, there is Dom Roper asking, uh, what do you love or hate about goalball and what would uh, you like to change? Also for us, interesting, just to write it down in the chat. We try to keep an eye on that. And now we have here the standings. Lyon is leading in Pool A with two games and uh, six points. Uh, and then Chemnitz, Nixic, just one game, both won it. Northern All-Stars, two games, both lost. Hercules, bo uh, both games were lost. And the standing in Pool B. Ahus Goball, two games, six points. Blister Marburg, one game, three points. Uh, Perun, two games, three points. Hammerby, two games, zero points. Fix Berlin, one game, zero points. But now here to this German clash. Jetzt hier zu diesem deutschen Spiel. Was, Kevin, erwartet uns? Ein, ein interessantes Spiel. Also Marburg hat mich wirklich positiv überrascht, wie scharf sie da vorhin gewesen sind. Wie irgendwie auch eingespielt bei diesem Sieg, den sie da gelandet haben diesen Abbruchsieg und die Füchse, ja, die hatten Luft nach oben. Natürlich unglücklich verloren durch dieses Tor, was sie in der letzten Sekunde erzielt haben, was eigentlich hätte zählen müssen, da sind wir uns, glaube ich, einig. Aber die Fehler sind davor gemacht worden, die größeren. Also jetzt ist die Frage, Füchse fast schon mit dem Rücken zur Wand. Also zwei Niederlagen wird es dann schon eng mit der Quali für die Playoffs. Und da wollen sie, denke ich, mindestens hin. Die Füchse starten mit Michael Dennis links, rechts Christian King und in der Mitte mit... Daniel Friebel, Christian King mit dem ersten Wurf von der rechten Seite mit einem Bouncer auf Arenda, den Center, der blockt ihn nach vorne weg. Rechts außen Nils Emich, links außen Kürjat Özdemir. Links außen Kürjat Özdemir und jetzt Arenda von halb links mit dem Drehwurf. Lang unterwegs, aber Friebel kann ihn blocken. King sammelt ihn ein. Christian King von der rechten Seite wirft den Ball jetzt auf die Schnittstelle, geblockt von Arenda, nach links außen weg, sammelt den Ball ein und hat den Ball jetzt 
in der Hand, spielt den Ball einmal rüber und da ist dann Daniel Vögel da, übergibt den Ball an Michael Dennis am linken Pfosten, startet er geradlinig, wirft den Ball auf die Schnittstelle ins Tor, über die Zähmich hinweg, über die Knie, bounced der Ball hinein ins Tor, 1-0 für die Füchse Berlin, 1-0 Füchse Berlin. Das ist natürlich wieder ein idealer Start. Daniel Arenda mit dem nächsten Wurf. Wiegel der Center nimmt ihn weg. Wird angefeuert von seinen Teamkameraden auf dem Platz. Und Christian King von der rechten Seite mit dem Wurf. Hoher Bounce auf Arendas Hüfte. Der fängt den Ball da aus der Luft. Klopft auf den Ball. Gibt ihn an Nils Emich von halb links. Halb links in Englisch ist half left. Halb rechts, half right. Von halb rechts jetzt den Ball in die Linien lang. Daniel Arenda. Nee, beziehungsweise Friebel natürlich mit dem Block nach außen weg, nach links. Sucht seine Position. Michael Dennis übernimmt den Ball. Und dann der nächste Versuch von King. Und Arenda schmeißt ihn dann ins Aus nach seinem Block. Und der Ball an diesem langen Goalballtag, den wir hier alle haben, ja. ist jetzt wieder in den Händen von Michael Dennis am rechten Pfosten steht. Diesmal King macht den Platz. Dennis gerade linker Anlauf Richtung Kayumi. Der kriegt ihn nach links rausgeblockt. Er versucht sich da selber zu pushen. Mit Wir haben noch 2 Minuten 44 auf der Uhr. Und der Ball in den Händen von Emich von links nach rechts rüber. Friebel ist da. Und Michael Dennis direkt mit dem Gegenangriff über die linke Seite. Ball geblockt. Und Jetzt sollte der Ball wieder von Arenda rübergebracht werden, von der Halblinken. Er den Ball die Linie entlang. Christian King ist da, kann den Ball aufnehmen. Auszeit genommen von den Füchsen Berlin. Und wir hören, der Stream bei YouTube funktioniert wieder. Now it's back. You don't have to switch to the website, but the website, the stream was running the full time. So we had some problems maybe with uh, YouTube or YouTube had some problems with Goalball. We don't know that. Oh, so us, so <laughs> short summary here for everybody who were not on the homepage with the stream and were waiting here at YouTube. 9-3, the score for the Füchse Berlin. Yeah. What's your impression so far? They, they always had... Well, had a good start with scoring that first three goals and always finding the the weak parts in the game of their opponents. So really um, attacking, really wanting and forcing their way towards that first win. And that would it be with that 9-3 scoreline. Now back to German. Christian King von der linken Seite. Kayumi kann den Ball blocken, sammelt ihn ein, läuft schnell nach hinten, geht auf die Halbrechte zu Emich. Emich hat den Ball in den Händen, läuft jetzt an, dreht sich über die rechte Schulter und wirft den Ball. Friedel ist da. Christian King steht schnell auf, aber dann nimmt ihr Tempo raus. Noch zwei Minuten auf der Uhr. Auf halb links jetzt Michael Dennis gerade nicht der Wurf Richtung Emich ins Tor hinein. Mm -mm. Aber Longball, Long Ball, Long Ball. Long Ball. gepfiffen gegen Michael Dennis. Das heißt Penalty jetzt gleich für die SSG Blister Marburg. Daniel Rinder hat den Ball in der Hand. Michael Dennis steht zentral auf der Linie. Und jetzt quiet, please. Arenda wird es wohl machen. Jetzt geht er vor auf die 6-Meter-Linie. Leicht nach rechts versetzt. Michael Dennis und Arenda läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball ins Aus. Und er schlägt die Hände über dem Kopf zusammen und weiß, da hat er eine Chance liegen lassen. Ja, ich habe ihn, hab ihn ja vorhin so gelobt, wo er den Ball geholt hat, zurückgelaufen ist, sich orientiert hat und das, das gefühlt war das die schwierigere Situation als hier, aber manchmal ist das dann, wenn du dieses komplette Feld für dich hast, für manch einen wird es dann eher kleiner. Als vorhin größer. konnte er nicht nachdenken, ja, jetzt hat er viel Zeit ja, dazu. Stimmt. Christian King mit dem nächsten Versuch, der Center Kayumi nimmt ihn weg und übergibt an Arenda auf halb links. Noch 1 Minute 50 auf der Uhr. Hoher Bounce. Michael Dennis ist da, Ball ist frei und dann eingesammelt von Friebel. Übergibt an Michael Dennis. 1,40 noch auf der Uhr. Michael Dennis wieder mit einem Bounce Richtung Kayumi. Der nimmt den Ball weg. War sehr, sehr flach unterwegs und schnell. Daniel Arenda jetzt von der halb linken an der Latte orientiert. Läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball und Christian King hoch in die Luft, ins Tor hinein. Ja, da haben sie den Treffer, der glaube ich verdient ist, weil sie das jetzt wirklich gut machen in der aktuellen Formation Marburg, wie ich finde. 9 zu 4 der Spielstand. Michael Dennis vom linken Pfosten startet, wirft den Ball auf die rechte Seite. Arenda ist da. Wirken jetzt stabiler mit Kayumi auf Center. Daniel Arenda von der Mitte leicht nach links versetzt, läuft er an, wirft den Ball. Friebel ist da, blockt ihn nach rechts zur Seite weg. Ins Haus. Und 
9 zu 4, 1 0 9 noch zu spielen im, in der ersten Halbzeit. Die Torrichterin bringt den Ball zurück, er wird rechts eingegeben. Christian King übernimmt den Ball, geht an der Latte entlang, halb rechts. Hat er die Latte im Rücken, läuft an, dreht der Linkshänder und dann Richtung Arenda. Der kriegt den Ball nach vorne geblockt, sammelt ihn dann ein. Nils Emig fordert den Ball, kriegt den Ball jetzt auch. Kommt auf halb links rüber, der rechts außen, läuft an, geht auf halb rechts wieder, wirft den Ball. Und da ist Dennis da, ohne Probleme. King lief dann auch dahinter für die Help Defense, muss aber überhaupt nicht. Und Michael Dennis vom linken Pfosten startet er einmal Diagonalball. Kayumi mit den Füßen da, klickt den Ball eingeklemmt. Spielt dann zu Emich, noch 43 Sekunden auf der Uhr. Nils Emich von halb rechts wirft den Ball. Friebel leicht auf den Bauch, kriegt den Ball trotzdem geblockt. Und noch 37 Sekunden auf der Uhr. Ball wird jetzt wieder von rechts eingegeben. Christian King hat den Ball. Vielleicht noch zwei Würfe für die Füchse Berlin. Und auch noch zwei für Marburg jetzt. Christian King von halb links, hoher Bounce, rechts knapp am Pfosten vorbei. Da hatte Arenda die Ecke aufgemacht, aber war dann doch nicht genau genug der Wurf von Christian King. Noch 30 Sekunden auf der Uhr. Und der Ball muss erstmal geholt werden da hinten. Jetzt wird er von der linken Seite wieder eingegeben. Daniel Arenda von halb links läuft direkt an mit dem ersten Kommando. Christian King hoch in die Luft und Tor. Ja, Arenda, irgendwie hat der mit seinen Bounces vielleicht so ein bisschen den Schlüssel gefunden. Gerade bei King jetzt das zweite Mal. Der Bounce ist das eine, aber den Spin, den er dann mitgibt, ja. dass der quasi mit Körperkontakt dann auf einmal so nach oben weg, über den Körper von King weg rollt, das war halt zweimal der Schlüssel. Und jetzt Nils Emi, ich kann da weiter verkürzen. Überhalb rechts wirft den Ball noch 14 Sekunden. Friebel hat den Ball noch 12 Sekunden. Michael Dennis übernimmt nochmal 10 Sekunden auf der Uhr. 9 Acht, sieben, der Ball wird geworfen, hoch über die Latte, abgewehrt. Four seconds to go, noch vier Sekunden in der ersten Halbzeit. Four seconds in the first half, nine, five, the score for the Füchse Berlin. Daniel Arenda kriegt den Ball von links eingegeben, läuft jetzt an. Drei, zwei, eins, er wirft gar nicht mehr. Das war die erste Halbzeit, das war äh, das 9 zu 5 zur ersten Halbzeit. Die Führung vielleicht ein bisschen knapp. Maybe the gap is not widened enough by the Füchse Berlin, but after the substitution of Kayumi, there was more stability on the side uh, ja. of uh, Blister Marburg. Ja, they, so they, a short summary in English now for everybody who's watching. They, they, they improved during the game. Maybe at the beginning they thought, well, what hit us there? The Füchse, they were re really up for it. They were really wanting to prove something about uh, after that unnecessary loss against Aarhus and they had always that little runs first three goals they scored then they went from 3-1 to 6-1 and then they also had two or three other runs but now it's uh, Marburg for the first time that they scored two consecutive goals R really Arenda found a few things and they closed that gap that Özdemir um, left in his corner where I think they conceded three or four goals Marburg so they are actually in a in a team um, in a in a squad on on the field where you just think well it's all right they they have found each other but Berlin still the slightly better team and they will th they have that that lead it's deserved of course Michael Dennis so far the key player it, because he has scored six of nine goals but also the scores from Christian King came to a well key time key moment and it's also working that um, uh, together with the center with Daniel Friebel so Berlin really improved but Marburg is they, they don't give in they give them a game And they have to um, stay strong, st stay consistent in the second half and really fight it out. Because Marburg, with that little run just before the break, they got a bit of confidence, I think. And they will try to just continue to fire already after, directly again after the break in all cylinders. And the next game, just to let you all know, 
will be Arhu's gold ball and they will play against GC Perun and that will be the same the same group so after that we will maybe know a bit more in the table looking at the playoff constellation just remember 10 teams fighting for three spots in the Champions League this weekend in Berlin the group winners are directly through the second and third placed they have to compete they have to battle it out in the playoffs which we will see on Sunday today we will have two games left tomorrow ten more and now we continue with the second half nine five no substitutions Marburg had the first wurf from half links kommt jetzt Daniel Arenda wenig täuscht an Arenda von halb links wirft die Linie lang Kien ist da kann den Ball im Spielfeld halten Kien über den rechten Pfosten orientiert aus Ball ist ausgeworfen will er die Linie entlang werfen aber kommt direkt ins Aus und der Ball jetzt hoch in die Luft das ist ein Tor das ist ein Tor für Daniel Ah, Render über die Hüfte von Friebel geht er hoch in die Luft und dann am Körper vorbei von dem Kollegen Christian King. Und jetzt Michael Dennis nochmal mit dem Versuch hoch in die Luft. Der Ball tritt auf. Kayumi kriegt ihn noch zu fassen zusammen mit Daniel Render. 9 zu 6 der Spielstand. Ball bei Christian King in den Händen. Bounce Ball, aber da ist Kayumi, kann den aufhalten. Und der nächste Versuch von Emich. Aufgehalten von Friebel. Dennis will jetzt eine Antwort mal finden. Lange keine Tore mehr von den Füchsen Berlin. Ja. Müssen langsam eine Antwort finden. Jetzt geht's Emich. Von halb rechts läuft an, dreht, wirft den Ball durch und das King da kann ihn blocken. Friebel sammelt ihn ein und über halb rechts jetzt. Nächster Versuch, Christian King bounced hoch, aber Kayumi ist da, kann den Ball einsammeln, bringt ihn zurück zu Daniel Arenda, der über halb links jetzt erneut ansetzt. Wieder hoher Bounce, Friebel ist da, blockt ihn nach vorne in neutrale Zone, Ball ist kurz vorm Aus, kann den Ball aber nicht mehr ganz vor dem Ausholen, der Farside Referee. Ist der Meinung, der war schon aus. Ja. Und deswegen Ball over. Also noch ein Wurf für Marburg, die so ein bisschen, ein bisschen Oberwasser haben. Die letzten drei Tore erzielt. Und jetzt der Ball in den Händen von Daniel Arenda von halb links. Kann er noch näher ran und den Anschluss vielleicht herstellen. Christian King mit dem Safe. Dann am Ende hält den Ball. Aber Christian King von links jetzt wieder die Linie lang Richtung Arenda ausgeblockt von Arenda und seinen Füßen. So ein bisschen, seit Kayumi drin ist, fehlt der Schlüssel. Ja, sie haben, den, sie haben den Code noch nicht geknackt, irgendwie. Und Arenda mit dem nächsten Wurf Richtung Christian King, der blockt ihn nach rechts ins Aus. Und Marburg robbt sich hier nach und nach ran. 10 Minuten 24 noch in der zweiten Halbzeit. Michael Dennis von halb links läuft an, wirft den Ball geradlinig Richtung Emich, der blockt ihn nach vorne weg. Kayumi sucht den Ball, hat den Ball bringt ihn schnell und klingt zu ihm nicht zurück und der von halb rechts hat mit dem nächsten Angriff Richtung Friebel hoch nach vorne aber weg und so Dennis sammelt den Ball ein am Pfosten ankommen hier Dennis vom Pfosten loslaufen gerade links Richtung Emich der blockt den Ball rechts ins Aus ja mit jedem Block wächst natürlich dann auch das Selbstvertrauen so nach dem Motto wir können das auch mit diesen zwei Top Nationalspielern Dennis ist keiner mehr aber er wäre wenn er wollte Arenda mit einem langen Wurf, aber da ist dann Dennis wieder da, kann ihn ablocken. Und Michael Dennis sucht Christian King. Nee, das ist jetzt Chefsache. Von halb links läuft er selber an, wirft den Ball auf die Schnittstelle Richtung Kayumi und Arenda Kayumi arbeitet nach links rüber, kann den Ball dann aufnehmen zu Arenda weitergeben, der von links startet. Wieder mit einem Bounce in die Ecke rein und da ist die Schulter von King noch da, der blockt den Ball zur Seite weg. Und nächster Versuch von Christian King. Jetzt will er Arenda dran bekommen, aber der blockt den Ball ins Aus. Hat so ein bisschen gerade was von einem Abnutzungskampf. Ja, genau. 
Wer blinzelt als Erster? Nils Emich von der Mitte fängt er an, läuft wieder so über halb rechts wahrscheinlich und dann der Ball nach halb links und dann ist da King, da hilft für Friebel aus. Friebel klopft auf den Ball, gibt ihn an. Michael Dennis, der läuft an, wirft den Ball gerade in Richtung Kayumi. Ins Tor hinein, über die Hände ja. von Arena. Knallt er den Ball da rein und hat den Schlüssel kurz gefunden und mit ganz viel Power kriegt er ihn dann durch Kayumi und Arenda hindurch. Der Ball jetzt auf der anderen Seite gehalten von Friebel. 10 zu 6, der Spielstand noch 9 Minuten 16 zu spielen. Und Auszeit Berlin. Ja. Yeah. Well, it, it started and just for until the last throw, it looked like Marburg really getting, crawling back into the game, really causing problems for for the host here, for Füchse Berlin, but then, how it's often happened in many, many years, Michael Dennis is the one finding it, getting through, scoring a goal, maybe the goal that will decide the game when we look back. Maybe what will that mean mentally for Marburg? How much will they suffer now? They have to find a quick answer. Und Michael Dennis von halb links direkt mit dem nächsten Wurf und gerade noch so ähnlich mit den Füßen dran, blockt die nach rechts zur Seite weg. 9 Minuten 12, 9 Minutes and 12 Seconds to go. 10 zu 6, 10 zu 6 vor Füchse Berlin. Nils Emich hat den Ball, geht jetzt rüber zu Arenda. Nee, der macht selber. Nils Emich geht, geht nicht ganz auf links rüber, startet von da, macht die Drehung, wirft den Ball und King hilft aus für Friebel. Und auf der Bank der Füchse wird die Faust geballt. Auf der rechten Seite jetzt Christian King mit einem Bounce Bar Richtung Kayumi hoch in die Luft. Der Ball ins. Nein, nämlich ist da mit der rechten Pranke. Schiebt er den Ball kurz vor der Linie noch zur Seite weg. Riesenaktion Stark. davon, Nils Emich. Ja, das ist tolles Teamwork. Zeigt, dass diese Mannschaft hier wirklich gemeinsam kämpft. Jeder für jeden. Daniel Render von der Mitte mit. Den Drehwurf Richtung King. King ist da. Und King in der zweiten Halbzeit noch nicht überwunden worden mhm. von der Ränder. Hat sich vielleicht besser darauf eingestellt. Michael Dennis von halb rechts Richtung Kayumi, aber der kann den Ball direkt einklemmen und übergibt an Nils Emich. Emich von der Mitte links ins Aus. Attacke auf die Füchsebank. Ja. Da wurde sich schon teilweise weggeduckt vom einen oder anderen, der da den Ball nur noch auf sich zu rollen hörte. Und Christian King vom rechten Pfosten steht bereit, läuft an, dreht, wirft und der Ball geblockt. Und Kayumi ist da, Kayumi zu Arenda, Arenda, Linie entlang und dann Christian King ist da. Nächster Versuch für die Füchse Berlin von halb rechts, diesmal Michael Dennis gerade linig in die Ecke rein. Nein, Arenda ist da, stark aufgepasst, lässt sich nicht übertölpeln wie noch in der ersten Halbzeit Östemir zweimal. Schiebt rüber, kickt ihn raus und da rennt er direkt mit dem Angriff ins Tor hinein. Quasi mit dem Play fängt ja. er an, das, den Ball zu werfen. Quasi das Play noch als Maskerade nutzend, als akustische. Ja, dass man ihn nicht anlaufen hört. Und knallt den Ball rein zum 7 zu 10 aus Sicht von Marburg. Noch 8, 05 auf der Uhr. Dennis mit dem Bouncer, der Ball geht ins Tor hinein. Ja, das das ist, ist doch mal eine Antwort. Kayumi kriegt ihn an die Beine, geht hoch in die Luft. Emich versucht dahinter zu schieben, kriegt ihn dann an seine Hüfte und von der Hüfte fällt er nicht nach vorne, sondern nach hinten ins Tor hinein. Arenda kann auch nicht mehr reparieren. Arenda jetzt mit dem Versuch gegen King kann aber nicht direkt antworten. Und nächster Versuch von Christian King Richtung Kayumi. Kayumi blockt den Ball nach links ins Aus. Die letzten sechs Berliner Tore kamen allesamt von Michael Dennis. Nils Emich von links läuft an, wirft Richtung Schnittstelle. Patrick äh, Christian King ist da mit den Füßen. Michael Dennis von halb links wirft den Ball, bounced Richtung Emich. Emich macht sich breit, schubst ihn raus auf die rechte Seite. Von da aus wird der Ball jetzt auch gleich wieder eingegeben. der Ball bei Emich, der läuft direkt wieder an. Jetzt versuchen sie dieses Play immer wieder auszunutzen, um das Anlaufen zu maskieren. Also sehr, sehr wach die Marburger da an der Stelle. Ja, das, also sie lassen es nicht auströpfeln, wie man es bei dem Spielstand jetzt könnte. 
7-11 der Spielstein Christian King von der rechten Seite Richtung Kayumi geblockt. Ewig auch mit dabei und Auszeit Marbe genommen. 7 minutes and 23 seconds to go in the second half. 11-7 for Füchse Berlin. And uh, we see a real good fight from both teams. Yeah, the Füchse, they have the upper hand. They always find an answer, but they can't shake Marburg completely off. And, and like you just said in German, they had that two or three actions now where they really were already starting the action um, and, and throwing directly after play. And it's difficult to... Um, to get used to that as a defense because you hear that play and the ball is, is coming already and, and they are focused they don't want to gift they don't want to make gifts they, they say we will fight we will give you a fight until the end and it doesn't matter how the score is Daniel Rinder mit dem Tor das wird genau Stefan Weil freuen hoher langer weiter Bouncer und sie finden kein Rezept gegen dieses es war ja wieder so schnell abgeschlossen 8 zu 11 und 3 dahinter. Kayumi pusht jetzt Nils Emich, der gerade gehalten hat. Nils Emich von der Mitte versucht wieder noch näher ranzukommen. Der Ball von Friebel abgewehrt. Übergibt einmal an Christian King. Vom rechten Pfosten läuft er an Richtung Kayumi. Der blockt den Ball nach vorne weg, kriegt den Ball eingesammelt, sucht seinen Mitspieler, den Daniel Render, der von halb links Vier Sekunden. leicht nach links versetzt. Anläuft, wirft wieder einen hohen Bounce. Friebel, diesmal landet er auf dem Ball, weil fast wieder über den Ball gehüpft, wie eben bei dem Tor. 6,48 noch zu spielen. Michael Dennis. Jetzt Richtung Kayumi, hoch rechts rausgekickt, kriegt die Schnittstelle zwischen Emich und Kayumi nicht, weil die sie zugemacht haben. Es ist stark, also wie die sich hier pushen. Da ist natürlich immer die Frage, überdrehen sie dann irgendwann? Und wieder mit dem Play der Wurf. Michael Dennis jetzt direkt mit dem Gegenangriff. Emich auf den Posten. Kayumi kurz vor der neutralen Zone sammelt den Ball ein, gibt, gibt halb rechts an Emich. Emich mit der Drehung. Jetzt Richtung Friebel wieder geworfen. Er kriegt den Ball. Dann ja, doch wird auch mal einen Treffer gut tun, Emich. Ja. Jetzt der Ball über halb links von Christian King auf die rechte Seite gespielt. Und Arenda gerade noch da und vom Rücken von Kayumi in die Hände von Arenda gefallen der Ball. Und Arenda jetzt von der Mitte aus kommt, dreht wieder, wieder mit dem Bounce, diesmal flacher, Friebel auf den Posten, Friebel sucht den Ball, Friebel hat den Ball, bringt ihn zurück zu Michael Dennis. Michael Dennis von halb links läuft an, wirft den Ball auf die rechte Seite, Kayumi ist da, hüpft da in den Ball rein und nächster Versuch für Daniel Arenda, noch 5,57 auf der Uhr. Daniel Arenda wieder langer Bounce, die Linie entlang, Christian King hält den Ball im Spielfeld und Christian King, der amerikanische Nationalspieler Richtung Kayumi, der kommt aber wieder dahinter mit seinem Körper und übergibt an Nils Emich von der Mitte aus starten mit der Drehung, wieder Richtung Friebel geworfen, den Center, den wollen sie jetzt hier sturmreif schießen von den Füchsen Berlin und er blockt den Ball ins Aus. Oh ja, und das Ding ist, wenn die Füchse jetzt wechseln würden, den anderen Center Tauscher bringen würden, hätten sie halt wieder den größten Nachteil und das würde halt die Dynamik auch verändern. Und wenn du das so lässt, dann musst du halt zu dritt dieses intensive Spiel durchspielen. Und das ist, das ist auch kein Zuckerschlecken. Michael Dennis jetzt mit dem Ball die Linie lang. Emich ist da. Drei Tore noch der Vorsprung. Wirkt komfortabel. Kann sich schnell drehen. Noch 5,25 liegt Emich von der Mitte aus Richtung King. Der Ball gehalten. Jetzt auch gefunden. Und Christian King geht zurück an die Latte. Wirft den Ball. Als Bouncer rutscht durch, aber Emich in der Halbdefense ist da, rettet für Kayumi. Und Arenda auf halb links jetzt in Position, wieder mit einem hohen Bounce wie eben schon. Und diesmal Friebel da mit dem Oberschenkelball, rollt langsam ins Aus nach rechts und ist jetzt. Ja, zwischen drei und vier Sekunden haben sie schon von der zehn Sekunden Uhr verloren. Five minutes, one second to go. Christian King with the next throw. Out of bounds. Ja, 11-8 the score. And now back to German. So, die Füchse Berlin wieder in der Defense gefordert. Wir sehen Michael Dennis, der an der 3-Meter-Linie ist, genauso wie Friebel. Dagegen Christian King auf 1,50 sich einsortierend. Also schon rechts und zentral sehr offensiv aufgebaut. Und King eher so ein bisschen dahinter, um vielleicht die Help-Defense auch zu spielen. Also in der über halb links läuft an, läuft den Ball Richtung King, die Seite entlang. Und King ist da mit den Händen. Oder er möchte halt diesen Bouncern von Arenda entgehen, wo ja. er in der ersten Halbzeit mitbekommen wurde. Ja, ich meine, äh, je weiter du hinten bist, klar. Aber desto weniger kannst du halt dann auch noch reagieren. Ne? 
Dabei war nicht Dennis auf halb links, wirft den Ball nach rechts rein, aber da ist Arenda da, kann den Ball einsammeln. Weiterhin 11 zu 8, 4 Minuten 40 auf der Uhr. Und Arenda von halb links wirft den Ball jetzt wieder Richtung Christian King, der kriegt den Ball geblockt und eingesammelt. Und war wieder super viel Effekt drin in diesem Ball. Christian King von der rechten Seite Richtung Emich, kriegt den Ball kontrolliert und Emich von der Mitte aus mit der Drehung wirft den Ball Richtung King und King ist dran, kann den Ball holen, fragt, wo ist der Michael? Und da ist der Michael Dennis, der nimmt den Ball wieder und dann der Spruch in die Schnittstelle, aber Kayumi, der kommt rüber. Christian King vielleicht auch ein bisschen müde gewesen nach den drei, vier Würfen nacheinander, wollte dann Dennis wieder abgeben. Friebe findet in der Offensive genauso wie Kayumi eigentlich gar nicht statt. Das heißt, die Hauptwürfe werden wirklich von den Außen bei beiden Mannschaften hier geführt. Ball ist ausgeblockt von Friebe. Aber du hast halt nicht nur einen Außen, der da wirbeln muss. Das ist dann doch nochmal ein bisschen Entlastung. Jetzt der Ball von Kayumi geblockt. Michael Dennis muss jetzt äh, sich auch wieder Richtung Latte begeben. Da Stefan Weil, der Trainer von der SSG Blister Marburg, eine Auszeit genommen hat. Timeout bei Blister Marburg. 11, 9, 11, 8. 11, 8, the score. Short summary, what do you expect, or not summary, what do you expect from the last three minutes and 50 seconds here in this uh, German clash, Marburg against Füchse Berlin? Well, Marburg will throw everything in. They will still, Stefan Weil, with, with his experience, will give them some ideas, and Michael Dennis uh, on the other side will throw his experience in. I just have the feeling that it won't be enough, I, I think, The advantage for Füchse will be will be enough to get to get it done, and they will um, find a way. Nehme ich mit dem nächsten Versuch von Friebel nach vorne weggeblockt. Friebel sammelt ihn ein. Noch 3:45 auf der Uhr. Langsam wird auch die Zeit ein Faktor. Mm. Und Christian King mit dem Wurf in die Ecke knapp am linken Pfosten vorbei. Von rechts nach links der Diagonalball. Emich macht sich lang, aber muss der am Ende gar nicht, weil der Ball ins Ausgeht. Elf. 3 Minuten und 3 Sekunden, 11 zu 8, der Spielstand. Ball in den Händen von Daniel Arenda, der ist auf halb rechts, geht jetzt nach halb, halb links rüber. Dieses bei Play anlaufen haben sie jetzt erstmal wieder eingestellt. Vielleicht kommt dieser Kniff nochmal. Und jetzt Christian King wird übertölpelt wieder ui, ui, ui. mit dem Bouncer. Wieder Daniel Arenda und er schafft es unter dem Körper von King, der schon so weit hinten ist, zu sein. 9 zu 11, der Spielstand. Christian King und Michael Dennis diskutieren da gerade. Und der hat halt jetzt auch schon sieben oder acht Dinger versenkt, Arenda. Das muss man auch mal ganz klar sagen. Ist der Wahnsinn, Spiel von ja. Arenda da auf der linken Seite. Also er zeigt hier das, was der Bundestrainer, äh, der jetzt gerade auch sein Trainer bei Marburg ist, was der auch schon mehrfach gesagt hat, das ist ein, ein großes Talent, der eine große Zukunft haben kann. Ich habe den auch mit 14, 15 Jahren schon gesehen und damals gedacht, was kann der bouncen? Ist in Ilbesheim groß geworden. Ja, genau, hat in Ilbesheim bei Jugend trainiert, damals auch gespielt. Aber in Marburg gehst du halt früher oder später vielleicht hin wegen der äh, schulischen Ausbildung. Also sogar ein Olli Hörauf, soweit ich weiß, war da mal. Und dabei war Michael Dennis noch 3,29, 3,29 to play. Michael Dennis von der Halblinken läuft an, wirft den Ball, Emich ist da. Und Marburg hat jetzt einfach Oberwasser von der Mitte. Emich mit einem langen Bouncer, Friebel mit dem Block in die, an die Seite und kriegt den Ball noch gerade, sonst wäre es ein Ball over gewesen. Übergibt an Christian King, der von halb links ansetzt, wirft den Ball einmal diagonal. Emich kriegt den Ball über den Körper. Nein, Emich ist da, Emich ist da und übergibt dann an Arenda. Arenda von der linken Seite wieder der Bouncer Richtung Friebel, geblockt der Ball nach vorne weg. Friebel sucht den Ball, hat den Ball und kloppt auf den Ball, gibt ihn an Michael Dennis, der geht an den linken Pfosten. Er setzt seinerseits wieder neu an den Ball, Richtung Schnittstelle gespielt und Kayumi macht zu, Kayumi macht zu und übergibt jetzt den Ball an Emich. Emich von der halbrechten Seite zu Friebel, Friebel blockt den Ball. 32 noch zu spielen, 2.35 to go. Und nächster Versuch jetzt hier für Michael Dennis von halb links, wirft den Ball Emich, blockt ihn rechts ins Haus. 2.26, 2.26 to go. Yeah. And it's for both the last game for today, so they can leave everything they have here on the field. Daniel Render, schauen wir drauf. Richtung Christian King. Christian King ist da. Kann den Ball holen. Und Christian King mit dem Gegenangriff. Kayumi mit den Füßen. Hat er den Ball eingeklemmt. 
2.15 noch zu spielen. 2.10 to play. Arende wieder mit dem Bouncer. Friebel ist da, kann den Ball blocken. Und Arenda macht den Füchsen Probleme in der Defense. Michael Dennis von der linken Seite läuft an. Ein wenig Entlastung würde gut tun. Aber Ach, die das Tor nicht mehr scheint wie vernagelt zu sein aus Sicht der Füchse. Marburg macht das richtig stark in der Defense. Arenda mit einem hohen Bouncer Richtung King. King diesmal da, weil der Bouncer Geschwindigkeit verliert. 1.45 to go. 1.45 noch. Christian King von halb links Richtung Kayumi. Und Arenda rettet dann. Kommt in die Mitte rein. Kann den Ball fangen. 1.37. 35 to go, Arenda, hoher Bouncer Richtung Dennis und der Dennis kriegt da gerade noch die Fingerspitzen dran und der Ball geht ins ja. Aus, der war wieder zu weit eingerückt, aber er rettet sich gerade noch so und folgerichtig nimmt die Bank der Füchse eine Auszeit, um erstmal durchzuschnaufen. Ja. Short timeout after this spectacular save from the Füchse Berlin. 1.32 to go, 11.9 the score. Yeah, I think for both teams there should be one time out left. So interesting to see also the, like I said, the battle of the coachings. Who can give a better advice for these last moments and for the Füchse? It, it, for me, it seemed like they just wanted to stop again the pressure they were under, just taking the momentum away from the former 11 times German national champion. Halb links, Michael Dennis hat den Ball in den Händen. 1,30 auf die Uhr, 130 to go. Michael Dennis mit dem Wurf. Kayumi blockt den Ball, hat ihn jetzt auch sicher. Die Uhr tickt. Über links, Daniel Arenda. 1,20, 120 to go. Daniel Arenda, hoher Bounce Richtung Friebel. Er landet auf den Ball, klemmt ihn unter der Hüfte ein. Und Christian King hat den Ball. Natürlich wird jetzt ein bisschen Zeit von der Uhr genommen. Christian King in die Ecke. Nils Emich ganz solide da in seiner Ecke. Lässt sich nicht übertölpeln. Und Tauscher. Der Auswechselspieler mit einem Bein außerhalb der Coaching-Zone gibt da Anweisungen an seine Mannen für die Füchse Berlin. Während Stefan Wall ganz ruhig dasteht, eine Hand so gerichtet ist, dass er die Gegenseite nicht hören kann, was er reinflüstert seinen Marburger Spielern. Und jetzt Nils Emich von der linken Seite läuft an, dreht den Ball und der Ball ist drin. Ist drin. Und ausgerechnet ist jetzt ist Emich da. Also... Ist ja schon die ganze Zeit da, aber ein Tor hat noch gefehlt. 11 zu 10. Wir oh. haben ein offenes Spiel. Unfassbar. Ein offenes Spiel haben wir hier. 11 zu 10. 1 0 3 zu spielen. One point. One minute and three seconds to go. Michael Dennis jetzt mit dem Versuch. Kommt wieder ein Emich nicht vorbei. Der kickt den Ball dann raus nach rechts ins Aus. Und Kayumi jetzt da unten, der emotionale Leader pusht seine Jungs immer wieder nach vorne. Ja, es reißt dann fast hier auch von den Sitzen, muss ich sagen. Und wieder so ein... Ja. Das ist nicht leicht mit dem Füchsen. wie man im Englischen <lacht> so schön sagt. Ja, hier ist die Spannung da. Arenda schafft er den Ausgleich. Der Wurf kommt. Christian King kriegt den geblockt. Ins Aus. Ball im Aus. 53.2 Seconds. 53,2 Sekunden noch auf der Uhr. Christian ja. King hat den Ball. Übergibt an Michael Dennis. Die Uhr läuft. Michael Dennis steht bereit. Läuft jetzt an. Wird den Ball rechtzeitig los als Bouncer Richtung Emich. Der geht nach vorne weg ins Aus. 42.9 Seconds. 42,9 Sekunden noch zu spielen. Ja, drei Würfe auf beiden Seiten könnten noch drin sein. Daniel Arenda übernimmt jetzt Verantwortung. Kommt von halb links wieder mit einem hohen Bounce. Long Bounce. Oh nein, in diesem Moment. Jetzt kommt der Fehler. Das ich wollte gerade sagen, wir hatten so lange keine Penalties. Oh. Wird der Deckel drauf gemacht oder holt sich Blister Marburg hier den absoluten Emotionspush? Arenda vorne an die 6 Meter Linie zentral gegen Dennis. Dennis in die Ecke ins Tor hinein. Eiskalt wie eine Hundeschnauze. Und Michael ja. Dennis knallt den Ball da ins Tor. Sehr zur Freude der Füchse Berlin-Fans die sich hier auf der Tribüne eingefunden haben. Ach, der alte Mann hat es immer wieder gemacht. Der alte Mann und der Ball, wie wir yeah. beim ersten Spiel gesagt haben. Mhm. Der Fortsetzungsroman in wie vielen Teilen, ich weiß es nicht. Ja, wir wissen schon, wer das Hörbuch macht. Nils Emich von halb rechts wirft den Ball jetzt diagonal hoch über. Nee, Friebel hat den Ball dann doch. 40,7 Sekunden noch auf der Uhr. Die Uhr läuft. Michael Dennis läuft an, wirft den Ball und der Ball ist jetzt geblockt. Zwei Tore Rückstand. Einmal von Blister Marburg genommen. 
30,8 Sekunden noch zu spielen. Und oh my. what do you think? Yeah. Two goals down, no. 30.8 seconds to play. Was the penalty the dagger? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was always that thing like maybe this one mistake could come, but they were so, so in, so, um, so really, I, I thought, well, if there would have been mistakes, could have been earlier, but this one mistake, yes, long ball and Michael Dennis also, you have to stand there, you have to take that moment in that pressure situation and score the goal for your team. And he is the one, he has done it so many times and he did it again. He is the match winner. 30,8 Sekunden an der Rinder, vielleicht mit dem letzten Versuch, aber Friebel ist da, lockt den Ball sehr zur Freude seiner Mitspieler, die ihn laut anfeuern. Christian King, 22 seconds, 20 Sekunden jetzt noch Christian King Richtung Emich. Emich ist da und Auswechslung bei den Marburgern, um Zeit zu stoppen. Das heißt, Nils Emich geht runter und die Nummer 3, das müsste Kürschert Özdemir sein, kommt wieder rauf. Ja, ja, genau. Dass der vielleicht nochmal einen Wurf kriegt, dass der nochmal was... Ah, einen Wurf kriegt er, glaube ich, nicht. Da würde ich mich jetzt mal aus dem Fenster lehnen. Den wird Daniel Arenda nehmen. Ja. Der kriegt nämlich gerade Anweisung von Stefan Ball da draußen. Also gehe ich fest davon aus, Daniel Arenda wird diesen Wurf nehmen. Und vielleicht mit seinem hohen Bounce hier nochmal 17 von 4 Sekunden ranzukommen. Daniel Arenda geht jetzt über. Die Zeit läuft, Junge. Der Ball jetzt auf der linken Seite wirft den Ball, er bounced, er bounced in die Arme und jetzt kann man eine Auszeit ja. nehmen als Berlin. Und das Interessante an der Stelle ist, weil sich Arenda so viel Zeit lässt, können sie die Zeit jetzt auslaufen lassen. Ja, Acht genau Sekunden das. nur noch auf der Uhr, es waren 17, denn da musst du doch den Wurf in drei, vier Sekunden wegkriegen. Ja, ich habe jetzt auch überlegt, also sie hatten doch vorhin mal dieses, dass sie schon vor dem Play angelaufen sind. Ähm, das hatte sich dann irgendwann abgenutzt, aber... Jetzt ist ja wieder Zeit dazwischen gewesen. Also da hätte man dann noch mal, bin ich auch der Meinung, das noch mal versuchen können. Ähm, so tröpfelt das jetzt aus. Jetzt werden sie vielleicht keinen Wurf mehr machen. Und ja, Michael Dennis, vielleicht schon mal die deutsche Zusammenfassung. Äh, der neun Treffer von zwölf. Also das musste er auch mal so spielen und die ganzen Rückschläge wegstecken und immer wieder eine Antwort finden. Bravo. Und Christian King doch nochmal mit einem Wurf Richtung Özdemir. Der kriegt den Ball. Two seconds, one seconds. And game is over. Spiel ist vorbei, game is over. And now we will switch back into English. 12-10, the victory for Füchse Berlin in their last game today. So they have one win, one loss today. And they will play tomorrow against Perun from the Czech Republic and from Hammerby from... Sweden and the next game will be in seven minutes. The game between Aarhus Goalball and GC Perun. And um, yeah, it was a great match. Yes, it was what we like to see in Goalball. It was just so many throws and so many tension during the second half. Will Marburg uh, completely turn it? But the Füchse, well, two national or former national team players and the experience showed in the end. So we will we will make a short break and Björn Nass and Christoph Scholz will be back. No, yes, so yes, we'll be back with <laughs> the next game. Aarhus Goalball against GC Perun, and then afterwards this last game of the day, Chemnitzer BC against uh, GC Nixic. Stay tuned. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. 
mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde, weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. 
Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Welcome back to the EGCA Champions League in Goalball in Berlin Reinickendorf, the home of the Füchse Berlin. And we are waiting for the next match. This and one more match for today are the last matches. And we are waiting for Aarhus Goalball versus. GC Perun from the Czech Republic, or who is from Denmark. And for you on the microphones, there are Björn Nass and Christoph Scholz. And the players are preparing themselves. The equipment is checked, and we will check the lineups. We got on the left side in the yellow blue jerseys, there is Perun with the number two in the center is Martin Josifek with the number six on the right wing, Peter Schweiner and with the number eight on the left wing, Jan Bozek. And on the other side, there is Aarhus Goalball from Denmark with the left wing, Silas Fries. In the center, number eight, Matthias Jensen. And on the right wing, number nine, Gustav Koch and Perun is starting this match from the right wing down the line. Hard ball, but blocked by Silas Fries. And Silas Fries in the black jersey, like his teammates, trying the ball down the line as well, but directly on Jan Bozek, who can block the ball, and it's blocked out. Blocked out over the line, and Jan Bozek with the next try with the next attack, ball over. Good defense by feet from Matthias Jensen. And again, the ball in the hands of Jan Bozek, giving the ball to Martin Josifek, who's going to the left side. This ball in his right hand, down the line, over the line. Ball was going out. And now Koch has the possibility for Arhus to take the next throw. Jensen on center, Fries Hansen are both on the floor. And so we see Koch standing there on the right. He now spins and down, down the line. Very, very high this ball was, but Josifek is there. Josifek, the left winger, starts again, throws the ball. Jensen is there. Jensen is looking for Fries Hansen. Fries Hansen from the half left, spins, high bouncing ball, out. Josifek didn't have to touch the ball. And now Jan Bozek, the Czech giant, stands behind him. More than two meters in size, he comes out on the right side. And then faked attempt, then he just throws the ball, and Jensen is there, blocks it, and finds the ball. Brings it back to Gustav Koch. Koch now to Schweiner. Peter Schweiner with the ball, the center pass to Bozek. A little surprise now brings the ball bouncing over to the other side. But there's Jensen. Jensen to Koch from the half right. Plays the ball down the line. And there is Josifek, Martin Josifek, the left winger with the next throw. Down to Koch. He blocks the ball to the right. And so next attempt for Gustav Koch. 
going to Fries Hansen. Fries Hansen from half left starts, throws. Schweiner is there, blocks the one neutral zone. So we have a ball over. Ball over. So ball next attack for Aarhus Goldbar. Gustav Koch, man with the number nine, changing to the half right from his right wing. And the ball is coming cross to the half left, but blocked by Jan Bozik. Jan Bozik taking the ball in his right hand, spinning around. The ball is bouncing hard right from the chest of Matthias Jensen. Handing the ball to Silas Fries Hansen. And so the ball goes from one to the other side. No goals until now. We got two minutes played already. Ball is bouncing. Ball is going up in the sky. But then it's blocked and catched and official timeout because of Jan Bozik, who has to fix his shoes. To clo he has to close his shoes. The referee was seeing it. And so we got the next attack for Gustav Koch from the right side, going to the line, to the post, and the ball is coming down the line, but blocked on the left side. It was bouncing a little bit, and then Jan Bozik is there, can take the ball and can take the next attack directly to Matthias Jensen, giving the ball to Koch, Koch with the next attack. The ball was losing some power, and so no problem for Peter Schweiner. Ball over to Martin Josephek. Half cross ball from the left wing to the half right. And now again, or who is but the ball is next to the post. No goal. Again, no goal and still no goal. About three minutes left. No, three, three minutes gone. So we got a little bit more than nine minutes left in this first half. And the ball will be given to. Peron on the left side, ball is given to Jan Bozik, who is going into the center, bouncing the ball once, and with his right hand, after spinning around, he tries the attack through the center, but no problem for Matthias Jansen. Jensen, handing the ball over to Gustav Koch, and ball is out. Ball, the ball was out, was trying to take a half cross ball from the center to the half left but that was too cross and the ball was going outside the pitch so no no problem and the next attack for Peru from the left side Josephek with the ball into the net first goal 1-0 for Peru Martin Josephek man with the number two on the left Wing is the man who scores first in this match. And now the respond. No, your Josephek can secure the ball at the end with going over Schweiner. And now the next attempt by Boschek. But Jensen and Koch are there from the half right. Gustav Koch again to Josephek. Josephek bounds now, doesn't block it out from the left side. The score from the 1 0. Josephek again, but without any power in his throw. Jensen without problems, Fries Hansen, high bouncing ball to Josie Fag, and he blocks it to his left outside. And so the blue and yellow dressed goalball club Perun has now the ball, and Jan Bozik takes it from the left post. He spins, he throws down the line, but there's Koch, and blocks the ball and catches the ball even. And so Koch with the next attempt to the center, but there's Peter Schweiner, and Schweiner number six takes the ball back, takes it, and is falling on the knees again. And uh, this is sometimes really hard for the defense to hear because if he's down on his knees, he makes noise. So it's really close also to a noise penalty when you have really, really strict referees. Now the next attempt by Boschek. But great save there by Koch. Bounces it to the right side and now gets the ball back from the right. And 1 0 the score for Peru. Bouncing ball, Schweiner is there and he blocks it to his right and out of bounds. 
7.30 to go in the first half. 1-0 the score. And Moshek runs from the left side with the play. He puts the ball in. It's over the crossbar. Deflected by Jensen. And his knees up in the air and over the crossbar. That was an attempt. That was the same thing Marburg did in the last game. Starting with quiet, please, running. And with play, you're allowed to throw the ball. So you masquerade your attempt where you come from. Now Fries Hansen with the next try, but blocked out to the left by Jossi Feck. 7.22 to go in the first half. And now from the left, the ball is given back into the field. Jossi Feck now starts, takes his time. With the right arm, he swings through, but it's blocked out to the right by the center Jensen. And so Koch from the right side now with a spin down the line. Jossi Feck is there. Jossi Feck gets it. Jossi Feck with the counter attack down the line. Koch is there. Ball is out, blocked out. And Koch from the right side with a spin. Bouncing ball. Schweiner has no problems to catch it. Pass to Bosak. Jan Bosak from the half right spins, throws st uh, straight ahead to Jensen, but from his fingers the ball goes into the arms of Koch. Fries Hansen with the next attempt, bouncing ball, and Josie Feck helps out for Schweiner. Josie Feck, the left winger, again from the crossbar starting from the half left, bounces the ball to Koch, but Koch has no problem. Not many balls went to Fries Hansen so far. They try to get. Koch on defense, maybe exhaust him a bit, I don't know. Jan Bozek again to Jensen, and Jensen blocks it out to the left. 6.22 to go. 1-0 the score for Perun. Still just one goal, and Aarhus is to attack next, coming with Silas Fries Hansen. right hand and playing the ball over the line outside of the pitch so no no chance for a goal and the ball is given to Joseph Heck. Joseph Heck waiting for it taking it coming on the half left searching the crossbar and then the ball comes and oh I guess that was a I guess that was a high ball but the referee didn't see it was walking into the neutral zone, then bouncing the ball. In my eyes, very clear high ball, but no penalty and the attack from Aarhus, but already also no goal. It's Jan Bozek from the right side. Ball is coming across into the s into the center, a little bit to the half left. Also blocked. The next attack for Aarhus. Ball blocked with the feet. It's going over the line, but it's blocked out, no ball over, and the next attack for Perun. Five minutes, 44 to go. Ball is bounced on the floor, and Josie Fag taking the ball. Ball is coming directly to Matthias Jensen, taking the ball to Silas Fries. Hansen and the ball on the line, on the line. It was Josie Fag who could catch the ball in the last second on the line directly. Ball is going over the line and timeout for Aarhus. Goal ball. And so both teams are coming together. Both coaches can have some words for them. All of them can have something to drink in this warm gym here. It is really warm. <laughs> also, the Montenegrin team from Nixic uh, asked, uh, can you cool it down a little bit? Uh, it's really warm in here. Um, and uh, if we look at uh, the tableau of Pool B, it's interesting f either for Marburg and for the Füchse Berlin, because Perun and Aarhus are in their group. That is the third match for both teams today. Aarhus won both against the Füchse and against uh, Hammerby so far. So the Fix and Marburg will press the thumbs for the, and now there's a goal made by Arhus Gustav Koch. Koch. 
Presses up for Perun, I wanted to say, but now there's the equalizer. 1-1 one, one the score. And Jan Bozek from half left tries to find the gap again to Koch. No throws to Friesensen, as I can remember, really. Jensen and Koch always get the balls. And now the throw by Gustav Koch, blocked out by Schweiner to the left. And the ball is now handed over to Josef Heck by the goal judge. 5.04 to go. Josef Heck from the left throws the ball to Fries Hansen, and the ball is deflected in the arms of Fries Hansen. And now from the left, Fries Hansen bounce ball. Schweiner doesn't get the ball, but Bojek is there. Jan Bojek from the half right, the main attacker, starts, spins, throws down the line, and there's Fries Hansen standing up fast, but then slows down. And from the half left again, Gustav Koch. Koch to you, Josef Heck to the right. Josef Heck blocks the ball. Ball is grabbed by him, going back to the crossbar. From the half left, he starts again. And the ball goes down the line. There's Koch. Koch with a counter attack. Josef Heck is in position. So now the ball in the hands of Perun player number two, Martin Josef Heck. Josef Heck with the next try, but there's Jensen as on center. And Jensen. From the middle, starts again, spins, throws the ball. Schweiner can catch the ball, and then again a counter attack, falling on his knees. Silas Fries Hansen is there, and from the half right now, Fries Hansen down the line. Josef Fack problems with it, but then the ball is collected by Jan Bozek and Josef Bozek from the half left starts, spins, bouncing ball, and it's saved by Gustav Koch. Great save by him. Yeah, the ball was blocked out. So it has to be picked up again. And we got a moment, and the players have got a moment to think about the next attack. So it's Gustav Koch going to the left side. The ball is coming down the line. No goal was blocked by Jan Bozek with his fingertips. The ball was going next to the post. That was very, very tight. That was a very good ball by Gustav Koch. Down the line was going to the left corner of the goal, but Jan Bozek saved it and placed the ball next to the goal, directly over the line. And he nearly hits the goal judge who catches the ball. And now it's Silas Fries Hansen. Ball is blocked and Perun has to hurry up a little bit. Bozek with the ball in his hands. Ball is coming cross and blocked by Gustav Koch. Ball blocked out. Gustav Koch picks it up, takes it to the right side. Ball down the line into the net. It was Gustav Koch with a 2-1. His second goal down the line. Ball was bouncing and under the body of Josefek. It goes into the net. So the lead for Aarhu, Josef Heck with the next ball. Again, really tight to a high ball. Was very near the line. And the next attack and the next goal and the next goal. And it was Silas Fries Hansen with a 3-1. From the left side, cross ball played and the ball inside the goal. So a quick response on that attack of Perun and now Jan Bozek is throwing the ball outside. They were standing yeah, on their feet, you could say in German like that, because there was Josef Heck and Jan Bozek wanted to go on the left side and then they yeah, like crashed a little bit and so the time was running and running and there was no time left and so Jan Bozek said to himself okay I have to throw the ball away next attack for Perun ball is blocked out still a 3-1 two minutes and 37 seconds left in his first half and the ball in the hands of Fries Hansen Slightly to the left, around the middle he starts, he spins, and the ball bounces sh into the belly of Schweiner. Schweiner again with this counter-attack by falling in front, even on his knees, but no power there behind the throw. Jensen now with a swinging attempt, but Schweiner is there, and the ball 
is passed back and Josephek goes out of the way of Bozek. Bozek now with the throw into the net. 2-3 the score, Bozek under the body of Jensen. The ball slips through. Gustav Koch has the response. Now it's blocked. And now Bozek is left winger. And Josephek as right winger. Josephek from the right side down the line to Fries Hansen. He's there. Gets the ball. Stands up. Slightly from the left, brings the ball from the middle into the net. He finds the gap. Josie Fack is too far in the middle. There was just a gap between the post and his shoes for a ball size. And this narrow hole, Fries Hansen gets. And so the ball is in 4 2 for Aarhus. Goal ball, 146 to go. Jan Bozek on the left side, hard again. Jensen is down. Gets the ball, gives it to Fries Hansen. 136 to go. Next ball by Fries Hansen, collected by Schweiner. Schweiner, no fast attack. No, no, no. He goes back to the crossbar from the middle. He spins, he throws, and then the ball is in the hands of Gustav Koch. 122 to go. And one and the ball by Gustav Koch to Bozek from left to right. 117 to go. And Jan Bozek stands up half right at the Crossbar starts, spins, and the ball is saved by Jensen. 104 to go. Next try by Fries Hansen, and the ball is inside from the left to the right in the corner. Josie Fag is back on the left wing and is punished again by Fries Hansen. 5 2 4 Ahu's go ball. 54 seconds to go. And the ball is out by Bozek from right to left. This cross ball, 50 seconds to go in the first half here. And the goal judge brings the ball back in from the right winger position. Gustav Koch takes it in his hands. And so the clock is running from the middle. Gustav Koch, fast ball down the middle, but there is Schweiner, Schweiner to Josifak on the half left. He starts, he spins, he throws, and there's Jensen again, and Jensen gets the ball grabbed. 30 seconds to go. Fries Hansen now to a high ball. High ball, long ball. It was, uh, of course, a penalty against Fries Hansen. Looked a little bit scooped, this one. So penalty now. Fries Hansen at the six meter line. Standing in the center there. And Josie Fack should take it or does Bozek take it? Bozek gets the ball in his hand. Bozek standing in the middle. Play is caught. He's waiting. Bozek is now running, spinning, turning, and inside the net. Three sons and has the right corner, has the right corner. But Bozek's throw was too powerful in the left corner and so next goal 3-5 just two goals down 23 seconds to go Gustav Koch from the right post with the bouncing ball there's Schweiner Schweiner gets the ball 70 seconds to go Schweiner goes back and again with his throw he's throwing the ball to the right side Fries Hansen is there 9 seconds to go Fries Hansen from the left post 6 seconds to go Fries Hansen with the spin down the line there's Bozek 5 seconds 2 seconds to go 1 second to go and this was the first half 5-3 the scoreboard for Aarhus goal ball against the goal ball club from Peru and uh, so far maybe we have the short possibility to uh, give uh, Michael Dennis uh, short wor words here just come right next to me. Michael Dennis. Michael Dennis, uh, right next to me. Füchse Berlin, 1-12-10 against Blister Marburg. Was a hack of a game, was a nail biter, but uh, you were not so happy uh, about uh, the large lead that you nearly lost. Right? Uh, absolutely. I don't know what's wrong with us this weekend, but um, we still have to fix our defense because the, the kind of goals we're giving up are too simple.
because they are more like straight balls and like yeah they may be dead in the air for a little while but um, we need to be capable of defending those and if, especially if they're thrown straight at us uh, that is a ball which an kind of annoys me um, if we give up like probably six or seven of those there were a couple of good ones like Niels had a great one where like he picked up the ball on our left and ran to the right and like blew it in our gap like that was a good one like great great move but there were too many simple goals. And now, uh, great to have you with me here because we want to say thank you to all the supporters like Profil Beton that are supporting us, like the Berlin Freunde Foundation. We have now their logos on the screen. Helpix.net, so working assistance, Together Strong, and myvplimo.de, first class limousine service here in Berlin, made all the shuttles. The media partner, that's us, Bena Consulting, and Berlina, Berliner Brewery, Berliner Pilsner, we want to mention because without all these and the Ibis Hotel, of course, with all this, this great tournament wouldn't be here in Berlin. Right, Michael? All of us uh, who are hosting global competitions know without supporters and, and funding uh, events like these are absolutely not possible. So, Michael... Then uh, after two exhausting matches uh, and uh, dinner is uh, getting ready, I will let you go to I dinner. To, I have to steal your co-commentator for and a second. And you get my okay. co-commentator, and I, I saw what you want. <laughs> uh, you get my co-commentator for two minutes, so I'll go into the second half. Thank you, Michael, for joining us, and You're see welcome. you later. And you can hear and see him tomorrow as well. So stay tuned and come back tomorrow. Now, back here into the game, Arhus Goalballs leading 5-3 against the Goalball Club Perun. And <laughs> and now the equipment check is taking place. <laughs> and now after the equipment check with Perun is done, we can start in the second half here. From left to right in the black jerseys, Aarhus Goalball Club, Aarhus Goalball, and from right to left in yellow blue, we have the Goalball Club Perun from the Czech Republic. We already had eight goals, five, three for Aarhus. Yeah, there was a little problem. They don't have a coach or staff uh, with them, the Perun team. And so the uh, referee, Zara Küpper, now helped the only substituted player, okay. Hujan, to tape his eyes that he can be brought in whenever he wants because when you don't have anybody to help you, this is getting really hard. So thank you also to the referees at this point. Yes, he's standing at the bench waiting. And now the second half will be start with Aarhus go ball from the left side, on the left side, from the right side. There's Gustav Koch with a goal. What a start. Gustav Koch, his third goal for the 6-3. And we got three goals for Silas Fries Hansen and three goals for Gustav Koch, both for Aarhus go ball and on the other side we got three goals for Martin Josifek one goal and two for Jan Bozek and this was again Martin Josifek but his ball was blocked out by Gustav Koch next to the post and so no pro problem for Aarhus goal ball next attack will come from the left side and the ball is bouncing hard but catched it's catched by Peter Schweiner, so no problem, no matter. And, and the next attack for Peru. And now the ball in the hands of Gustav Koch on the half right. He has the ball and he starts, spins, throws down the line. Bojek is there, can catch the ball. And from the half right, there's Jan Bojek. And now. Throwing the ball down the line, it's deflected outside, blocked out of bounds by Jensen. And so Fries Hansen now from the left side, 
with a bouncing ball up in the air at the crossbar. And Bozsiak can save it. Bozsiak can save it. Now you see the slow motion, but Bozsiak with the next throw. It's secured by Jensen. And next try by Jensen. Schweiner is there. The ball is going to the neutral zone. Schweiner has the ball now. Pass back to Josefak. Josefak, fast ball down the line. But there's Gustav Koch. Gustav Koch at the right side. Takes his time, starts, spins down the line, nearly a high ball again. Very much a risky take there. And from the half left, Josie Fek. Ah, there's an official timeout. Noise. The spectators are talking too much in the stands. But now from the half right, Josie Fek again with the throw. Jensen is there. Stands up, brings the ball back to Gustav Koch. 10 minutes and 15 seconds to go. On the half left, Fleet Hansen, bouncing ball. Schweiner can save it as a center. Pass to the right to Bozek. Jan Bozek from the half right spins and then to his left. And the save by Gustav Koch. Yeah, good save. Ball was blocked out over the line. And now it's hammered in again from the right side. And Gustav Koch from the half right. Cross ball to the left corner, but there's Jan Bozek with his arms and can block the ball out of the pitch. He's going into the center. No, it's more the half right. And the ball is coming down the line on the half right side and is blocked again. Always from the half left cross ball blocked by Josifek. And Josifek is raising his hand because of an equipment check. I guess his eye shades have moved, moved and so it has to be fixed again. And the match will restart soon. Nine minutes, 42 to go. And we got a 6-3 for Aarhus. Ball is blocked by Jensen. Jensen handing the ball to Gustav Koch, who's going to the half left. And the ball is coming cross directly to the chest of Josef Heck, who can Spinning around, ball directly to the center to Jensen. Jensen again, over to Silas Fries Hansen. Next ball blocked, blocked in the center by Schweiner. Giving the ball to Jan Bozek. And Bozek with a hard ball, not really bouncing, but no problem for Matthias Jensen. Next attack from the center. Yes, Jensen directly to the center. The ball was blocked and catched. Again, Josef Heck. Josef Heck to the left side. Blocked and catched by Gustav Koch. To the center and from the center. Ball is coming to the half right with his feet. There is Josef Heck. Josef Heck taking the counter attack. Pushing the ball. And then it comes down the line. Again, Aarhus. Fries Hansen, this ball into the center, but again, the feet of Peter Schweiner. Jan Bozik, Bozik from the half right, cross ball, it's out next to the post. And the ball goes out of the pitch. There are still eight minutes and 12 seconds to go. Still a lead for Aarhus goal ball. Aarhus with the next attack. Gustav Koch, ball is given in on the right side. Gustav Koch going to the center, going to the half left, going to the left wing. And the ball is coming down the line into the net. Into the net. And there is Jan Bozik raising his arms and showing that there seem to be or have been some noises but the referees didn't hear it. Jan Bozek is really upset about this no call and <laughs> that the goal went in. 7-3 for Aarhus goal ball and Bozek with this with this throw then down the line into the net. He was really, really angry and with all his anger in the stomach he put the ball under the body of Koch into the net, 
from the point of view of Peru. Now, Peter's Fleece Hansen at the chest of Joseph Vack. Ball's blocked out. And now, Bozek again has he some anger left. Now, from the half right, brings the ball hard, thrown into the net, but it's a long ball called against him. We see the slow motion, yeah. It was a little bit too long, so it's not easy to defend. So, penalty now for Ahu's goal ball. Koch has the ball in his hands. In the middle, he stands on his right. There is Bozek. Time out taken. So, Bozek steals a time out by, uh, from Ahu's because he was standing right there where Koch was supposed to throw the ball to. And so, the coach takes a time out to calm down and to talk about if we stick to the plan or if we have to change the plan for this penalty. Three goals ahead, two games so far for Aarhus, two wins. They are on, pot, uh, on top of t uh, the table in Pool B. And had two close games, one by two, six to four against Hammarby and one by one against Füchse Berlin, 11-10. So their goal differential is plus three, but they have six points. And now the penalty right in the corner. No, it's going out, it's going out. Koch misses the target. Bozek was to the wrong corner on his way, but Koch isn't able to hit the ball on the goal. So. Great opportunity missed here, 7.51 to go. And now Jan Bozek from the half left goes to the left post. And now he starts, spins, throws hard, and Fries Hansen is there. And substitution called number eight. Jensen is going out, Koch is going to center, and Kaspar Gregersen is coming in the number seven. And Lund, number one, Sigurd Lund, is outside and is not really wearing his sports gear. So I don't know if he's injured or if uh, after two games he needs a bit of rest. So I don't know uh, if we will see Lund because he started the other two games. Or maybe the coach wants to see how they work without Sigurd Lund. So now we got the next attack for Aarhus. Ball is bouncing and ball is in. Ball is in again. It was Silas Fries Hansen with his fourth goal. So we got an 8 3, no, oh 8 4, sorry. And again, it was Silas Fries Hansen. The next ball is coming for Peru. No problem for Gustav Koch, who is now in the center. So because of Gregersen is in on the right wing, and the ball is blocked over the crossbar it was the next attack and it was a very good attack but a very good defense by Peru now Peru is coming by Martin Josephek Josephek on the half right pushing the ball moving his arm and the ball is coming cross directly to Kaspar Gregersen Gregersen with his throw soon from the right wing down the line but no problem for Joseph Eck, who jumps on the ball and catches the ball at the next ball, next attack to Gregersen, blocked out, no problem. Seem to be very happy about this defense, about this block, handing the ball over to Silas Fries Hansen on the left side of the left post. Ball is going to the center, no problem for Bozek, Bozek in the center of his goal on the right wing. There is Schweiner, they change positions. And Schweiner with a try, but no problem. Gustav Koch, next attack, again blocked. And there is Jan Bozek handing the ball over to Martin Josefek. Josefek down the line on the left side. Kaspar Gregersen catches it without any problem. From the right side, cross ball directly to Schweiner. Schweiner with a counter attack, cross ball to Gregersen, and the ball is going out, blocked out, and we got six minutes and five seconds left. 
this match. Still an 8 4 for all. Who's next attack by Sina Space Hunting Ball was going outside? No problem for Schweiner. And the ball has to be brought back into the match. Ball is given back from the right side. On the right side, in. And there is Joseph Heck. Bozic clapping his hands. Okay, from the half left. Ball is going out directly over the line. Absolutely no problem. And so the next attack for Aarhus and the time is running. And the time is playing as you want against Perun. Because Aarhus is leading by four goals. Kasper Gregersen with the ball in hand from the right winger position, throws the ball to the new center, Bozek. Bozek problems to grab the ball, now goes back after losing it for the first time and with the next throwing attempt to the left corner and it goes out of bounds. Was not accurate enough, the throw by Bozek. Kasper Gregersen doesn't have to block the ball and so Koch has the ball in his hands. From the left side, he starts, spins, throws the ball down the line, it's out of bounds. 5.32 to go in the second half. And the next match, you can be really, 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 really eager to watch Chemnitzer BC against GC Nixic, Germany against the Montenegrino team. And now Joseph Heck from the half right takes his time now. Spins, throws, and there's Koch. Koch stands up, hands over the ball to Gregersen. Gregersen from the half right, plays the ball down the line into the net. Finds the gap between Bozak and the right winger Schweiner. And the ball, as we see, slips under the arms of Bozak through and then to, to the leg. And from there, deflected into the net by Schweiner. 9 to 4, the score. From the right, Bozek again, Schweiner back on center, Bozek back on right wing, and Joseph Heck on the left wing. Koch now from the half left, bounce ball, and Joseph Heck is there, stands up. Harry up, but then takes his time, five minutes to go. Ball left, out of bounds. He spins, and then the ball is thrown out of bounds there by Martin Joseph Heck. Kasper Gregersen is waiting in the right winger position that the goal judge brings the ball back. And he now has it. And we see now Fries Hansen. Silas Fries Hansen from the left to the Joseph Heck position. And it's blocked out of bounds. Little luck there for Joseph Heck and Jan Bozek. Is half left now for this next throw. Starts to the middle, throws the ball hard. And there's Koch. Koch stands up, takes his time. 4.40 to go. And from the right side, Kaspar Gregersen spins, throws. And that was a high ball. He missed to release the ball early. And so Kaspar Gregersen with the high ball here. The chance for Peru to score the fifth goal. We see Gregersen near the six meter line in the middle. Now quiet please, he's waiting there. Five meters before the goal on the left is Jan Bozek. Bozek at the left post. Quiet please is set. Bozek is running. Bozek throwing into the net. Gregersen to the right, the ball goes to his left and then hits the net. Fifth goal for GC Perun. Four goals down, four minutes and 24 to go. And Fries Hansen now has a response on this penalty goal from the left post. He starts, spins down the line, and the ball is secured by Bozek. Bozek again went to center and takes the ball now from the middle. Throws the ball to Koch, his center colleague on the other side, grabs the ball, and from the half right. He starts, spins down the line, and it's out of bounds. Joseph Heck doesn't have to play this ball. Joseph Heck, but now with the attack, with the next shooting attempt from the left side. He starts, spins, throws the ball, and it's 
catch by Koch. 3.50 to go. And the ball in the hands of Gregersen. And right winger to Bozek on center. But Bozek without problems from the middle. Jan Bozek starts again, spin, throws hard. Kasper Gregersen blocks it to his right. And it's out of bounds. 3.38 to go. The ball is out and will be brought back very soon on the right side for Gregersen. Gregersen with the ball in his hands, giving it to Silas Gregersen from the left side to the center. It's blocked by Jan Bozek. Bozek handing the ball over to Schweiner. Schweiner with the next attack down the line and it's blocked and timeout. Timeout for Aarhus. Go ball. They are all coming together as well on the other side. As you were saying, Bjorn, there is no, yeah, no coach, no anybody who could tell them some words, some tactical ideas or something like that. They are coming together, they are talking, and at least they are drinking something because it's quite warm inside and they are moving. The technical things does Jan Bozek, also substitutions okay. does Jan Bozek, but in the first game against Marburg where they lost uh, by 10, they had the problem that they got a delay of game penalty to the second half because nobody was carrying the bottles to the other oh, side. Oh, okay. And so uh, this is really hard without staff yeah. being here, so credits to them. So the next attack on the side of Aarhus in the center, Gustav Koch, but his ball is blocked by Bozek. Bozek in the center of his team, of his goal, and a uh, long ball. So the next penalty and the next chance for Aarhus to take the 10th goal. Three minutes, 13 seconds to go. Gustav Koch against Jan Bozek and Gustav Koch misses the goal because Jan Bozek like seems to or seemed to yeah, know where the ball was going and he was jumping and blocking it out so still nine to five Jan Bozek ball is going in that was a very hard ball very good ball Jan Bozek playing the ball and then it was blocked and was going and bouncing and bouncing and then it was going over the line. So next goal for next goal for Perun, the sixth goal. And so we got a 9-6. And it's very tight and it's getting tighter and better position for Perun. Always with a next attack on the right side. Rigasen. Ball is bouncing and into the arms of Jan Bozek. So, still three minutes. Bozek, next attack. Ball was catched by Fritz Hansen. Fritz Hansen with the counter attack. Cross ball blocked by Joseph Heck. Joseph Heck with his attack. Taking the ball, spinning around. Ball is coming and ball is blocked again by Gustav Koch. Gustav Koch from the center with the ball in his right hand. Ball is coming cross into the net. Gustav Koch, fifth goal. So there it is. There it is the tenth goal for Aarhus. We got a 10 6. And the next attack for Peru. Official timeout. There is Jan Bozek who has to fix his eye shades referee standing next to him and there has to be cleaned up the floor because of some sweat and then we will have the last two minutes and 19 seconds in this match before we will face the last match of this day and this evening and the two teams are already warming up Chemnitzer BC against GC Nixic will be the last game that will be played today, the first day of three great days of Champions League Oval here in Berlin. Now Kasper Gregersen from the right side has the ball in his hands. Front for Aarhus, he spins, he brings the ball down the line and it's out of bounds. And a little luck there for Josie Fack was not stretching out, reaching out with his arm. 
the ball went out. Now Josie Fink with the spin throw, but it's blocked out to his right by Kaspar Gregersen. And so we have two minutes and four seconds to go. Dries Hansen comes to the right side, gets the ball by Gregersen from the half right now. Kaspar Gregersen spins, throws down the line and out. And Jan Boschek, the Czech Old War legend, comes from the half right, spins the ball and then throws it, but there is Koch, Koch to Gregersen, 150 to go. And Gregersen with the next throw and it's saved by Josef Heck. Josef Heck from the half left, 140 to go, the ball is going to Koch, 135 to go on the left post. He starts, spins, throws Koch down the line and Schweiner saves it with his right hand and gets the ball very close around the post there. And the ball now handed over to Peter Schweiner then to Jan Boschek. And Jan Boschek from the right post. Starting, spinning, throwing, and then over Koch into now. It's saved, it's saved. Great effort there by Silas Fries Hansen. But now there's a clarification. And the one of the goal judges said the ball was behind the line. And he says to Sarah Küpper, the ball was for him clearly behind the line. And he asked now the other goal judge, she, sh she asked now the other goal judge, and uh, he says, I don't know. He says no, and then the ball is now put to the net, and he shows Zara Kuiper how the ball was in for him. So Zara Kuiper has to decide at the end, but one of the goal judges was so clear with raising his arm and saying the ball is in. And now the Monte de Green coach says, yeah, what he thinks, what, what it was, and now the goal judge describes to Sarah Cooper, no, 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 they were colliding in each other and then they were going with the ball behind the line. And now he shows her how the ball was there and he shows to the middle and he's pretty sure he's pleading his case there. And Sarah Cooper says, no goal, no goal, six to 10. But I like goal judges who have the faith to take a decision and not just waiting what the referees are doing. So great job by the man. Although at the end, the referee has the last word. Now throw, catched by Bozek, and Bozek's throw went out of bounds at the goal judge's wheelchair. And we heard this hard bounce, 108 to go, 10-6, the score. Gustav Koch is now at the crossbar. Stands in the middle, touches with his feet, and there's the penalty. And this is inside, and again, the goal judge is going with the, its feet very far in front of it. So, no penalty. The, the penalty was missed, and it uh, was a long ball, I think. Sorry for that, that uh, I missed it in this situation after the whole discussion with the referee. Must have been a long ball in this situation. 54 seconds to go, and now the ball. Now there's a clarification by the referees, 53.2 seconds. What are they talking about? What has to be clarified here? They are smiling, so they are in a good mood. But Sarah Cooper is pointing with his arms left to right like, how what can we do? I don't know. So at the end, substitution. Ah, Jan Boschek said substitution. And uh, they were not so uh, about who, but he hasn't the ball under control. How can he substitute? But he was shouting substitution. And uh, then one was uh, whistling, blowing the whole thing death. That, and uh, so now we have the Substitution Martin Kajun Kujan. Martin Kujan. Come on. Rudolf. Rudolf. Kujan. Rudolf. Rudolf Kujan. Yeah. He's coming in with the number one and he has a yeah, how can we say it? Um, a unique blue jersey with a taped number one on it. I guess it's a normal shirt. Yeah. It's no no 
yeah, real jersey, no jersey like the others. Because it's maybe he's yeah. he missed his one at home at <laughs> in Czech Republic and so he has to take now his blue shirt there. Jan Boje from the right side down the line. It's save. Great save there by Free Sansen with his left arm. Fifty seconds uh, fifty point six seconds to go. And we see here Rudolf Kujan on the center position. Boje on the right. Ball is given in from the left of Arahus. Arahus now from the half left. Fries Hansen again goes with the ball to Kujan. He's jumping in the air. The ball is blocked and it's going slowly out of bounds. So 38.7 seconds. Now he has to hurry up. Fast throw because 10 second violation was at the horizon. 30 seconds to go. Koch with the next throw, and there's Josie Fek up in the air, and it's in. From his back, the ball is deflected inside the net. Next goal for Aarhus. Goal ball 11 6, the score 26.1 seconds to go after this unlucky bounce off the back of Josie Fek. And from the left now, Josie Fek with the next throw, but there's Koch. Koch stands up, gives the ball to Gregersen, 20 seconds to go. Gregersen takes his time, 15 seconds to go. From the left, down the line, there's Josef Heck, 12 seconds to go. And Josef Heck from the half left, nine seconds to go. Is now starting with six seconds to go. And then Josef Heck with the throw, three seconds to go. There's Koch, one second to go. And that's it. Second last game for this evening is in the books. Aarhus goal ball wins 11-6 against Perun. And at in seven minutes, we'll be back here with the last game of today. Chemnitz RBC against GC Nixich. And uh, you will have the honor with Christoph Scholz and Kevin Bart at the microphone. So hear you later and uh, we each other tomorrow at nine o'clock we'll start but Christoph and Kevin will tell you after the last game more about it bye bye Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. 
für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de Berlin? Kannst du nicht vergleichen. Denn diese Stadt lässt dich machen. Sie lässt dich sein. Genau so, wie du sein willst. Das ist sowas von Berlin. Und es ist das, was wir an dieser Stadt leben. Wir sind die Leute von hier. Und so leben wir. Sowas von frei. Sowas von wunderbar. Sowas von Berliner. Berliner Pilsner. Wir sind gern in Gemeinschaft. Wir lieben Sport und wollen etwas erreichen. Ganz egal, ob wir sehen können oder blind sind. Darum engagieren wir uns als Blindenfreunde schon seit 1860 für blinde und hochgradig sehgeschädigte Menschen in vielen Bereichen. Unser bekanntestes Angebot, das Blindenmobil. Der einzige kostenlose Mobilitätsservice in Deutschland, der Fahr- und Begleitdienst zugleich ist. Für Behördengänge, Bankgeschäfte und Facharzttermine. Mit vielen tausend Fahrten im Jahr. Die Blindenfreunde. Weil jeder Augenblick zählt. Weitere Informationen und Spendenmöglichkeiten unter www.blindenfreunde.de So one more game left on the first day of this Champions League global qualifying tournament and it will be, well, maybe a, a heavy one. I, I expect something from this one. It's uh, Chemnitzer BC and they will face GC Nixic. My name is Kevin Barth and next to me it's... Christoph Scholz. Yes, and both teams have won their first game. Chemnitz with a 10 goal deficit and Nixic with nine. So, and Nixic is nearly the whole Montenegrin national team. So, and Chemnitz has got uh, with Oliver Hörauf, Felix Rogge, two German national players and also one US national player with uh, CN Walker. So, that That can be that could be special. Yeah, they are starting. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yes, yes. They are starting in their I guess yeah, in their black jerseys 
with Felix Rogge on the left wing, with Oliver Hörauf on the right wing, yes. and in the center there's Ruven Schetelich, who will start. Yes. And then we will check Nixic from Montenegro. They are starting on the right wing with Nikola Nikolic, who played here in Berlin as well last week at the Go Ball Nations Cup. And we got in the center, player with the number two, Marco Nikolic. And I'm waiting for the left wing. I can't see his number. I guess it should be number three, Matej Ledinek. And the Polish referee is announcing the match and a first correction on the left wing for Nixic is number five Milos Ranitovic and Nixic is starting from the right side ball is going into the arms of Felix Rogge Felix Rogge with his first attack from the left side ball is bouncing up in the sky and there is Marco Nikolic catching it and Marco Nikolic trying the ball but it was a long ball he tried the attack and the, uh, the attack was blocked and it was a long ball yeah. by Marco Nikolic so the first penalty after 23 seconds and it's Oliver Hörauf in the center and the ball is going in Oliver Hörauf with the first goal for Chemnitzer BC and the 1-0 for them, so Oliver Hörauf scores first time in this match. A really clean, really uh, good. Not the first time that when he gets the ball for a penalty, you just say, well, that can only end bad for the opponents. So exactly what they wanted, an early lead for Chemnitz. Yeah, there was the next attack, but Felix Rogge was catching the ball, starting the counter-attack, cross ball from the left to the right, but it was blocked by Milos Ranitovic. Next attack, Milos Ranitovic from the left side, spinning around and the ball directly into the arms of Ruven Schetele, handing the ball over to Oliver Hörauf. Next attack, blocked out by Ranitovic. Hard bouncing ball by Oliver Hörauf. And the ball was going directly to the corner of the goal. And then Ranitovic had to block it out. Now we got Nikola Nikolic. No chance for a goal directly into the arms of Ruven Schetelich. Felix Rogge down the line, over the line. It's out and the ball has to be catched. One moment, please. Well, and for Chemnitz, I just forgot to say, actually, they are with three German national team players on the field because, of course, Uwen Schetelich is also one of them. I'm sorry for that. but um, And also the Chemnitz coach, the real Chemnitz coach, <laughs> has now arri arrived. Uh, in, the, in the match before, it was um, Stefan Weil, um, but normally it's Sascha Timeus, and he is now there and coaches his team. Yeah, wanted to ask you because um, I thought about there was some change. Yeah. Next attack and a good save by Felix Orger with his feet. He could block the ball and the next attack from the right side. Oliver Hörhoff directly over the line. So still a 1-0 for the Chemnitzer BC. Yeah, the two-time bronze medal winner at the Champions League in the last two years, and they're playing Nixic. They have won silver medal in the Champions League in 2022. So also these two teams, which have already had success in the main tournament of this competition. And the ball was given back from the left side, but uh, the attack was blocked. So Felix Rogge now from the half-left ball was bouncing hard and blocked out by Ranitovic. Ranitovic receives the ball on the left side, handed is it over to Nikola Nikolic. He's going on the half right and the ball is coming across directly to the legs of Oliver Hörauf. 
Hill House. Going to the left side. Cross ball. Blocked away and ball over. Ball was no, going. No. Yeah, ball was going directly over the midline. And so the next ball for Chemnitz. Oliver Hellauf with a ball in his hand. Going to the center. And then the ball is coming to the right side. But Ranitovic can block it together with Marco Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic, the ball from the half right blocked by Oven Schäterich. And the ball over to Felix Rogge. Rogge, cross ball blocked again. And still 1 0, 9 minutes 15 left in this first half. Ranitovic. Ball to the center directly to Oven Schäterich. No problem for him. Oliver Hörauf down the line into the arms of Marco Nikolic who is giving the ball for Nikola Nikolic from the half right to the right into the arms of Felix Rogge no real chances at the moment mm. very good defense on both sides ball is blocked out by Marco Nikolic and some time for both teams to think about the next attacks and the next defense actions. Ball is giving in on the left side for Niksic. And it's Ranitovic going to the half left. Ball in his left hand and the ball is coming and bouncing and it's blocked by Felix Orga with his feet. That was very tight, very good offense. And the next ball blocked by Nikola Nikolic ball is going over the midline and so ball over in the next attack for Chemnitz. Yeah, maybe they are slightly better, a bit more forced in their throws, but still at only that one goal. So both teams just try to find themselves and try to find out what opportunities they have to score. Yeah, next attack by Nixic and the next block by Felix Rogge, who is searching the crossbar and the post. And then the ball is coming into the center. Mm. No goal. Mm -hmm. ball, ball was blocked up in the sky. And then <laughs> it was catched by Nixic. Next good attack by Nixic. And the next good defense by Felix Rogge. Oliver Hörauf trying to play the ball cross from the left side to the right side. Again, it's blocked. And again, Nixic with Marco Nikolic. Ball to the center directly to Schädelich. Schädelich with the attack, with the counter attack, but he is taking some time. Ball to the half left. Ball is blocked out. Schädelich had some, well, some problems in the last match, but now he's playing with his, with the two he plays maybe the most, with her off and Rogge, and so everything works a bit better. And again, there was Rogge with a great defense with his feet. The balls are coming always on his feet, and always he's kicking the ball away. Ranitovic down the line and not into the net. There is Oliver Hörauf who can save the ball with the left leg and with the left arm and then the ball no is not in what a save by nikola nikolic on the line he can punch the ball out with his right hand the ball was nearly in the goal but on the line he was jumping and touching it and could block it out over the line on the side so the next attack for Nixic, that was long a long ball. ball. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, first, bigger mistake in that match. So Chemnitz now with the chance to score that second goal with that penalty. Who will take the responsibility? It's Felix Rogge. No, he's handing the ball over to Oliver Hörauf. Oliver Hörauf in the center. And the ball is in. Oliver Hörauf, yeah, his second goal. Uh, uh, sorry, it was the s it was the second penalty. I believe yeah. the first was also uh, ice cold, thrown in, quick, fast, accurate, just textbook. Exactly, and the team of Nixic 
had the corner, they were on the right side, but the ball was too hard and too good by yes. Oliver Hörhoff. So 2-0 for Chemnitz. And the next attack for Nixic directly to the center. And official timeout because of some corrections on the eye shades by at Nikola Nikolic. And Oliver Hörhoff, he, he has shown us how to score goals at the Champions League. In 2022, yeah. he had 107 over the whole season. And this is the record. <laughs> there was never one who scored more. So this time, there was the ball coming from Marco Nikolic directly to the left corner. And Oliver Hörhoff was coming with his fingertips and could clear the ball around the post out of the pitch. Mm -hmm. So very great defense of him and two great goals, two penalty goals for him and now he is taking the next attack. Ball is going to the midline but no ball over. It's saved by Marco Nikolic. Next attack by Nikola Nikolic. Already also blocked by Felix Rocke. Felix Rocke. Next attack to the corner. Ball is blocked out and the Ball is going next to the post. It's still really open, really equal. Exactly. No goal um, from um, only penalties scored. Yeah, five minutes, 40 seconds left in this first half. Ball is blocked by Felix Rogge. Again, a little bit lucky to clear this ball. Unschiedli clapping his hands on his knees and then the ball was coming, but the ball was blocked. Nixic with Nikola Nikolic directly down the line to Felix Rogge, who could save the ball. Felix Rogge with the next attack. Again, Schädlich clapping on his knees. Felix Rogge, ball is bouncing and ball is catched by Nikola Nikolic. Now it was Marco Nikolic stepping on the floor. The ball is in. It's in Nikola Nikolic, man with the number four, scoring. There was Uven Schädlich with his feet and he couldn't clear and block the ball. So the first goal for Nikolic and the 2-1, one, yes. one goal lead for Chemnitz. Four minutes, 55 seconds. You feel left. it's deserved that they also have found their first goal because it's a really... Uh, on a really high level, this this match so far from both teams. Absolutely, Ranidovic with the left hand from the half left directly to Felix Rogge, who catches the ball and who is taking the attack. Rogge, ball is bouncing, ball is catched by Marco Nikolic. Nikolic down the line directly again to Felix Rogge. Felix Rogge with a counter-attack. Very hard thrown ball. And again, Nikola Nikolic ball is bouncing into the arms of Ruven Schädelich. He's taking the ball for the counter-attack. Ruven Schädelich, hard bouncing ball, cleared and saved by Nikola Nikolic. Handing the ball over to Ranitovic. Milos Ranitovic down the line, directly to the chest of Oliver Hörhoff. Can, can, who can save and clear the ball. Four minutes left in this first half. So Chemnitz really improved the defense after they won their first game 21-11. Uh, so and now only one goal uh, inside the net. It was the next attack for Chemnitz. The ball was bouncing and the ball was going to the line, but Nixic could save it. Now there Another is the goal, ball. but it was Another a long, long ball. ball, and it was Felix Rogge with a long ball. So the chance for Nixic to equalize the score. First penalty for them. Yeah, exactly. Felix Rogge has to defend. He's standing there, his hands on his knees, and his head down, and now he will face Nikola Nikolic and the ball is in. 
Nikola Nikolic equalizes the score a 2-2. Two, two Great okay. penalty shooting on both sides. Absolutely. Really. Just one of four goals in the match yes. and three penalties. Oliver Hörl with the ball in his hand. The ball is bouncing and the ball is blocked out. So still a 2-2. Two, two. Three minutes, 25 seconds left. The ball is handed to Milos Anitovic on the left side. Ball is going into the center. And timeout for Chemnitz. Well, I think it's an interesting game, and Chemnitz now takes that first time out. It's a really tactical one. It's, it's like maybe they're playing chess against each other. Well, who blinks first, who makes the first mistake, and so far, really good defensive plays, and but also um, heavy throws in the offense, so no time really to rest, always being focused, but maybe it all can be a bit more accurate on both sides, so maybe some ideas from the coach of Chemnitz and they could also throw someone else in. They could bring in with number one Cian Walker from the USA. Interesting to see. Cian Walker, sorry. Next attack by Chemnitz. Ball was blocked outside in front of the bench. There is Matej Ledinek warming himself a little bit up. And then there is the long ball. Another long ball. Another long ball. And it's Marko Nikolic who will face Chemnitz and who has to stay alone in front of his goal and to defend it. He's going on the half left side. And Oliver Hurl will play the ball. And he's going to the left side. Ball is blocked. Ball is blocked. Yeah. Marco well. Nikolic knew where the ball would come. And he knew the corner and he knew that Oliver Hurl would shoot the ball into the right corner and there he was standing waiting for the ball then he was blocking the ball over the crossbar so still a two two three minutes left in this first half and the next attack for Chemnitz Felix Roger ball is blocked and ball is saved Ranitovic taking the ball in his left hand and the ball is coming, and the ball is blocked again by Felix Roger with his feet. He was jumping into the ball and kicking it out. And then Oliver Hörauf, but again to the belly of Nikola Nikolic. No chance. And Nikola Nikolic with the attack blocked by Felix Roger. Ball is handed to him by Shetanich. Felix Roger searching the left post and the ball is going down the line blocked out over the line at the side and the ball has to be given back two minutes 16 left ball is not that's an in. equipment check yeah it's Nikola Nikolic who has to fix his eye, sh eye shades everything fine now and the ball bounced on the floor on the right side Nikola Nikolic that was a very tight ball, was very long, but yes. directly on the line. It was bouncing, so everything fine. Felix Roger now, ball is coming, ball is kicked out by Ranitovic. And Marco Nikolic catches the ball, takes it, picks it up. The ball is coming to the center, no problem for Ruven Schetelich. One minute 50 left. And noise in the From audience. Yeah. yeah. Oliver Hörauf going to the left side. When he starts an attack, he always lifts up the left foot. He's standing, lifting up the left foot, and then he is taking his movement and taking the power. 
So we got um, ball blocked out. It's given back to Felix Orge. Felix Orge will start the next attack on the left side. Ball is coming into the center, kicked out by Marco Nikolic, handing the ball over to Nikola Nikolic. Spinning around and the ball is coming and blocked by Felix Rogge. One minute, 16 seconds left. Ball is coming, blocked by Ramitovic, who is taking the counter-attack. Ramitovic, ball is coming and again Felix Rogge has to save it. Two, two, and the last minute started. Ball is coming, ball is in the arms of Nikola Nikolic and the team of Nixic from Montenegro is taking the time out and still out of the pitch, still in front of the bench. There is Matej Ledinek making some movements, making some, yeah, like warming his arm up, like some shoots but without ball and preparing his substitution. But until now, his eyes are open and yeah. not taped yet. Well, he is from Slovenia, Ledinek, and he is a Slovenian goalball legend as far as I know. So interesting to see. Next attack for Nixic and the next attack for Chemnitz. No goals and the last 40 seconds have started. Ball is coming, ball is blocked. Ball is given to Felix Hogger and Felix Hogger with his little ball in his hands. Spinning around, ball is coming to the half right. Then into the center, next attack, no goal. And Oliver Hör auf on the right side. Good ball into the center. Last 14, 13 seconds. Ball is at Nikola Nikolic. Last five seconds. Maybe the last attack. And that's it. Ball is in, but there was the signal for that for the end of this first half. So we got a two for both teams at the end of this first half. Both teams are changing sides. Yes. And then we will have very soon the second half between Chemnitz BC and GC Nixic. Only four goals. It's two all. It's a, a nice pace. It's great to watch two teams really fighting against each other, throwing good balls, maybe Chemnitz with a bit more force, but still a great defense from Nick, from Rixic. And if you, if you want to criticize something, it's they, they have thrown too many high or long balls, so there have already been three penalties for Chemnitz. They scored with two, and one was missed, and yeah, but both teams really, really focused, really with a good defense. And so there haven't been many gaps, many rooms. But of course, the longer the game goes, it's it's really um, draining. It's for, for both teams, it has been a long day. Yes, it's only the second game, but still a long day. Still, you have to stay in the venue and have to um, calm down after the first match and then up again and so on. So that will be, that can be a factor the longer the game goes, which team will be fitter. And I'm interested to see because I can't answer. Montenegro, many of the Montenegro national team, exactly one week ago, they had that remarkable match with Brazil where they defeated the world champion Brazil. So. It was also in Berlin, it was a different tournament, but maybe that will give them some uh, encouragement to see that they have already done things like that before. Yeah, and as we 
said already, it's quite warm inside this gym, so very hard for both teams. And you said if you want to criticize something, maybe you can, and maybe this is a compliment as well, yeah. you can tell that just one of the four goals yes. was in the, or during the game, yes, during the, the match. Were just penalties. Yeah, yeah um. three penalty goals and just one, and that's a very, very good defense yeah. on both sides. It's, it's really rare in, in goal ball, yeah. Um, I think <laughs> we had that 21-11 also with Chemnitz, 32 goals in one match, and we have all only four in, in that first half. What a um, what a difference. Yeah. And Tonight. now the last half of the first day in this European Global Club Association Champions League qualifying tournament. No substitutions. Ball is handed over to Chemnitz. Chemnitz on the left side. It's Felix Orgo with this with the ball in his hands. Tattooed arms on both sides. And already and a, long a long ball. ball. Again, a long ball. You was you were talking about it, about the lot of long and high balls in the first half. Yeah, but it was Nixic. <laughs> yeah. And now we got Chemnitz with a second penalty against them. And the ball is coming and the ball is in. The oh ball yes. is in again. Nikola Nikolic, who scored his third goal. So and we have a lead for Nixic. For the first time. Yeah, the first lead for the team from Montenegro. And Chemnitz has to think about their options and has to find ideas to find the gap in the, in the defense of the Montenegro. Negrian team. Nixic clearing the ball and official timeout. Equipment check. And so I think this game can be seen as maybe the one where the winner could be the first in the group. So getting that ticket maybe directly for the Champions League. So an important, a really important game. Ball was coming by Ranitovic and there will be a substitution soon, I guess, but still nothing prepared. <laughs> they were showing on the side of Nixic. There's the goal, the next goal again. Again, it's Nikola. Nikolic yeah, but this it was time. a flat ball this time. It was not bouncing. Yeah, it was exactly. Really it was very flat and this time he found he found the gap. He found the gap between Felix Orge and Ruben Schetelich. Okay. And now the ball was in and it's the fourth goal for Nixlich. And now Chemnitz has to do anything. They have to find the gap. They have to find the goal again. Yes. And they have not scored from Regular. And Let's there see. it is. Oh. <laughs> you, you were talking about it, and there it is. And it's, I guess, Oliver Hörauf who changed the position from the right to the left and scored his third goal. And it was the first for Chemnitz during the match. No penalty. Next attack for Nikola Nikolic, but it's blocked. It's Oliver Hörauf going to the center, coming with the ball. Ball is going in the half right, but blocked and kicked out by Ranitovic. Ball is handed to Ranitovic. Bouncing ball. And then Ranitovic going down, spinning around. Ball is bouncing hard, going to the corner. But there's Felix Rogge. No problem for him. Can catch the ball. Ten minutes left. So a lot of time, a lot of time for both teams and a lot of time for Chemnitz to equalize this score. There's Nikola Nikolic. This ball is blocked. Oliver Hörauf changing the side on the left wing. And the ball is coming, but the ball is kicked out. That was a very good defense 
by Marko Nikolic with his feet he could kick out the ball and now he is taking the ball from Nikola Nikolic. Marko Nikolic with the ball through the center, no problem. Felix Rogge with the ball in his right hand going to the right side, down the line, over the line, it's out. It's out, so ball on the side of Nikolic. Nikola Nikolic. The ball, no, the, there is some official timeout because one of the line has to be fixed. There is some tape on the floor and the tape has gone. So the referee has to take new tape, has to take new tape because of the marking lines. And for both teams, it's it's like a timeout right now because yeah. they can, the coaches can talk. They are allowed to do whenever the clock is stopped until the referee says quite please. So, um, for both teams, uh, a welcomed opportunity, especially in such a tense match where you think that just slight things will decide about the winner. And now it's quite please, and now it's resumed. Ball is coming by Nikola Nikolic, kicked out by Felix Rogge. Again, he's sliding into the ball and kicking it away. Ball is coming from Felix Rogge, but directly into the arms of Marco Nikolic, who's going on the half left. Next ball by Marco Nikolic. It's a long ball again. Yeah, it is. So. Marco Nikolic has to defend against the whole German team. They are coming together. Felix Orge, Ogen Schädelich and Oliver Hörauf are talking with each other. And it's Oliver Hörauf who scores. Yeah, Oliver really Hörauf. deadly Hörauf. His, his fourth goal and he equalizes this score for a 4-4 so what you were saying, he has, sco he has scored all Chemnitz goals? Exactly. All goals for Chemnitz. On the other side, there is a Nikola Nikolic who scored all the goals for Nixic. So we could just put those two in and they, <laughs> they will fight it out. Exactly. Yes. Maybe like a penalty shootout yeah. between them. I would take that. <laughs> I would watch that for two days or something. <laughs> There was the next attack and the next goal. The next goal, that was quite fast. The ball was coming down the line and again it was Oliver Hörauf and this time the ball was out of the match, down the line and he found a gap between Ranitovic and the post. So this time he found the gap in the corner and he scores for a 5-4 for Chemnitz. Again, the lead for Chemnitz. And Very important. 4-2 down, so uh, three on the spin. Yeah, and the next high ball this time, I guess. And now Nixic seems to be a little bit, yeah, like, like not concentrating or something like that. It's so a bit too risky, too yeah. early. Time and now Chemnitz takes a timeout because uh, the, um, the player maybe was in the wrong position yeah, and exactly. it was was not really looking like he would catch that ball and now they take their second timeout and it was a game of runs. Chemnitz scored the first two, Nixic scored the next four and then Chemnitz scored the next three. So it was not... Uh, one up equal, one up equal. Yeah. It was just that little runs getting through the game. And now, again, th the chance for Chemnitz to score another one. That would be the fourth in a row. Exactly. It's Oliver Hörauf against Marco Nikolic. Marco Nikolic in the center, going to the right side the right side as well and he misses he tries the cross ball the cross ball from the right side to the left side 
but that's exactly the corner where Marko Nikolic was waiting for the ball. Second penalty missed from Chemnitz. Yeah, so still 5-4. They are still leading by one goal, but just one goal. Ball is blocked yes. out by Oven Schetelich. So ball will hand it in again. And that can, that can give Nixic, of course, some encouragement. Like, well, we have saved that, and then we can also find a way again through the Chemnitz defense. Exactly. Eight minutes and five seconds left. Ball is kicked out by Ranitovic. He yeah, kicked the ball to Marko Nikolic. Ball is coming by Marko Nikolic. No goal. And official timeout. There is Another again equipment. some equipment check. It was a quite good ball by Marko Nikolic. Came from the center to the left corner. But Oliver Hörauf was on this perfect position and he was catching the ball. Very good defense. Oliver Hörauf on the right side, down the line. The ball is bouncing high to the post and next uh, bit to of the luck. post. Yeah, a Maybe little bit for Nixic. Yeah, you really feel they have to be careful now. Yeah, Ranitovic was blocking the ball and then it was bouncing up and onto the post, but no goal. So still five, four, seven and a half minutes left. Marco Nikolic, ball is coming, ball is blocked by Oven Schetelich. Felix Rocker from the left side. See the ball in his right hand, ball is bouncing and ball is blocked by the chest of Marco Nikolic. He's handing the ball over to Nikola Nikolic. And Nikola Nikolic, ball down the line in no, not into the net. Ooh. That was very tight on the line. They were clearing the ball. Next ball is blocked out by Ranitovic. And now I can tell you that Matej Leninik is standing in front of his bench and his eyes are taped. Yes. So we haven't had any substitution. Yeah, exactly. Ranitovic, next attack. He finds the gap between... And Felix Rogge, but Felix Rogge could save the ball in front of the line. Next attack, Nixic, Nikola Nikolic, who scored four times in this match. Ball is coming down the line into the net. Mm, into that sounded the net. interesting. It was bouncing, yes, but not. It was a very interesting goal. The ball was, yeah, blocked yeah. by by Felix Rogge, and yeah, he was sitting there, like what's happened? And then there is the next goal. Yeah, next goal, Oliver Hörauf. Direct scores. answer. Yeah. And again, Oliver Hörauf, six goals out of six. Exactly six five. It was very interesting, Felix Rogge, who was blocking the ball and then it was bouncing and over his body and then he tried to catch it in front of the line and then he yeah touched the ball a little bit but that was the wrong direction and then the ball was in and so the perfect answer of Oliver Hörauf and we got a 6-5 and now the runnings are broken no runnings yeah, yeah. anymore yeah, yeah. Felix Rogge from the right side. The ball is going directly out of the pitch. No chance. Five minutes, 54 seconds left. And exactly what I w thought happened. We had four goals in the first half and already eight in the yeah. second. So the longer the game goes, maybe the defensive focus is a bit down. Yeah, exactly. Good Next goal. goal. Next goal. And again, it's man with the number four. And this time he found the gap. He, fi he found the gap. And it was Uwe Schädelich who tried to block the ball with his feet. And from his feet, the ball was bouncing over Oliver Hörauf into the net. So no chance for Oliver Hörauf. That was very, very tight. But Felix Orger could kick the ball away. 
and is taking the counter attack directly into the arms of Marco Nikolic. Uh, quick answer from him. By him. And still the 6-6 six, six ball is coming. 5 minutes 13 to go. Anitovic handing the ball over to Nikola. Nikolic, no goal. Again, kicked out by Felix Rogge. I think it's his special movement to kick the ball away. Great save by Nixic. Now they have to hurry up. Time out. Nixic for, yeah. And we got a 6-6. Six, six. We got 12 goals. And we have to say this again. Just two scorers. Yes. We yeah. got just Oliver Hörauf and Nikola Nikolic. And both teams are all so equal now on the timeouts, two each. And what also, there was a moment where we both were talking like, oh, is Nikolic now taking too much risk too yeah. early? And they were able to, um, to change that. So the long balls, the, the bouncing balls are not long balls anymore. So they are really bouncing in the right moment. So also respectful. Um, being calm enough to, to just re readjust and uh, find the right throws. And now it's six all. And it's really, well, I can't see what's happening next. The next goal. The next goal and exactly. for Nixic. And Kevin, you want to guess who scored? <laughs> Nikolic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nikola Nikolic. He again found the gap in the defense of Chemnitz yeah, and, and the ball is, is going out. That is so un in, in that moment you you have to keep the ball in the field. Yeah, a little bit less concentration at yeah. the Rogge side of were. Chemnitz. Yeah, Felix Rogge was not missing the, the ball. Time. Yes, the, the attacks are not that good at the moment. And in the defense there are some gaps. So Nixic could score in the last moments. 7-6 for them. Next attack for Chemnitz. Oliver Hör auf. Ball is coming. Ball is blocked. I guess the coach of Nixic wanted a long bow of ball. But it wasn't given by the referees. Next ball is coming. Ball is going out. Again, Felix Rogge. Yeah, ball. this is a moment where Hör auf needs some support from a strong thrower like um, Hogge and he doesn't get it so yeah and it's difficult for her off it's 24 yeah. minutes it's it's um, he, he can't take the whole responsibility in exactly. the offense now it was Ruven Schädelich with a try but he also misses ball was blocked and then it's Nikola Nikolic playing the ball outside yes so it seems like both teams now are taking maybe some breath just for an intriguing for a hopefully brilliant yeah. last part of this game so it's how much time is left three minutes 39 seconds so that means well yeah oh. and it seems like some of them are breathing very heavy oliver her off was standing a few moments ago like Okay, I, I need some break, <laughs> something like that. Very intense game, very fast. In a few moments, Felix Rogge taking the ball, still a 6-7. His ball is coming into the center, not outside the pitch, but no chance for a goal. Three minutes, 10 seconds left. Next ball for Nixic, but very well saved by Felix Rogge, this time with his body, not with his feet. And just to imagine, I think there can be 12 throws each here in this game still. Yeah, next, next try by so Felix Rogge and it's blocked. Ball was bouncing hard but lost his power on the way and the next Oh. No goal. A substitution. Yeah, Chemnitz. substitution. And Felix Rogge is going out. Felix Rogge is going out, and Zion Walker is coming in. He was really uh, um, doing a good defensive job when he played a few minutes for Chemnitz in the first game, and maybe he 
He has also uh, a different throwing picture, which Montenegro will maybe first need to uh, to read. So a really good decision, in my opinion, because Roge really lost his uh, accuracy in the throw. And this is a player from the U.S. national team now. Now we got Oliver Hör off on the right side, and the ball is in, but it's a long, a long ball. ball. A long ball from Hör off. The ball was in, but then there was the whistle and the decision. Long ball. So Oliver Hör off has to face the team of Nixic, and it's Nikola Nikolic going to the half right. Showing ball is coming and ball is blocked. Mm. Ball is blocked by Oliver Hörauf. Very good defense with his legs. He was able to clear the ball. So still a 6 7, 2 minutes 38 seconds left. First attack for Walker. Walker's ball was blocked was from coming from the left side to the center and Nikola Nikolic bouncing hard into the net. Whoa. Wow. He was that was really risky but it yeah. worked and if you, if that works you are right. <laughs> Cross ball from the right side to the left side was bouncing really 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 hard into the net. A two goal lead for Nixic. Very strong ball, very strong attack by Nikola Nixic and his eighth goal. Oh, mean Nikola eighth Nikolic. <laughs> Nikola <laughs> Nikolic. And it's another timeout yeah. for Chemnitz, Chemnitz, the third. Exactly. They are coming together. They are and drinking you something. You said this isn't a game of runs anymore. I mean, the last two goals have been yeah. scored by... Nixic. The run is back. Two minutes, eight seconds left. And Chemnitz has to find ideas. Ideas. Yeah, Sorry. it's... Um, I mean, Walker only took one throw, so he could really yeah. um, be also be a factor. But you have to take risk, and maybe you also problem with the mistakes. Now he's taking the second throw, but it's blocked again. Cyan Walker wearing a bandana under the eye shades. Ball is coming again. A strong ball from the right side to the left corner, but blocked again. And no goal on the other side. Ball is blocked out by Ranitovic. And the time is running and working against the German yes. team, against Chemnitz. One minute, 40 seconds. Ranitovic, no goal. Blocked by Schetelich and Walker. And walking. Walker with the next attack. Walker. Very flat, flat ball. Throw, yes. yeah. But no chance. And Nikola Nikolic again and goal. Well, <laughs> incredible, incredible. The, the, the 23rd minute and he is still able just to throw like a machine. Yeah. 960 is, is maybe already done. Um. Yeah. One minute, 22 seconds left. Oliver Hörauf, I guess he hasn't got that much power. Yeah, they run out of steam yeah. here. Anymore, his power is, is yeah, like lost. Now he was throwing the ball from the right side to the left side next to the post. So the last minute will start in about five seconds. And we got a 9-6 for Nixic. Well, four or five throws for Chemnitz are yeah. realistic now. Exactly. Ball is coming. And the ball is in. And guess who scored? Nikola Nikolic wow. for Nixic. 10 to 6. The ball was finding the gap. And then it's yes. Oliver Hörauf. Yeah, but maybe all too late because now 
Well, three goals in that short period of time. I don't think that's gonna happen, but now Niksic, they can also use the time. Exactly. But why don't, why? And the ball is in. Wow. Well, that okay, was the right. first yeah, goal. Yeah. That was the first goal who, uh, which wasn't scored by Nikola Nikolic or by Oliver Hörhoff. Yeah. was Milos Ranitovic, and he was celebrating this ball and the long, long ball. ball. Now it's all going wrong. Of course, they have to yeah. take the risk. Of course, they have to throw fast, but... Exactly, 44.1 seconds left, and Zion Walker has to defend. fight and defend against Marco Nikolic, who doesn't Misses. score. Yeah. yeah, he missed the goal. He just found the wheelchair <laughs> of the goal judge. He was standing quite near to the goal, but it was outside, and so no goal for Marco Nikolic. I think they wanted him to score as well. Next ball is coming. Zion Walker trying the next cross ball. Ball was going out. 28.3 seconds left. And I guess That's Chemnitz it, yeah. will lose this game because there are four goals for Nixic ahead. Yes. So they they would really need Nixic to throw it yeah. away and Anitovic with the ball in his hand, taking some time, taking some seconds. Ball is bouncing, coming, and the ball is blocked by Zion Walker. Twenty one point four seconds left. But it won't be enough time. Oliver hör auf. The ball is coming directly to Marco Nikolic, who tries his luck. 13 seconds, 12, 11. Ball is bouncing, coming. Marco Nikolic takes the time. Nikola Nikolic, three seconds, two seconds. And the ball is blocked, and the time is over. 7, 11. 11. Yeah. <laughs> what a game, what a pace, but in the end, Chemnitz... Well, they run out of steam a bit, and well, <laughs> Nikola Nikolic, incredible. You think like, well, 24 minutes, he can't um, do that all the time, but he did. He, he is the match winner, and Chemnitz lost a bit the plot in the offensive way. Um, couldn't find an answer in the end really well organized Nixic in the defense and they deserve that win. It's their second and so they are of course in great position for the first place in the group which would guarantee them the qualifier for the Champions League without having to um, compete in the playoffs. And Chemnitz, well, they have lost one but still good chances in my opinion to get minimum to the third or of course the second place. And this well, this was it. This yeah. was the first day of this Champions League qualifying tournament from the European Global Club Association. We will be back tomorrow. Exactly. At 9 o'clock and our first game will be Northern All-Stars versus USV Hercules. Exactly. At 9 o'clock we will be back or a few minutes before yeah. 9 o'clock we will be back and so we say good night and enjoy the l the rest of this evening and we hope you are joining us tomorrow so bye bye are saying kevin bart bjorn nas and christoph scholz good night